on Twitter. Hard. It's the and gayest oh soy God. thing oh you can God. do. Shut oh the fuck up, you little tater tot bitch. We are Turkish. two minutes and 35 seconds into this video. I'm just as gay as the rest of us, motherfuckers. Just the same. Another sunny day in LA. Everything is fine. So they say. Wonder what the news is today. Cause I know that every day I'm at this fucking job Her son is streaming Watch him on the clock Oh yeah Oh this the luck Listen, bro, the Lyra I does not need this. So many people love playing Hearts of Iron Report. Eating, eating pussy is the basic, bare minimum, minimum thing you can do. Where did they find these people, dude? And, and women want to have sex. The job is posting. Bro. You're gay. Oh, okay. God, I, don't I make hate women so, so much. Coming to you live from uh, rainy, but not really rainy, but cloudy California, Los Angeles. Folks, we're live and alive, and I hope all the boys, girls, and MBs are having a fantastic one because today's a beautiful day. Today's a wonderful day. Today is a very special day. Very special day for our very special fans. You're looking like Joe Burrow. What the fuck? I don't know who that is. Is that the quarterback? He's like hot, right? Anyway, very special day. Uh, don't be scared. I'm not talking about it because it's like, I'm not saying it's a very special day because uh, Iran has said that they're going to retaliate against Israel or there's like possible fucking uh, collapse, uh, broader conflict. These are not the reasons why it's a special day. It's a very special day that is a special day every day, every time, every week. It's the same time. Awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, it's, it's here, right? freaking Friday. It's Friday. That's then, right. Then Saturday, it Sunday, is what? Friday, Friday, then Saturday, then, then Sunday. It's the freaking weekend. Oh my lord, it's Mufasa Day. It's Friday, April 12, 2024, 11 21 a.m. I am uh, slightly tardy today. I apologize for my tardiness, but the vibes will be immaculate, whether people recognize it or not. It's a day of celebration. A day that our forefathers fought for long and motherfucking hard so that we could have a four. Well, a three-day weekend, four, if you count, Friday in and of itself, and also Thursday. Fuck it. Every day's a goddamn weekend, baby. Let's go. But especially on Friday, where everybody's putting in half the effort, because you now have autonomy in your life for a little bit. If he was legally 15 minutes late, we were legally allowed to leave. Yes, thank you for not leaving. Monday's Patriots Day here in MA. I thought that was every day. What the hell? Why would you not be patriotic for the rest of the time? Y'all are crazy. This was my favorite moment last night. Oh my God, dude, that was bullshit. That was actually bullshit. Why do we got to relitigate things that happened last night? Well, this is part of the broadcast where I tell you a little bit, about, a little bit about my personal news. And honestly, we do actually. Uh, relitigate the things that happened last night, okay? Um, I'm playing Walking Dead, the Telltale series, right now. And um, 
China doing a Maribu. We'll talk about it. What the fuck? Uh, all right, anyway, this is part of the broadcast where I tell you a little bit about my personal news. Conan was on the hot ones, and it's the funniest episode ever. Ahead. Yeah, we'll watch it. We'll watch Conan O'Brien needs a doctor while eating spicy wings. Number one on trending. Um, but yeah, folks, ladies and gentlemen, boys, girls, and MBs, I hope everyone's having a wonderful time here. It's 64 degrees and cloudy here in California, Los Angeles, but that is not going to stop us from enjoying the immaculate Friday wa Friday vibes. Okay, you so bad at The Walking Dead. How can you be bad at the at a narrative driven game? That makes no sense. Excuse me. What is this? But yeah, I was playing this narrative masterpiece, The Walking Dead. Are you going to move the train? Excuse me, dude. How are we going to move the train? What the fuck do you mean how we're going to move the train, bro? Are you going to move the train? Yeah, with the power of Marxist Leninist Jusha ideology, the immortal science. That's how we're going to move the motherfucking trains, baby. And we did. Start pulling. Start pulling the freaking train, baby. If podcasts existed in the Paleolithic era, I like that. That's funny. Um, please game more, especially games like this. God, I love Hassan and a wife pleaser tank top. Goddamn. Don't worry. I'll, I'll bust it out later today as well. Ah, all right. I died when you played the song and it was late as fuck. My whole family was asleep. Yeah. I, you are legit funnier when you game. Thank you. It's just like more lighthearted and more fun. Um, Kaya watching Fallout had me. Maybe she thought dog meat was Huxley. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, anyway, last night I ended the broadcast after a uh, nine hour experience, an eight and a half hour experience. You're not as funny talking about genocide. Yeah, it's kind of hard to fucking cook up some funny one liners when like, the subject matter is the death and destruction of tens of thousands of people. Uh, but yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy is a also a narrative game with streamer-friendly music option. Okay, potentially. Um, anyway, anyway, listen, listen, listen. Stop sending me links. I'm having a hard time focusing. I'm having a hard time locking in right now. So what I was saying, what I was, uh, what I was going to talk about is that. Um, yeah, everybody's like pumping me full of links. Uh, I watched Fallout. Fallout episode one was all right. There was like this long, that long sequence in the first episode of the vault is like kind of boring and kind of mid. It's like too much exposition. Didn't really like that. Uh, not enough Walt and Goggins. But the second episode locked me in. No spoilers. Shut up. Shut the fuck up, please. People that say no spoilers without like understanding what I'm doing are the most annoying motherfuckers dude please stop and then we have to argue about whether i'm spoiling or not for like three and a half hours it's literally fucking free if you have an amazon prime account okay it's also the first episode is literally free like every twitch streamer watched it please it's just like the more uh, the most annoying dumb shit of all time um retcon of the east coast lore over the west coast uh fallout nevada is mood in this iteration yeah, which is probably one of the better narrative uh, parts of the Fallout universe in general. But I will say it like this: Who cares? Is it even canon? Um, I don't. Full, I don't think so. There are some areas and also characters that are kind of from canon that they are uh, that they are adding into the uh, that are adding into the story in general. But I think it's great. I think it was great. New Vegas is still canon. They just changed a couple dates. Okay, well, regardless, regardless, I I really like it. I really like it a lot. And uh, I am enjoying it. Is it woke though? Yes, bro. There's like a fucking envy in the... It's woke as hell, which I'm... Which I wonder if that will like piss off people. It's hella woke. Um, It's insanely woke, as a matter of fact. It's incredibly woke. There is literally a envy character immediately... MB, non-binary, which, I mean, it's not surprising. It's fucking Fallout. Fallout has literally always been woke. It is entirely about uh, nuclear, mutually assured self-destruction, nuclear holocaust, and how, uh, you know, how, how silly uh, endless militarization and, and jingoism looks like. And it, it is inherently an anti-capitalist work. So, yes, it is woke. It's always been woke. It's not new. So, yeah, 
female black person cancer patient is super woke. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh, uh. But yeah, overall, overall, overall, I like it. Is it woke to fuck your cousin because there's no genetic diversity? Yeah. Have you seen X-Men 97? No. How far are you into the show? I think like third episode is when I fell asleep. I watched two episodes yesterday, I think. The show lets Goggins cook. Have you seen genital jousting? Just play genital jousting with your friends, please. Bro, we got the crazies in here so early on this Friday. What's happening? Am I getting like, am I getting hate rated or something? What's, what's, how, what's up? Is a real game. What? I like your Ruben MRM cosplay. Wait, who the fuck is this? Are you going to watch Civil War? Yeah, I will watch Civil War. Maybe this weekend I'll try to watch Civil War. I am, of course, not going. I'm, of course, not going to Coachella because I'm an old man. So I'll be here. You think Goggins still packing? Bro, I think Goggins still got that mutated dick. That's what he's doing. Anyway, let's watch what the fuck she's saying while I blast off. And then speak the word out. Speaking out, telling the world what kind of horror is happening inside the country. So they thought like we were national security threat. That's what North Korean regime defined the defectors. They are the national security threat. So they asked China to capture them back. And China, of course, doesn't want North Korea to collapse. Imagine a million of North Koreans escaped and found the freedom in the South. That would be really destabilize the country. So that's why China does that. And not only that, they gain something from capturing North Korean defectors. They need a lot of this wood. North Korea cuts down all this wood in their mountains and then give this to trucks and trucks to China when they send the defectors back. North Korea complains. What? Abi çok umurumda mı bilmiyorum ama. Turkey's emotunu çoğu Türk görmüyor, ırkçı bir şey zannediyorlar Türkiz diye okuyunca. Well, Türkler, bu emot, Türkiz emotu ırkçı değil. Okay, bu kadar basit. Daha ne diyeyim bilmiyorum. Um, anyway, Iran x Israel updates. Will the conflict broaden after Iranian retaliation? Uh, what else was I? Dude, there's so much to cover. And I keep forgetting. Shohei Otani innocent. Israel not letting in aid. Shohei Otani. Shohei, Shohei Otani innocent. And more Walking Dead. Season 1 episode 4. Later. Get in now. İran'la savaş var mı? Uh, not yet. Yok şu anda. Ama ol olabilir yani. Bakalım. Bilmiyoruz. Bekliyoruz şu anda. You see the LA Crystal Mommy that went bashing over the eclipse? I fucking heard about it. It's crazy. İran kaşınıyor. Ulan İran mı kaşınıyor? İsrail mi kaşınıyor? Amına koyayım. <gülüyor> İsrail kaşınıyor. İran kaşıyor. Ya da daha doğrusu kaşıyacağım diyor. Daha ne yapsınlar oğlum? Adamlar da yani. Türkler böyle lafları diyorlar da. İ İsrail. İsrail. Mavi Marmara'yı yaptığı zaman veyahut da sizin bir tane konsolosluğa gömse, Türkleri öldürse kafayı yersiniz. Tabii ki de. Yani ne, ne yapsın adamlar? Herkese vuruyor amına koduklarım. Herkese vuruyorlar. Hiç acımıyorlar. Birisi dönüp de geri vuracak şimdi. Kaşınan bir adam varsa İran değil, İsrail kaşınan bir adam varsa. Hem kaşınıyorlar hem de aynı zamanda da soykırım yapıyorlar yani. Yes bro, I know. Wisdom did the Dune outfits. Okay. Style. I saw, bro. I love wisdom. Y'all don't have to fucking send it to me like it's a goddamn, like, like it's like the latest Johnny Harris video or some shit. My friend got a thousand dollar tip at a barista job because the lady believed the rapture was coming and then called to complain and get it removed because it didn't happen. That's awesome. Uh, I don't know what's more wild, the Thai cowboy hip hop music, the woman dancing at the front of the Confederate flag on a teepee in the background. What? <laughs> Bro, this feels like they, they hit the randomizer on like American culture. You know what I mean? This like, it just like doesn't, doesn't make a lot of sense. Like they just looked at American culture with the fucking broad scope and hit the random button. They were like, fuck it. We ball. We got it all. We, we're going to do all of it. It's like when you, when you're asked, like when you're asked, like, um, when you are asked personally, dude, 
Dude, you're a 20 month subscriber, bro. You're so fucking annoying. Jesus Christ. Oh my God. Like how, how did these dumb fucks come in here? Like take the goddamn day off. Okay. It's just so frustrating. Anyway, um, as I was saying, this looks like, this looks like they hit the fucking randomizer on all of the American culture. You know what I mean? Oh my God, there's a Confederate flag on a teepee in the background. Oh my God, the chatter was not lying when he, the chatter was not lying when he said this shit's crazy. By the way, this ain't even rap. Like, the first lady was rapping, but this is more ska than it is rap. I swear to God. Like, it's ska, bro. This is ska music. They're dressed up in cowboy attire. The first lady was rapping, but it's definitely ska. And they're dressed up in this, like, weird Western attire. And they're dancing in front of a fucking teepee with the American flag on it and the Confederate flag on it. What is happening here? This is, this is honestly me, though. This is, like... <laughs> Hassan, what do you like about American culture? Oh, all of it. That this is it. <laughs> it's like Nazi memorabilia cafes in Japan. They just think it looks cool. Yeah, well, the Japanese uh, <laughs> can't uh, advocate for the ignorance. That's kumbia. It sounds like ska. Anyway, they can't. The Japanese can't exactly say uh, that they are. That they are ignorant to what the what the Germans were up to, considering that they were aligned with them. You know what I mean? And no, I don't think this is Kobea. I think this is ska. This seems more like ska than anything else. <sighs> it's kind of like America's wearing red sun headbands. That is a perfect analogy. That is analogous, yes. I think like Thai people uh dancing in front of a Confederate flag teepee is identical to America's wearing the the red sun headband for sure. Or like getting tattoos with like the the stripes. You know what I mean? By the way, it is kind of fucked up. It is kind of fucked up, honestly, that the Japanese kind of ruined that whole aesthetic. Because it honestly is fire. Like it is. The the whole like like the whole the the lines like that. Like this is a phenomenal aesthetic. It it, it just goes hard. It straight up goes hard. And it is really fucked up that they just, like, took that and ruined it. You know what I mean? The rising sun goes hard, man, but why the fuck did they have to be imperialists? Yeah. Clipped and shipped? I mean, what do you mean? That's, I'm, I'm telling you what it is. I'm telling you that it's bad. What does it mean, though? It just means, like, uh, it's, the, it's the red disc, 16 red rays emanating from the disc, like the Japanese national flag, the rising flag. The rising sun flag symbolizes the sun. It was originally used by feudal warlords in the Edo period. And then, uh, as a policy of the Meiji government, it was, adopted, it was adopted as a war flag of the Imperial Japanese Army. And then it was adopted as a naval ensign of the Imperial Japanese Army. So, to, like, everyone in the region, it spells horrific rapes. Um, it, it means uh, just, like, a, a shit ton of death and destruction. You know what I mean? Because, like... These guys were the Nazi Germany of the region, okay? They did Nazi Germany shit specifically to China, you know what I mean? Like, and, and Korea as well, and the Philippines. Like, they were really bad. As much as, a, as much as I am a fucking weeb, and I talk to you guys about how much I love Japan all the time, this emblem is like the swastika, but for that region. The difference, however, is that Germany acknowledged their crimes, even though they put Nazis back into positions of power. Shouts out to the United States of America for that one in Western Germany. Holy fucking shit. Japan never really acknowledged their crimes at all. Also, shouts out to America. Japan actually didn't have to recognize their crimes at, uh, at all. Uh, and still, they do not. So, yeah. But that's why, while the aesthetic is kind of hard, it's just like, it's not great. Really bad. Dumb. Dumb. 
Like many other people, my other TikTok hold this week has been the Thai military conscription where the fiercest divas you've ever seen find out if they liter if they have to literally serve. <laughs> Dude, Thailand is awesome. It is straight up the gayest place on the planet, I think. Oh my god. Friday scoop, by the way. And yes, it's Elon News. Megaphonics, what else is fucking new, big dog? Yeah. If you think, like, man goes to gay city, gets his ass beat for not twerking, is a fake news story, it happens every day in Thailand. Okay? Thailand is gay city. Thailand is gay city where they beat your ass if you don't fucking serve. Okay, straight up. I love, I love Pinoy Gang and I love Thailand. They're just like, I don't know what it is. They're just so like, Pinoy Gang is also gay as hell, but like nowhere near as gay as Thailand, obviously. I just, I don't know what it is. It's just, they're awesome. They're so sick. <laughs> Pinoy Gang WRL, it's always a W. A New York City fried chicken. Let me tell you something, okay? Swagapino's on top, Swagapino rights, and Swagapino wrongs. Unconditionally. Has replaced its cashier with a woman who zooms into work every day. Wait, Philippines. what? Kind of a virtual cashier, kind of not at all a virtual cashier. This is what the cashier counter setup looks like. There's a cash register and an <clears> iPad <throat> that reads, Welcome to my store. A bit to the left, there's a computer monitor where the cashier sits in a Zoom meeting with a virtual background of the store's logo. This is at Sun Sun Chicken in the East Village, right by New York University's main campus. And the best part about this setup is that the Zoom meeting ID and password are handwritten on a piece of paper taped to the back of the cash register and facing customers. What does a virtual cashier even do? Well, not much. She greets people, who, by the way, are also on a webcam, when they walk into the store and can take orders if it gets busy. But there's also a self-serve ordering kiosk where you can pick and then pay for your food, which gets handed to you from the kitchen behind this wall through this two-foot wide window. I went to Sansan San Chicken on Monday and asked the staff a couple of questions. A manager told me that as a business owner, it was useful and cost-effective to have a virtual cashier who she said is contracted through a different company. The cashier told me that she was indeed in the Philippines, where it was 1.11 a.m. at the time, but said she couldn't answer any more questions about the company she worked for. Bro, they outsourced the cashiers to the Philippines too? That's crazy. Mark Banson's coming for everyone, Hasanabi. I don't know if you've already seen it. Yeah, we have that ready to go. Today, my co-counsel Greg Adler and I filed a suit against Fox, Newsmax, Univision, Tim Cast, Stephen Crowder, Owen Schroyer, Simon Ataba, and Hollywood Unlocked for falsely portraying our innocent client as a neo-Nazi mass shooter. Yep, we have the Huffington Post news story right here as well. We're going to talk about it. I tested it out at the Wegmans, and the woman helping us with it said they're from a company in Israel, so I shouted in free Palestine. Wait, what? Uh, my Mexican OCD ass is going crazy. Can you pronounce cumbia correctly, please? Cumbia. What? Cumbia. What? Am I saying it wrong? What is going on? Hi, yi, yi, yi, yi, yi, yi. Cumbia? Cumbia. Cumbia, my lord. Okay, that's how I'm going to say it. The more you say it, the more racist it's going to get. The more annoyed you are at the way I'm saying it, the more I'm going to turn around. Turn around and make it like I'm fucking Peggy Hill, okay? Kumbaya! Kumbaya! She come on my baya till I go ay ay ya. God damn it. She coming on my bee till I go ay ya. All right, anyway, here's uh, more. Here we're doing the blast off. Iran Israel updates with the conflict brought in after Iranian retaliation. To it. Israel not letting in age. Shohei Otani innocent and more walking dead. Season one, episode four later. Uh, get excited for that. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be doing that in a little bit. You already know what it is. Have you seen the TikTok trend of the girls showing off their boyfriend's dick using their painted fingernails? Wait, what? What the fuck? Japan has a Yakuza ramen place? That's the least surprising thing I've ever heard in my entire life, dude. Are you kidding me? Can we just start a position and just change the name back please thanks i'm gonna be honest and you guys have to promise not to hate me i've never played the yakuza games but i don't make fun of you guys just dig her thank you for the 20 community gift the subs have you ever gotten a dexa scan no but me and nice wig are gonna go get one but i don't want to get one now because i feel fat because i uh yesterday my buddy that came over i forgot to mention this yesterday my buddy came over and when he comes over he's like oh yeah i'll get you uh you know coffee or uh food items from this like fuckboy place the 
the community goods or whatever, the, the super trendy place. And I wanted him to get a, a breakfast sandwich for, I wanted him to get a breakfast sandwich for Will, which he did. Turns out he accidentally got two. Didn't realize there were two. Let me tell you why I didn't realize there were two. Until I ended the stream and I sat at that kitchen counter and I had a moment of, you know, I failed the QTE basically. I had a moment where I could have like pressed Q and spammed it super hard and then resisted the temptation. But I ate that shit cold and it was such a banger, dude. It was such a goddamn banger. Oh my lord, dude. I loved it so much. I ate it, and I can't get the Dexa. I can't get the Dexa scan now because I'm. Um, what is this? Do you guys like my new nails? Wait, what is this? What can I show this? I don't know what this is. Hassan, no. What is this? Is there cock in this? What the fuck? Was that a dick print? Yo, I can't do that. That's cock watch, man. Y'all are crazy, bro. Also, this isn't even like the fuck is this? This is like user eight three two two one uh three six nine three three seven ninety eight. The fuck do you mean? Bro said it's Friday. Let's do cock watch. We can't be doing that, chatters. God damn, son. We only meet watch Drake once, and that's all we ever needed to do. Exactly. Ah. Uh. Hasanabe hasn't even seen the TikTok girl that freezes her husband's cum and uses it as a facial cream a few days later. Y'all lucky I have constraint. Dude, that was an OT pay hand. Uh, yeah, that was an over the pants hand job. That's crazy. We're not doing Cockwatch Friday. I will say this, though. Uh, China, on the way to become more and more Amerabu, store in China is selling giant versions of snack, including Oreos and ramen. Love that for them. Okay, love that for them. Also, another thing I, another thing I saw... Another thing I saw is that like China has their own version of like Harlem Shake basically. Like they're in their Harlem Shake era. Online, they're on their they're doing their own Harlem Shake ass shit, which I love. Uh which means that which means that we are we are going to see some Chinese alt right shit, whatever that is. New Hassan fan camp. Yeah, they're doing a biker shake. I'm very gen Oh, we watched this already. We watched this fan cam last night. Um New neurodivergent discourse dropped. I love that. Yeah, it's called the motorcycle trend dance. Chinese netizens, uh, they have the motorcycle trend dance. Does anyone have that? Does anyone have a like a like a TikTok describing it? Here. The motorcycle shake has gone viral in China, consisting of riding an imaginary motorcycle while stomping one's feet to the addictive rhythm. The Bro, this is my favorite genre of TikTok. Okay, my favorite genre of TikTok is like like a Chinese English teacher explaining whatever the fuck is the new meta on Chinese TikTok. Talking about Chinese netizens and what they're up to. I fucking love that, okay? Dance is said to have been invented. Yeah, they're doing cringe shit. They're doing cringe. They're doing cringe. They're they're now officially doing cringe. By an elder of the Wa ethnic group in China's Yunnan province. <laughs> These videos took Chinese social media by storm, with netizens commenting, There has to be a V8 engine in his DNA. As I watched him dance, my feet started involuntarily tapping to the beat. How can Also, like, the way they describe Chinese netizens seems so insane to me. Bro, why does everyone shit on China? It looks like they're all having such an awesome time. Bro, they are. They're always having an awesome time. And, like, these accounts make it seem like Chinese netizens are the best on the planet, okay? They make it seem like Chinese people are using the internet in a very different way. Except for this. This is very cringe. Obviously, they're doing cringe. But, like, it is literally, it is literally, like, they're always helpful. They're always having fun. Chinese netizens are doing a phenomenal job online. At least with the way that these accounts represent them. People immediately go, it's propaganda. But honestly, I don't care. Chinese medicine is the best. Take it from a Chinese Canadian. No, netizens. Netizens. Fuck you mean this is cringe, dude? Yeah, I mean, of course it's cringe. It's a fucking viral dance move. Shut the fuck up. When he does it, he looks cool. But when I try it... I still don't understand what netizen refers to. A citizen on the internet, bro. What do you mean? A net citizen. A netizen. Isn't that what it is? It's not medicine. It's netizen. I'm not fucking 80, Hassan. This is my new favorite genre of chatter, okay? A lot of you are ducks, 
and not Clems, okay? A lot of you are ducks and not Clems, let me tell you. Bunch of duck chatters, and I don't mean that in, like, the uh, HBO's special show Warrior Sense. <laughs> Onion and Duck. I don't know if any of you guys watch that show, but they, they Duck refers to white people in that show. But the new meta in the chat always is, like, a 35-year-old typing like i'm not as old as you are in the chat okay it's like bro the things that i'm describing to you oftentimes you don't know about not because you're young and have youthful exuberance okay ah uh, oh i'm not as old as you are it's like dude typing it is literally older than me and i look like a creepy thief now it's become a trend to do the motorcycle shake college girls middle-aged men it means net and denizen. Okay, it could be. I thought it was citizen and net, but maybe it's den and uh, netizen or uh, denizen. Aunties. Net and denizen. Macho males and even pets, apparently. <laughs> Though I have to say, the most passionate and spirited dancers are still the white people. Anyway, they do such a fucking good job. Sam Harris pivots. Sam Harris pivots the Nazi apologia. Love that. Love that for him. Not shocking. We'll take a look at that as well. Aid in China looks so chill. Assalamu alaikum. We are Chinese Muslim from China. This is how we celebrate the Eid. First thing in the morning, go to pray Fajir. This is our mosque. It's quite big. This is the timetable for the five prayers. Breakfast with the date. Take a very deep sh Dude, seeing, seeing Chinese Muslims seems so weird to me. It's like, it just... Like, I know they exist, right? And we're not talking about Xinjiang. We're not talking about Uyghurs, okay? Which are Chinese Muslims as well. And they're in a whole separate category, according to the Chinese government, in the way that they fucking, uh, you know, uh, did anti-terrorist, uh, anti-separatist re-education, okay? But, like, when I see, yeah, when I see, like, uh, like what is it, Hui? Yeah, when I see, like, uh, other kinds of Chinese Muslims, it's just, like... It just catches me off guard. I don't know how to describe it. Like I, I don't expect a dude with like, with like a uh, with like a Chinese accent that just like straight up looks Chinese to just be like, Inshallah, brothers. <laughs> I don't. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Hi, yai, yai, yai, yai. Once a day, boys. Once a day, it's gotta happen. It's gotta happen. It's gotta happen. Once a day, we gotta have this. We gotta have this little moment to ourselves. My upload, my download is 630. My upload is 40 right now. And it still happens. You know what I mean? I talk about Chinese Muslims and the mistreatment one freaking time, dude. One freaking time. I'm sorry, she. She. I apologize. Okay. I apologize for the disrespect I showed to the Hui Muslim population. I apologize for saying that you were doing counterterrorism initiatives in Xinjiang. Nothing happened in Xinjiang. To the Uyghurs, okay? I just lost so much social credit. It fucking sucks. I'm not gonna watch this four minute video, by the way. That's crazy. Um, but yeah, Abordo is gone. Wait, what is it? Have you never saw Japanese Muslims? No, I ain't never seen Japanese Muslims. It's just fascinating. It's like seeing a BTTV killed it. Wait, what? Why did BTTV kill it? I feel like we played a role in this. That sucks. No more social credit. You in social debt. No, dude. No, no. I don't want to be in social debt. No. Mosques all over Japan. Anyway, mega size Oreos and other snacks have gone viral in China and you can get them too. Show this to a conservative and they heads will explode. Are you going to check out Civil War? I watched it last night and I really loved it. Yes. Uh, yes, I will. Nothing can be Indian netizens. One of the most viral videos last year was an astrology guy telling guys to rub yogurt on their balls while chanting a Hindu hymn to attract women you love. China got nothing on us. That is awesome. That sounds fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna. I'm gonna watch Civil War. Everybody, chill out. Cool your jets. All right. Let's talk about the White House and how closely it is watching the Iranian threat. As you guys know, this is what we are following. This is the story of the weekend. Okay. Is there a video explaining why you aren't practicing Islam? I want to know the scoop on that. Bro, I've never been a religious person at all. I am not a religious person. I am at best culturally Muslim and at worst uh, an infidel, a dirty little uh, sacrilegious person. I don't know. I'm just not. 
Does it strike you as odd that I am not a very religious person? Is that really all that shocking to you? Be honest. I'm not even kidding. A, a big part of that for me literally was the no pork thing. I know this is like the most shocking thing for many Muslims. My many Muslim brothers and sisters, that's the only thing that they don't do usually. Like many of them drink. They do the worst shit. They gamble. They're always up on that usury shit. But when it comes to pork, they say, brother, uh, no, brother. Because uh, it's like, I think it's like easier to not consume. But for me, one of the harder rules, in my opinion, because it's just so delicious. Once you get a taste of that pork, it's like duck with human flesh last night. You know what I mean? Duck got a taste of that human flesh and he couldn't stop on Walking Dead. And it's just like me with pork. I got a taste of it and I was like, I can't stop myself. Brother, it's so good. It, it just bacon on its own is what I, what cooks me, honestly. Bacon is what goes hard for me. That's it. It played a big role. What's the brother meme? Explain yourself. Okay, bro. I can't be explaining all this shit. I thought you hated thick shoelaces. Take them shits off, brother. I do hate thick shoelaces, except for the Rick Owens, Doc Martens collab, which I'm wearing currently. That shit is dope. All right. Anyway, what the fuck am I doing, dude? Come on. It's time. It's time to talk about Iran. Will it? Will they? Won't they? We're in a will they? Won't they type situation with Iran right now. With respect to Israel, as uh, Iran is saying that they are going to inevitably retaliate against Israel, the time is now to punish Israel, is the quote that came from uh, the Iranian government. Okay, here it is. CNN has learned that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is meeting with his war cabinet just ahead of what they anticipate could be a potential attack from <laughs> Iran. It comes after an Israeli airstrike hit the Iranian consulate in Damascus, Syria, last week, killing a dozen Iranian military officials. The Pentagon says the top U.S. general for the Middle East is in Israel right now, meeting with Israeli military officials about the security threats. And the White House tells CNN that officials there are keeping a very close eye on the situation uh, and are in constant communication with Israel. Let's get to the latest reporting from our correspondents. CNN International. We're keeping a Diplomatic very close eye, bro. Robertson is joining us from Jerusalem. And our Natasha Bertrand is uh, over at the Pentagon. Nick, first to you. First of all, what can you tell us about this Israeli war cabinet meeting? How concerned are Israelis right now that Iran could launch an attack, a retaliatory attack against Israel? There's a real concern. Wolf. I, I am Iranian. They ain't doing shit. I mean, I'm leaning on... I'm leaning on the side of Iran not doing shit either because, like, they have been remarkably restrained. Like, they have been insanely restrained, okay? So, for me, that's that's what I'm on. That that I'm I'm leaning on the side of, of, like, Iran might not doing something crazy. But you guys know when I predict stuff, the exact opposite tends to happen. So, no predictions for me, brother, okay? It's not happening. Not going to give you, not going to do that. Not going to give you a prediction. Okay. Can't be doing that. I've learned my lesson. You guys know what I have fucking, what I have said in the past. Okay. You can't catch me. You can't catch me slipping, especially not at the top of the hour when there's a three minute ad break. Don't be caught slipping at the top of the hour without a subscription, which is for five dollar redos or a free one in the form of a Twitch Prime, by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account, you get one free Prime subscription a month. Use it on your favorite broadcaster. Hopefully that is I, Hassan Hassan Abi Piker. Um, but yeah, how long will Iran allow itself to get kicked in the nuts before Israel loses his shit? If Iran does anything, it's cooked, no matter how restrained, in my opinion, Israel kind of needed it for the PR, so it will escalate immediately. Yeah. I mean, Israel has brought this upon themselves, but of course, no one will see it that way, no matter what happens. My suspicion, this is not speculation, I'm not like 100% on it, my, but my suspicion is that like Iran will probably blow up an embassy or some shit, okay? An Israeli embassy specifically, okay? Here's the three-minute ad break now. Bill Boneless, thank you for the five Get the subs. I still don't understand what, what Hassan Abi did wrong in predicting Russia v. Ukraine wrong, like it was a prediction law. It don't matter. It don't matter. I am uh, anti-America in my criticisms. I'm anti-State Department propaganda in my criticisms. And if you get something wrong, even remotely, the people that get things wrong professionally will constantly bludgeon you in the head over it. They still do it. 
So I am using very careful language, okay? Things wrong professionally will constantly bludgeon you in the head over it. They still do it. So I am using very careful language, okay? Is there no global repercussion for bombing a foreign embassy? Not when you're Israel. Not when you're America either, but Israel is an extension of America. So that's how it works, okay? that Iran could do that in the coming 24 or 48 hours. I've talked to various intelligence sources in the region. We'll cover the, the what happens if Israel um, goes to war with Iran. They understand, yeah. and this is what we're getting from a lot of different sources, um, that Iran is poised to respond. Now, of course, this could be Iran intentionally disinforming, putting disinformation out there just to create that the sense of jitters among the Israeli public here, among the leadership in Israel about precisely what they'll do and it's unclear what they'll do will they respond and strike back directly to israel themselves will they use proxies to strike into israel will they strike israeli interests elsewhere in the region that's a question on people's minds at the moment but that strength of and show of unity and support between the united states and israel's on display today at the hadsaw air base in the south of israel the centcom commander general eric carilla there with uh, yoav galant the israeli defense Minister, the Deputy IDF Chief of Staff, also there. Um, so this is very much a message of unity and strength and preparedness. So this is what we heard from Rear Admiral uh, Daniel Hagari, the D IDF's spokesperson, just last night. I mean, it is kind of confusing. This coverage is kind of confusing, all things considered, because honestly, they are, I mean... Some of the other coverage that we saw yesterday was like, Iran is going to fuck around and find out. Like, you, you still get that kind of, like, talk shit, get hit Iran, which is ironic because, like, Israel started it, literally, by striking their embassy. But, um, oh, here is Biden, who just said he expects an attack sooner rather than later. I mean, it's going to happen this weekend is what everybody's saying. Expectation sooner than later. Yeah, he said the expectation is sooner rather than later, just now. Breaking news. Um, Israel is hoping Iran will respond so they have an excuse to attack Iran's nuclear facilities. Yeah, but like a broader conflict with Iran that draws the United States of America into it is going to not be beneficial for Israel's long term existence in the region. Um, I don't think that Iran itself is like a super powerful country, but they are significantly more powerful than Hamas is. They have actual missile capabilities. That's a whole standing nation. Like, think about it this way. Israel has a hard time dealing with Hamas as it's doing ethnic cleansing, right? And then you level up a little bit. You look at Hezbollah, which Israel has lost to in the past which has its own military. You look at another regional player like Yemen, which has, uh, which has withstood genocide, but at least like they have some semblance of autonomy and are not like Hamas at all. And with the limited capabilities that the Yemen population has, they've been able to shut down the Red Sea, okay? A little bit goes a long way as long as you are willing to take actions in this region, okay? You're talking about Israel trying to deal with dudes who make bathtub rockets. When I say bathtub rockets, I'm not joking. They literally make their rocket launchers like by hand. They make their sniper rifles by hand. They use bomb parts that Israel has bombed in the region to to uh, to to basically make this shit uh, to whip it up. So if Israel's having a hard time with them, and America is having a hard time with uh, the Houthis, okay, a much broader conflict is going to be devastating not only for Israel, but for the entire globe. Why? Because Iran is a whole-ass nation-state. Iran is a whole-ass nation-state that has been outside of the orbit of American influence for multiple decades, almost half a century, I mean, more than half a century at this point. Almost a century at this point. So, clearly... Clearly, they are propped against this sort of thing. This is like the reason for the existence of these incredibly, um, these, this is the, re uh, the reason for this incredibly fucking, oh my God, is this the new meta? What's happening here? It is the new meta, isn't it?
Anyway, I'm, I don't know why I'm fucking paying attention to these dumb fucks. Okay. Indian chatter here. Are you basically saying that Iran is lying too, sir? No, I've always had, I've always had this, this notion that I repeat regularly, which is that war with a whole ass fucking state is not fought on how many people do they have? What are their capabilities versus how many people does the other side have? And what are their capabilities? All war is about attrition. Okay. And countries that are more authoritarian or have withstood sanctions for many, many years are going to be able to withstand attrition for much longer. They have more mileage because their living conditions are already dog shit for the most part. Okay. That's why when you look at Israel's actions, Israel's military actions in the region, or when you look at Israel's ethnic cleansing campaign in Gaza versus the way that Hamas operates, you, you recognize that like they can get away with dying by the tens of thousands, even if you were to hit like Hamas commanders or whatever, it's not the same as killing one Israeli soldier. That takes a much larger toll on Israel. It's more expensive for Israel. There's more of a psychological toll on Israel. When Palestinians, all they know is death and destruction and they have nowhere else to go, they're going to fucking sit there in a tunnel and wait. They can wait out Israel's ethnic cleansing. The same to a certain degree goes for the same to a certain degree goes for Iran. Now obviously the Iranian living conditions for the average citizens is much better than uh, Palestinians, but Iran also has a shit ton more capabilities as far as missile systems and also where they can hit those missiles. While Hamas cannot operate and has never historically operated outside of Gaza, right? And maybe to a certain degree in the West Bank every now and then, Iran can hit Saudi Arabia. Why is that significant? Because if you hit Saudi oil refineries, you all of a sudden are, are making this a much broader conflict for the rest of the planet. Iran has struck Saudi refineries in the past. Saudi Arabia knows this. Saudi Arabia knows that this is a genuine capability of Iran. We're not even talking about just the axis of uh, resistance against Israel and America. We're talking straight up Iran potentially blowing up oil refineries and shutting down uh, the, the Saudi capabilities. All of a sudden, there's an energy crisis for the rest of the globe. Okay? This is a major problem for everyone. It's a major political problem for the Western world, which is grown comfortable. Did you watch the hockey video on Iran? No, but uh, I would love to watch the hockey video on Iran. Um, anyway, so this is very important to understand. Okay, this is very important to understand. Yemen targeted Saudi, not Iran. Important to note that Iran is not simply a state actor, but a regional power. Yes. Speaking about how prepared Israel is for whatever threat comes from Iran. We're highly alert and prepared for a wide range of scenarios and are conducting a situational assessment. We're ready in both defense and defense with the various IDF capabilities and strategic partners. Like, think about it this way. It's especially tricky for Europe who are literally only just recovering from the cutoff from Russian oil. That didn't even officially happen. Like, utilizing uh, non-Russian mediators to get Russian gas and oil literally... Uh, made Russian oil more costly, right? It made Russian oil and gas more costly for Europe, and even that had a political toll. So when you think about it, like, we in the Western world are kind of weak due to our comfort, due to the living conditions that we are used to experiencing. It's weakness from the, from the framework of, like, if we are thinking about war as attrition... The country that is invading or the country that is facilitating an invasion, the country that is facilitating an invasion thousands of miles away has much more to lose even when they're, you know, when their comforts are uh, taken away. Bro, who's weak, lol? The United States of America is weaker as a whole because of a couple different reasons. One, we have some semblance of democracy or an attitude that we, uh, like, we, we have a belief that we have a theoretical democratic process in place. That is weakness if you're thinking about war. That analysis again. Ooh, you're right.
That's why historically the United States lost in Vietnam. The United States lost in Vietnam because of exactly what I just mentioned. We lost in Vietnam because we were fucking thousands of miles away doing death and destruction to a foreign population, and it went on for 20 fucking years. That's the same reason why we lost in Afghanistan, okay? We had to pull out. Strongest military on the fucking planet. Why do we have to pull out? We had to pull out. No, it's not because the Vietnamese were better fighters. That's not true. It's because the Vietnamese had nowhere to go. It's because the Vietnamese had no other option but to defend themselves. And the Vietnamese also had less and could do more with less when you are fighting against people and no it's not just that the vietnamese were farmers you had the, the obviously you had the north vietnamese army as well like you have you had many different factions you had you know weapon systems and whatnot they got support from the ussr there are important factors in here obviously their military capabilities were ascetic in comparison to the american military machine but ultimately the reason why america has lost time and time and time again uh, against enemies that are significantly weaker than it is because there is a political toll when you are fighting and when you are doing imperialism. There's a limitation to how much imperialism you can do because once it starts hurting back home, you go, all right, we got to dial this back a little bit. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, I Israel and Iranian GDP are somewhat similar, but Israel is completely dependent on foreign aid from the U.S. Iran is the power in the region that supports others. It's the regional big dog. Yes. So... This is very, this is very important. You need to, you need to understand Americans have more to lose when you're fighting against someone who has, who has less to lose than you. They have a significant upper hand. Okay. Americans have more to lose. Israelis have more to lose than the Palestinians. And therefore the Palestinians have an upper hand in this regard, even though the military capabilities of Israel, obviously a nuclear military state is insane. Like you can't even compare bathtub rockets to Merkava tanks, right? And yet, you got dudes popping out of fucking holes in the goddamn uh, holes in the in the bottom of fucking uh, every every meter in Gaza in the Gaza Strip, and just lobbing grenades, uh, bypassing their trophy systems on the Merkava tanks. These are is crazy. You have to remember that. Do you really think democracy makes people weak? No. But democracy makes you weak if you're trying to do war. If you're a warmonger, yes, a democratic process is going to hurt you because domestically, it is once people's living conditions suffer even a little bit, they're going to be like, what the fuck are we doing? Why are we doing this? Yes, that's how it works. Chat will remember that. <laughs> yeah. Democracy makes war harder, which is why, you know, we kind of shut off uh, a lot of the, uh, the uh, democratic pressure valves in times of war historically you know that's how it works in civilization yeah i'm not operating off of civ i'm operating off of just normal human history Ugh. it's not that democracy makes the individual weak it makes the leader's authority weaker yes exactly you have to convince your population to go to war while an authoritarian regime just doesn't except it's not just that democracy and prosperity makes you weak okay prosperity also makes you weak because when you are a nation that is comfortable, like the Western nations on this planet, okay? Your population is used to some level of treats. And if those treats get cut off, you're like, whoa, what the fuck? Chill out, bro. We got to dial this shit back. I want my fucking treats again, okay? That's, the, that's my point. Same with the Israelis versus the Palestinians, okay? I, I mean, I've been saying that. I've been saying that since the beginning of this fucking conflict as well. But America as a whole isn't prosper right now. No, America is infinitely more prosperous than the global south that we extract natural resources and labor power from. What the fuck do you mean? Get your head out of your ass for a moment. I'm talking about I'm talking about the labor aristocracy. I'm talking about the comfort that the average American citizen has, okay? The average American citizen is in an infinitely more comfortable uh, place than the average citizen anywhere else on the fucking uh, anywhere else in the global south especially. You know what I mean? Big part of that Comfort also comes from the never-ending uh, imperialist agenda, the never-ending war, the military-industrial complex. All right, let's keep going. Strike coming from Iranian territory will clearly prove the Iranian intentions to escalate the situation in the Middle East and to stop hiding behind its proxies. 
And I think you get a, a level of the understanding of, of how this concern is shared jointly between the United States and Israel, the State Department and the embassy here, warning staff not to stray beyond the sort of Tel Aviv area, Jerusalem area, Beersheba area. Stay in those areas. The concern is it's just not clear what Iran's move is going to be, the sense that it could be soon, Wolf. Yeah, there's a lot of concern in those uh, emb the U.S. Embassy and other embassies in Israel as well are issuing warnings to their citizens to stay put, basically, uh, and worry, uh, start worrying about the potential, let's hope it doesn't happen, about the potential of this war escalating big time between Israel and Iran. Natasha, I want to go to the Pentagon with you for a moment. Uh, the top U.S. Uh, military commander in the Middle East, uh, the, the commander of the U.S. Military Central Command, is in Israel right now. We just heard Nick... Talk about that. What do we know about his trip, the coordination that's going on between the United States and Israel in anticipation, in fear of a, a formal, a full-scale Iranian retaliatory response? Well, Wolf, Eric Carilla, the top general for the Middle East, uh, he did say that the U.S. Uh, and the Pentagon did say also that the U.S. stands with Israel against any potential attack that Iran might launch uh, against the Israelis. And President Biden made this very clear as well, that they are in constant coordination with the Israelis to prepare for the possibility that they do launch some kind of attack uh, directly on Israeli soil. And according to a readout from the Israeli side, General Eric Carilla, he did meet with Yoav Gala today to discuss for the record israel has stated i don't know if they would follow through on this but israel has stated that if iran strikes them in any capacity they are already doing military training uh with the cypriot military for uh striking iranian targets inside of the uh inside of the iranian state so israel has said that they will increase the pressure okay not like uh, not taking pot shots against IRGC leadership or uh, other axis of resistance forces in Syria and in Iraq and also against Hezbollah in uh, Lebanon, okay, in southern Lebanon. Israel has violated a couple red lines. Israel has crossed a couple boundaries. First, obviously, uh, the escalation and going into Gaza and doing ethnic cleansing, okay? But if these other regional actors consider Palestinian lives to be at least remotely expendable, there are a couple other red lines that Israel has definitely crossed that violate, like, that, that rational actors in the region have to respond to. Because if they don't actually respond to it, then Israel has shown that they will continue going harder and harder and harder. These red lines are striking beirut israel has in the past struck beirut but very limited okay but striking beirut is a major escalation okay striking beirut is a major escalation against hezbollah and against the lebanese state in general another even more major red line that was crossed was this past week when israeli forces bombed the uh, Iranian embassy compound in Damascus, okay? When you do that, you are basically hitting Iranian territory. They took out a bunch of higher-level IRGC people, but you are not allowed to do that. You can't, like, there are rules of this sort of thing, okay? <laughs> so when Israel is operating like this, other regional actors have to do something. Consulate, not embassy, sorry, the consulate compound. But, like, you have to do something... You have to retaliate or else Israel has shown that they will continue escalating over and over and over again. And that is the predicament that Israel has placed Iran in. That is the predicament that Israel has placed every other regional actor in. Okay? They are belligerent. They are striking blindly at anyone and everyone they can. And I think their ultimate goal is to try to draw the United States into a broader conflict against Iran. I think that's the reason why they're doing this. Now, if I can make this speculation, then I'm assuming American State Department operatives can make this speculation as well, as they have a, a shit ton more information and more knowledge, more direct on the ground knowledge, like espionage capabilities are much better for the State Department than someone like myself. They're getting direct information from Israel. They know better. Okay. So, yeah, they have intelligence like direct intelligence and they communicate 
directly for uh, they communicate directly with the uh, Israeli state. So if I can see it, they can too. So if they can see it, why are they not reining Israel in? Why are they not making assurances to Iran that they will rein Israel in? And I think therein lies the heart of the conflict within the American State Department. From the beginning of October 8 and Israel's uh, latest siege into Gaza, there have been people within the American State Department that are, that are saying that Israel is going to go above and beyond and we have to be more careful because they are going to over leverage and abuse our unconditional allegiance. This is why many State Department people uh, obviously uh, were, were very agitated and some even quit, right, uh, over the Biden administration's like no red lines, unconditional bear hug support to Israel. That's why you saw a lot of resignations. And that's why you saw a lot of people who are still in the American State Department that are very critical of the Biden administration. Now, let me explain something to you. And you have to understand this. You have to understand something. Those in the American State Department do not care about Palestinian lives. Their interest in reigning Israel in has nothing to do with saving Palestinian lives. You need to understand that. Their interest is because they see the writing on the wall. They recognize that Israel going above and beyond like this in the most belligerent way possible makes them look weaker to the rest of the world, makes them look weaker to the global south that they can't rein in their own attack dog. So politically, it limits our soft power capabilities. And if Israel destabilizes this region with a much broader conflict drawing Iran in, all of a sudden you reach the bar of like maximum gun sales and you go above it because obviously chaotic circumstances are great for capital owners. They can always, they can always find a way to, to, to make money in a situation like this, but too much chaos. Well, when you have too much chaos, all of a sudden profit margins are going to uh, profit margins are going to go down. Okay. And I think that the State Department interest, or at least those within the American State Department that are trying to rein Israel in or trying to urge the Biden camp to, to scale this back dramatically, okay, see that Israel has reached critical mass, a terminal velocity, if you will, okay? Because the market will be great until one moment where it's no longer great, okay? However, I do fear... I do fear that uh, that point has probably been passed. Here is uh, uh, the executive vice president of the Quincy Institute, Trita Parsi, and his analysis on uh, Israel uh, and, and America's allegiance. Biden is about to drag America into a war with Iran on behalf of Israel. The disastrous way he has handled matters since Israel bombed the Iranian consulate in Damascus shows that any shift in Biden's policy on Israel was all talk, no walk. Okay. Here's a short thread on Biden's latest cave to Netanyahu. According to the U.S., it was not given an adequate heads up for Israel's carefully calculated bombing of the Iranian consulate in Damascus. This is a major violation, okay? The fact that Israel is not, like, the fact that Israel is not telling America that they're bombing Iranian soil is insane, okay? Not only is it obviously illegal, it is very dangerous because of what we are seeing right now. What is, what is happening right now, but it, it's ridiculous. It makes America look weak again. It's not just disrespectful, which it is. It makes Biden look weak, but it makes American soft power. It limits American soft power capabilities because now everyone else goes, well, you can't fucking control Israel. Why the fuck would I listen to you? It kind of pierces the veil of American hegemony, okay? Not only was it a flagrant violation of the Vienna Convention, but it also risked, perhaps intentionally, ending the fragile truce between the U.S., Iran, and Iran-aligned militias in Iraq and Syria. By that, Israel directly and knowingly jeopardized American security and put U.S. troops at risk. Indeed, and this is, again, remember, this is from the perspective of the American State Department, okay? This is not my opinion. His analysis is talking about this from the framework of American hegemonic power and American safety and security, okay? 
very two very different things because my opinion on the matter is obvious. I think Israel is an illegal, abhorrent, genocidal apartheid regime that is arrogant and its arrogance and its hubris will lead to its demise. Okay? That's not that, that's entirely different from what I am talking about right now with respect to how some American State Department uh, officials are viewing the situation and recognizing that our unconditional allegiance with Israel has caused them to go above and beyond and try to bring about uh, a much, try to draw the United States into a much larger conflict. They crossed several red lines, as you said, but attacking Iran's consulate in Damascus was a strategic move because Syria and Iran have a close-knit relationship, and that embassy is a very crucial point of contact. At the same time, it is Iran's soil they attacked. Netanyahu made a big whoopsie here. It's not a whoopsie. They did it deliberately, I think. Iran is going to attack Israeli soil as well. Whatever happens, happens. Also, Iran does have nukes. Okay, well, I don't know if Iran has nukes or not. We don't know about that. But it is a war crime. It is completely unacceptable. You've said multiple times this can lead to Israel's demise, and I don't understand how we get here from that point. America needed to pull out and here from that point. America needed to pull out and pull the exit valve one million times before this moment, for the record. If America had been a little bit more restrained in its unconditional support for Israel, perhaps Israel wouldn't feel like they have the bandwidth to be able to do this kind of thing. Okay. It was a major strategic misstep made by zealots, okay? People like Biden and their unconditional support to Israel has caused Israel to think that they could get away with being this belligerent and even draw the United States in to broader conflict. This is entirely in the hands of the ultra-Zionists within the Brandon camp, okay? A normal and appropriate response from the President of the United States would have been to strongly rebuke, rebuke Israel for jeopardizing American security. This was an act. This was not an act of self-defense by any stretch of the imagination. Condemn the attack due to its violation of a key tenet of international law and use that even-handedness to also press Iran to show further restraint. That did not happen. But this is not how Biden operates. Even when Israel undermines U.S. interests and security, even though Biden knows that Netanyahu has an interest in prolonging and enlarging the war, which Biden has declared contradicts U.S. interests. Instead, Biden refused to condemn Israel's escalation and flagrant violation of international law, another major reveal of how meaningless Biden's rule, rules-based order talk is, and effectively blocked the U.N. Security Council for condemning it as well. But perhaps most shockingly, Biden then goes on to give Israel another bear hug, another standing green light uh, by repeatedly stating that U.S. support for Israel is ironclad. So instead of rebuking Israel for jeopardizing the safety of the American troops in the Middle East, Biden rewarded Israel. And by that, he deprives Israel of any incentives to avoid pushing the Middle East towards a disastrous regional war that will also engulf the United States. Biden's bear hug on October 8 helped remove any Israeli inhibitions about how it would conduct the war. Now, Biden has once again helped remove any such inhibitions about Israel starting a regional war that America doesn't want and doesn't need. Netanyahu is lucky to have such a deferential American president, and America is unlucky to have such a weak president. I think this analysis is very sound. If they had drawn Israel, uh, if they had reined Israel in since October 8, instead of fucking bear-hugging Netanyahu, it wouldn't have gotten to this point most likely. Okay. America is letting Israel roam free in this region, and Israel is a violent attack dog, striking at anyone and everyone without care and consideration for anything. Not their own, not the livelihood of their own citizens, not the livelihood and safety and security of American soldiers in the region, certainly obviously not the, you know, uh, humanity of the Palestinian population, but that much we knew about already. <clears throat> so we'll see what happens, but I don't, I, I don't know. I, I feel as though we may have crossed a point of no return here if Iran ends up striking an Israeli embassy, uh, even then, Israel's retaliation probably will be even more severe. Obviously, this is uh, pure speculation, and if Israel's retaliation is more severe, they then Iranian retaliation will be even more severe, and America will have to make a decision and that decision most likely will judging by uh you know how america has operated so far 
and how quickly the media will probably say like, well, look, see, poor Israelis are being killed by these barbaric monsters uh, that may or may not have done 9-11 like uh, Iran. Iran did 9-11, by the way, which they didn't, obviously. I'm joking, but, uh, you know, think about how quickly we lashed Iran onto the axis of evil post 9-11 when they were like, the fuck do you mean? We did 9-11. The guys we hate and we fight against in the region did 9-11 directly. Um, so we'll see what happens. Readiness for an Iranian attack against the state of Israel, which may lead to regional escalation. So clearly all sides here are bracing for the possibility that this escalates into a full-on conflict uh, between Iran and Israel. However, U.S. intelligence assessments, as we reported a little bit earlier in the week, they assess that this is more likely to be carried out by Iranian proxy forces in pay. the region rather than from Iran directly. And that is for a number of reasons, but most prominently is because the Iranians don't necessarily want to get involved in a full-blown war with Israel that the U.S., as they have stated publicly, would then come to Israel's defense with. So the Iranians trying to kind of temper their response, according to our sources. However, it is very possible at this point, according to intelligence assessments, that these Iranian proxies carry out attacks against Israeli assets in the region. And so all sides kind of bracing for that and, importantly, how Israel is going to respond, because that is also going to inform just how much this conflict escalates, Wolf. So, Natasha, just to be precise, if Hezbollah, an Iranian proxy in southern Lebanon, starts launching rockets and missiles, bombs towards Haifa, Tel Aviv, elsewhere in Israel, uh, the Israelis presumably would respond big time against Hezbollah in southern Lebanon, try to destroy their capability. But it wouldn't necessarily attack directly Iranian targets in Iran. Is that the, the U.S. understanding as well? Well, it's not clear just whether the U.S. would uh, characterize an attack by an Iranian proxy against Israel as an attack by Iran itself. The U.S. has made very clear, of course, that the proxies are only able to function and really survive because of Iranian support for them. But at the same time, you know, it would definitely be a layer removed from Iran itself if the proxies were the ones carrying out these attacks. However, Israel has said that they are going to respond forcibly to whatever kind of attack uh, they are faced with uh, by Iran or its proxies. And so it just remains to be seen how exactly this is going to play out. All right, very important, very, uh, very uh, worrisome developments unfolding right now. Natasha, thank you. Nick, thanks to you as well. I want to bring in CNN military analyst, retired U.S. Army Lieutenant General Mark Hurtling. General, thanks so much for joining us. As you know, officials are telling CNN they expect Iran will respond imminently. Keyword, imminently. Do you think Iran is likely to strike Israel directly, or could that happen through a proxy like Hezbollah, for example, in Lebanon? Everyone's asking that question, Wolf, and what I'd say is General Kurilla is there because he's looking at what is the most dangerous course of action that Iran will take and what's the most likely. The most dangerous is a strike by Iran inside of Israel because that could certainly cause an inflection point and expand this war. The most likely, as all of your reporters, Natasha just said, is like... Yeah, by the way, remember, the dangerous inflection point isn't Israel striking what is functionally uh, Iranian soil, right? That's not the inflection point. The inflection point is when Iran retaliates for being uh, striked by Israel. Likely an attack by any number of, uh, of proxy groups, whether it's Hezbollah in, in Lebanon or any of Hezbollah. the PNF forces in Iraq or Syria or uh, in the area. So that's what General Carrilla and probably he has some of his intelligence uh, officers with him, as well as some of his operators, so that they can react with naval and air forces uh, from the U.S. in case anything does happen, because the key is deterring any further expansion of this regional conflict. The Israeli strike on that Iranian consulate uh, building in Damascus was, what, about a week or so ago. Why do you think Iran has now waited this long to respond? They immediately issued warnings that they were going to respond, but they haven't yet. Well, p part of it is the messaging that Iran off often uses. And they're concerned about attacking... By the way, while they're saying that this is a retaliatory attack right now, which is definitely a change of pace from what was expected from mainstream media, which usually laps up State Department propaganda... Um, that attitude will change very quickly if Iran does retaliate. So make no mistake, I would be shocked. I would be shocked if the United States of America actually, uh, uh, or American media actually didn't change tone 
and kept saying that this was a retaliation uh, and not simply an escalation from Iran, making it seem like Iran just did this out of nowhere, right? Uh, making it seem like uh, Iran came out of nowhere fucking swinging for the, for the fences like they did, uh, like, they, like they covered October 7th. You should check out the Bourdain content on Iran. He does the country justice. Okay, we'll do that later, okay? So far. Um, like, it, they're, they're calling it a potential retaliatory attack, which is interesting. That is definitely bad PR for Israel, which I suspect is, is uh, which I suspect comes from the fact that Israel is like expanded on their mileage uh, uh, on, on, you know, getting good natured, good favor, uh, favorable coverage over and over again with the whole genocide stuff. So, uh, especially after they killed a bunch of white people in Gaza and like triple tap them. So yeah, we'll see inside of Israel, because truthfully, Wolf, as you know, Israel's force is pretty uh, extensive and pretty competent. They can certainly go after Iranian uh, forces if they do these kind of things. So I think Iran is trying to get their proxies together to determine what would be the best and most effective attacks by their proxies and potentially themselves uh, without being uh, deterred or countered by any Israeli forces. So, again, that's why everyone is on uh, the edge to see which kind of force Iran will use and how they will use it. Israel reportedly preparing for a huh. new worst case scenario, a direct attack from Iran on Israeli soil. Sources say that the strike could happen at any time within the next 48 hours. Tehran has already vowed to take revenge for last week's IDF strike on an Iranian consulate in Damascus, Syria. The White House says they're taking the threat very seriously. We are certainly mindful of a, uh, a very public and what we consider to be a very credible threat made by Iran uh, in terms of uh, potential uh, attacks uh, on Israel, and that we are in constant communication with our Israeli counterparts uh, about making sure uh, that they can defend themselves against uh, those kinds of attacks. Jennifer Griffin is live at the Pentagon with more. Jen? Dagan, I've been covering the Middle East, as you know, for 30 years, and I have never seen things so tense with the potential for a wider war to break out between Israel and Iran, which could draw the U.S. and others into a wider Middle East war. Until now, the U.S. has been facing Iranian proxies. But in the wake of the Israeli airstrike on April 1st in Damascus that killed the Iranian Revolutionary Guard general and six other top Iranian commanders responsible for arming Iran's proxy groups, Iran appears poised to avenge that attack with a massive show of force targeting Israeli territory. In recent days, the U.S. has prepositioned additional military assets in the region. The attacks by the Houthis, supported by Iran, continue to threaten U.S. ships in the Red Sea. Tensions are at an all-time high. U.S. officials tell me that they have seen movements suggesting that Iranian ballistic missiles could launch any day. Israeli warplanes are patrolling the skies along the borders, and Israel's military has been put on high alert for a massive missile and drone strike that is expected to emanate from Iran. The U.S. Embassy told Americans who work for the embassy not to leave Tel Aviv, Jerusalem, or Beersheba, and to avoid travel to the north or south of Israel. The head of U.S. Central Command, General Eric Carrillo, was in Israel to meet with Israel's Minister of Defense, Yoav Gallant, who praised General Carrillo as a true friend of Israel. General Carrillo briefed his Israeli defense counterparts on the latest intelligence and is still in the region. We're comfortable with uh, the, the way we have communicated the, the reality of this threat uh, and the conversations that we're having with Israel. What we are not going to sit back and be comfortable on is uh, uh, knowing exactly what this is going to look like. And that, that's why we are working so intensively uh, to make sure that, uh, that uh, Israel has what it needs to defend itself. What's unusual is for Iran to telegraph its response. It usually relies on proxies and terrorism, with the U.S. releasing <laughs> what is clearly very specific. Yeah, it relies on proxy and terrorism.
specific intelligence, you can't rule out that Iran will look for an off-ramp to avoid a war that could draw in U.S. forces. All eyes now on the supreme leader, Ayatollah Khamenei. And, Dagan, if I could just add to your discussion on 702, we've just received a statement from CIA Director Bill Burns, an urgent statement about the 702 FISA uh, vote that is upcoming. And he explained how crucial this 702 um, uh, war, basically to renew it is for the U.S. intelligence community. He said that they would not be able to track the Chinese uh, networks that bring fentanyl through Mexico and up through the border into the United States. They could not have killed uh, al-Qaeda leader Alman al-Zawahiri. They could not have uh, stopped or, or found the network that attacked the colonial pipeline. So this 702 <laughs> legislation needs to be renewed and without mm -hmm. uh, any amendments or warrants okay. uh, because it would be so dangerous otherwise. Dagan. Thank you so much, Jennifer Griffin at the Pentagon. Uh, Paul, to you first on this. Uh, Jennifer mentioned China. Uh, the United States is essentially bankrolling Iran because Joe Biden and company. Bro, we're so cooked. The way, the way that the way that we fucking operate in this country is so crazy. Like, dude, this is the most, remember, this is the most popular news network, okay? Read my messages, brother. What? Don't take the fent away. We need more. Don't take the fentanyl away. We need more. M are the best. I love fent. It was a joke. Why are you asking me to read your message? You didn't even fucking pair that with a three minute ad break debate at the top of the hour, by the way, which is a misstep in my opinion. My man was like, please, dude, you have to read what I have to say, which is I love fentanyl. You know what I love? The top of the hour ad break and avoiding the top of the hour ad break by subscribing for five dollars or for free. OK, if you also love avoiding the top of the hour ad break, then subscribe for five dollars or for free with Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account where you get one free Prime subscription a month, okay? This way, you will spend your $5 wisely instead of putting it in the fentanyl fund. A1 since day one, thank you for the five community gifted subs, allowing five people to no longer see the ads at the top of the hour. I don't know what the going rate is for fentanyl, and I don't intend to learn what the going rate is for fentanyl. You can also subscribe with your Amazon Prime account being connected to your Twitch account where you get one free Prime subscription a month uh, there. You can use that there or get gifted a sub. If you're lucky, use a three-minute ad break now. Use in upper decky or lower decky. I'm an upper decky boy. I've never done lower decky. That's crazy. I used to chew lower deckies, though. When I was chew when I was a chewer, chewing tobacco, that is, I would lower deck it. They have not done everything in their power to drive down the price of oil and to stop the export of Iranian oil, particularly to China. We have not even sanctioned Chinese buyers of Iranian oil, which the Republicans in the House have tried to do. Yeah, and we also sent them pallets of cash, right? So we haven't made Iran we did not feel do that. Made a real pain here. And we did not do that. That's bullshit. That's not real. It's also not real. We unfroze assets that they were supposed to get paid for for selling oil to South Korea. And we unfroze those $6 billion of assets and sent it by way of Qatar. We did not give them pallets of cash. It was their money. It was their money. And the fact that we were able to stop South Korea from paying Iran for oil that they had purchased is insane. But of course, that's how it works when we are the number one country on the planet, baby. I'm going to go back to the what I would argue is the original blunder, which is this. Subsequent to the original attack, the United States took a very uh, took a, a step back and operated essentially through the media and through pronouncements. At the same time, the Hamas leadership resides in what is nominally an American ally, Qatar, and we have left their operational control, command and control, in place. Where is the case on them? Hamas is a designated terrorist group. Why aren't we treating them the way we treated ISIS, Al-Qaeda, and everybody else? Indict the leadership, tell Qatar, get them on the tarmac in JFK tomorrow. Otherwise, you know what? You're going to have a problem with us because they have 
five, four or five major American university campuses there. We have a major military base. Our biggest one in the Middle East is in Qatar. We have plenty of leverage there. We haven't used it, and it's one of the reasons why Iran is so empowered. The Wall Street Journal today, Emily writes, Biden remembers that Iran is listening, and they say the following, abandoning an ally in wartime is an invitation to its enemies. And in essence, that's what Biden and the Democrats have done or started to do to Israel in recent weeks. He threatened to withdraw support Biden did for the Israeli war effort. You had 40 and up to 56 House Democrats threatening to cut off weapons to Israel and what happens? Well, Iran is emboldened. That's right. We demonstrated to the world how Biden responds and behaves to our allies in Afghanistan. We set the plate, we set the table right then. The reason that, as Jennifer Griffin frighteningly points out, that we are the closest to a Middle East war than we've been in decades is because there's been a failure of deterrence because our president has a fear of escalation that has eclipsed any show of strength. When you have a leader in the Oval Office that has no backbone, that is afraid of ruffling feathers throughout the globe and throughout the Middle East, that is afraid of showing support for allies rather than in, in exchange for capitulating to enemies, essentially, this is what happens. The fact that it's in the Supreme Ayatollah's court right now and he's making a decision on what exactly to do, it shouldn't have gotten that far. If you're in a bar and you see a really big guy with spikes on his knuckles, you're not even going to get to the point of talking smack to him. You are deterred. The globe right now is on the brink because this person in our Oval Office has not made it clear what would happen if things happen to our allies. Or should I say maybe he's made it clear what will happen? I just don't understand how you look at like you, you look at the situation on hand and you go, no, no, no, we got to fucking bomb further, bomb harder. Like, like it, it just feels like ma when you look at mainstream media, right, the liberal outlets are saying like, well, this is an escalation and a retaliation, but like Iran is still the big bad. And then you look at Fox News on the right wing side of media and they're just like, Brandon is weak because he hasn't nuked the Gaza Strip personally and nuked Iran as well. It just goes from like decent, but kind of still bad on shaky ground to, oh my God, how are you saying this? How are these words coming out of your mouth? When in fact, the answer is, the answer is that de-escalatory bombing doesn't work, by the way. Uh, this was demonstrated once again in Yemen. When you operate on the delusion that violence is strength, especially when you consider every non-American subhuman, it's just like, it doesn't make any sense. I think they're just spitting here because they think either that like the American capabilities are impossible to shake and impossible to defend against or, or they just don't give a shit. Like they don't think about what will happen as a consequence of like, if they, if America were to follow the Fox news line and greatly, greatly escalate violence in the region and go in full blown with our current unconditional support to Israel, uh, like level up our, our uh, unconditional support to Israel. I don't think they're thinking about like what that means for the American economy. I don't think they're thinking about like what that means for American safety and security. They're just wildly sitting there uh, calling Biden a pussy. That's it. I don't think that the American government is operating on this level, even though there are definitely People in the branding camp that are operating like this. The please, we have to nuke Iran. Please, just nuke Iran one time. Please, a nuke would be so sick. Like, the dudes that have that attitude definitely do exist in the State Department. I mean, I don't know. Which is nothing. Oil is up so far this year. It's soaring today. Up. Like, they're complaining about oil prices. What do you think a fucking regional conflict will do to oil prices, dumbass? What do you think? about 20 percent that's enriching iran it is giving iran more money to fund terrorism and fund its proxies and if this administration is not doing everything to drive down the price of oil and cut off oil coming out of iran again we're funding as a nation those very terrorism and the death of Americans. Well, yeah, but I mean, Joe Biden has thrown Israel to the wolves over a few votes in Michigan. <laughs> so like, what do you think yeah. we're expecting a little too much? If Biden was more restrained with Israel, Israel would not be in the fucking wolves, quote unquote. I mean, Israel would not be in the, 
in this current predicament because Israel would recognize that they can't get away with like blowing up fucking Iranian embassies, man. From this man. I mean, ask yourself, when you hear Joe Biden speak, does he project strength? Nope. You know, like I've interviewed a lot of generals, uh, intelligence officers, foreign policy experts from my podcast, The Truth with Lisa Booth. And the one takeaway you'll get Ugh. is that a lot of foreign policy comes down to human nature. Right. It's that playground mentality, particularly when you're dealing with the authoritarians and, and terrorists. It's a show of strength. Right. And, and we went from being the big guy on the playground that people were afraid to under Donald Trump to, to getting our lunch money stolen and stuffed into a locker uh, under Joe Biden. And, and so the only way to bring peace and stability to the world again is electing Donald Trump. And we were told XB 9011. Thank you for the 25 community. Give this the guy couldn't be trusted with the nuclear codes. Now he's the only one we can trust, mm -hmm. you know, and, and so that's the the only path forward. I mean, everything that died, that guy did was a show of force, whether it's taking out Qasem Soleimani, sending those 59 Tomahawk missiles to Syria, the mother of all bombs, the list goes on. Uh, so that's the only way to get peace. Yeah, totally. You know, what was really sick. You know, what was really sick that Donald Trump did. Um, throw away the Iran denuclearization agreement and and make it make sure that Iran understands that like there is no denuclearization. We are going to put sanctions and we're going to keep adding sanctions on even if you follow through on the conditions which Iran did continue following through on uh, until they were like, okay, well, I guess we're going back to fucking upping our uh, upping our nuclear capabilities. So if Iran has a nuke now, that is entirely in the hands of Donald Trump. I don't know if they have a nuke or not, but if they do have one, it is definitely Donald Trump's fault. Okay? Just something to consider. So that's a major misstep on that front. Donald Trump's actions with the Abraham Accords was also directly linked to, with, uh, directly linked to the October 7 attacks. Time and time again, especially since Bill Clinton, we have told Israel to do whatever the fuck it wants. We are not going to pull back. We are not going to pull support. How do you think they got to this incredibly arrogant and incredibly violent state? We let them. Okay. We let them. Meanwhile, Germany is out of control. By the way, the Berlin police, ironic. I'm wearing a Pulitzer uh, sweater right now. The Berlin police arrested the spokesperson for Jewish voice for peace in Germany. Udi Raz as horrified onlookers shout never again amid the scenes so reminiscent of Germany's Nazi present, past slash present. Um, also, German police arrested citizens at the Berlin airport as horrified onlookers shout never again amid the scenes so reminiscent of Germany's Nazi present, past slash present. Um, also, German police arrested citizens at the Berlin airport holding signs saying, let Dr. Gassan Abusit Abusitta in. German authorities banned Dr. Gassan Abusitta Remember, he is, he, he is a, uh, a plastic and reconstructive surgeon who was operating inside of Gaza until recently, until he had to evacuate, okay? Germany is fucking out of control. They've lost their goddamn minds, okay? Anyway, let's get back to this Iran-Israel shit. Decent stability back into the world. Yeah, Carly. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is significant for several reasons. One of them is that it's because it's expected to be a direct attack from Iran, not an Iranian proxy. And um, why does that? What does that mean for the United States? Well, there are a lot of American citizens still living in Israel. Uh, so, what happens if American lives are lost in this expected attack? Um, where does that put us in terms of escalation between the United States and Iran? What will that mean? in terms of the future of the war. Uh, so that is different. That could potentially be an escalation huh. in many ways. By the way, this picture, thousand words, dude. Uh, True and on pod posted this, antisemitismus ist verboten, Judenhund. That, like arresting a Jewish guy in Germany for calling out the Palestinian uh, genocide that Israel is doing is fucking insane and the dude has trump hair too it's just like no i know what hund means dude mehmed is jewish yeah this is uh mehmed posting he's a uh, turkish but he's i guess uh allowed i know that what that means incredible stuff coming out of germany right now back-to-back <laughs> -back genocide champions or genocide losers i guess dude looks like john hitler this is like this is so fucking insane to me. Like, I see this and I'm like, what the fuck are you guys doing? Are you not thinking at all about how this looks? They're just like, 
I don't know, man. They're, Germany has been spiritually, the German state has been spiritually not all right, okay? I've been talking about this for a minute now. I know that there are obviously a lot of uh, German leftists in the chat that get, like, kind of mad when I mention this stuff, but, I mean, this is a ridiculous sight, okay? This is a fucking ridiculous sight. Liberals love talking about optics until it's optics about them looking like Hitler. Yeah. As my Holocaust survivor grandfather always said, Germany never stopped being a Nazi state. I mean, yeah. By the way, German media is spinning it, saying police crack down on a gathering of anti-Semitic Israel haters. That's pretty funny because, you know, this photo is pretty crazy. Talking about them sabotaging the electronics of the Palestine Congress and then shutting down the event after a few hours, even though it was supposed to go till Sunday. What is the whole context here? Did he trespass or something? What? No, man. No. No. No. No. The context is that DM25 was live streaming. There was a Palestinian Congress here. Let me finish this and then I'll talk about it. Okay. Ways though, this situation is somewhat more of the same because Iran already funds Hamas and Hezbollah two terror groups that are already uh, fighting in Israel right now. Um, and that is one of the main reasons why stopping the sanctions against Iran and taking the, the foot off the gas of the maximum pressure campaign was such a grave mistake. We have, and remember, it, Hamas has Americans. Yeah. And, so, and Iran knows that, and they've seen our response. That's so a great point. That's a great Biden's point. policy. Money to Iran and refuse to change course even when U.S. troops suffer traumatic brain injuries or are killed mm -hmm. yep. for more than three years. Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe. I love setting my DVR. Okay, um, let's talk about Germany and how Germany as a country is just spiritually not all right. Okay, what do I mean by this? Uh, Yanis Varoufakis and some other uh, some other individuals, okay, basically uh, were holding together a Palestinian Congress. Okay, um, this Congress in Germany in Berlin was supposed to talk about the conditions of Palestinians and how Israel is doing a genocide. Those things are true. Um, just you know, they were supposed to talk about true things. This is a recent article, but I want, like, specifically an article on the Congress if you guys have it, okay? Germany has been definitely cracking down on pro-Palestinian protests, going absolutely crazy mode with it. I've been in a lurk for a few weeks because I am I got to literally and politically deal with this shit, but you're talking about Iran and Germany? Haha, -ha, you might as well have me on as a guest. I'm the German liaison of the Iranian government. Okay, chill. <laughs> Ali Abunima got the right idea about Germany. Germany must be completely demilitarized and banned forever from producing or pro possessing weapons other than lightly armed police forces under international supervision. After Bundeskanzler's support for the Gaza genocide never again has to mean ever again. <laughs> He's right. NATO, the Nazi American terror organization, must be abolished. He's so right, dude. This video sums up the German position pretty well. Meine Frage war, wie sollen die sich aus deutscher Sicht wehren? Du hast gesagt, verhandeln oder kooperieren. Bro, just sent me a fucking full-blown German video, dude. Are you insane? Like, no, no subtitles whatsoever. Just sent me a German fucking talk show. No subs, no nothing. Bro, you think I can fucking translate that? What are you, crazy? Anyway, not only do I speak very little German, but I refuse to learn more German, okay? For two reasons. One... Because I don't need to, because when I go to Berlin or Kreuzberg, everyone is fucking Turkish anyway. So l knowing Turkish is enough. It's literally like being a Spanish-only speaker in, like, certain parts of America. And two, I refuse to speak German out of principle. Just like my father refuses to speak English out of principle, even though he is fluent in German and will speak German, I refuse to speak German out of principle for similar reasons. Okay, I will do the accent, though. So here's what happened. Germany cancels pro-Palestine event, bars entry to Gaza war witness. So first thing that I saw this morning was uh, Abu Sitta, Ghassan Abu Sitta, Palestinian surgeon who was in Gaza until recently. Um, as you guys know, I, I relied on a lot of the 
uh, I relied on a lot of the the uh, the firsthand accounts from him in the early stages of the genocide in Gaza. If you're, that's probably why you remember his name. Uh, uh, he was he's a British Palestinian surgeon uh, who uh, had to evacuate, and he was traveling to Germany. Except the German police had some different opinions on that. They stopped him at the airport earlier today. And it didn't stop there, it seems. Uh, here is what they did. One of the main speakers, Ghassan Abusita, a British Palestinian doctor, had earlier been denied entry into Germany to attend this event, the Palestinian Congress. The German government forcibly has prevented me from entering the country. He was invited to address a conference in Berlin about my work in Gaza hospitals during the present conflict the german government has forcibly prevented me from entering the country silencing a witness the genocide before the icj adds the german complicity in the ongoing massacre the doctor who volunteered in gaza hospitals during the first weeks of the israel uh israel's uh, ethnic cleansing campaign said he arrived at berlin airport on friday morning before being stopped at passport control where he was held for several hours and told he had to return to the uk nine nine they said you will not enter the country Arabic dog, they said. Okay. Airport police said he was refused entry due to the safety of the people at, at the conference in public order, Abu Sitta told the Associated Press. Okay. An event organizer, Nadija Samour, told Turkey state run Anadolu Agency, Anadolu Agence, Masadais, Masadais, Masadais, Masadais. There's absolutely no legal basis for this, no justification at all. Abu Sitta is the dean of the University of Glasgow. I can't imagine that he's a dangerous person or a person who cite, incites violence. Quite the opposite. This is literally a fucking doctor, bro. Okay? Who spent his... Who, who spent the first and perhaps the more violent instances of Israel's ethnic cleansing campaign saving people's lives inside of Gaza. Okay? Abusita added that on X that uh, uh, barring him from the event was sounds like a witness to genocide before the ICJ adds to Germany's complicity in the ongoing massacre. But it didn't stop the German police. Um, the SS, the Gestapo, continued their actions as police in Berlin interrupted and canceled a pro palestinian conference soon after it started, hours after one of the main speakers said authorities held him up at the airport and prevented him from entering Germany. Officers initially halted the Palestine Congress because another speaker was subject to a ban on political activity in Germany. Police wrote on the social media platform X on Friday. They did not give the name of the speaker, but participants in Congress wrote on X that it was Palestinian researcher Salman Abu Sitta. Police later wrote on X that they had banned the remainder of the conference, which was being attended by about 250 people and due to last until Sunday. They said there were risks that the same speaker would be invited to talk again, accusing him of having made anti-Semitic statements in the past. Here's a video from the Berlin police, the Gestapo, canceling the pro-Palestinian Congress. Okay? Berlin police just canceled the entire Palestine Congress. I was the only speaker that successfully finished the speech. Salman Abu Sitta was cut off after one minute. Our live stream ended and the electricity cut off. They broke in. Check your current viewer locations, Twitch panel. A lot of Germans tuning in right now. Yeah. Um, they went in. They broke. Apparently, they broke through the panel and shut off the electricity by force and arrested people that were at the Palestine conference, including, but not limited to, a German Jewish person who is the head of the Jewish Voice for Peace in Germany. Here it is. A video I just received shows Polizei Berlin arresting the spokesperson of Jewish Voice for Peace in Germany, Udi Raz, as horrified onlooker shout never again amid the scenes so reminiscent of Germany's Nazi past, including current Nazi present. <laughs> SS unit arresting Jewish political dissident for protesting against ongoing genocide colorized. That shit's definitely going to, that will probably get me hate speech by, I suspect, the uh, German Twitter. They saw opposition to genocide and their epigenetic memory kicked in and they arrested him reflexively. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, you don't understand. They're doing this because they're doing this because uh, um, they're doing this in a in 
in a in a anti anti semitism way. <laughs> They're gonna ban you from Germany. No schnitzel. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay. Yeah, Nets DG alerts incoming. Holy moly. I guess they are simply just following orders. Here's another uh here's another image from Red. Palestine Congress in Berlin, Germany was shut down and all peace activists were arrested. <laughs> Carried out by the most blonde cop in Germany. Yeah, no, it's like, it is wild that they're not even thinking about, like, the the optics of the situation. Like, it is just like, it is crazy. Like, how do you not see having the blondest cop in tactical gear, like, arresting a, a, a Jewish anti-Zionist protester? Like, how do you not... How do you not see what is going on? And I, no pun intended, not see. How do you not see what's happening here? They found the most Aryan cop to do the business too. Like, it's crazy, dude. It is crazy. I mean, as a German, the angle of the optics, I don't find it all that concerning. The act in and of itself, I find mar more concerning. No, the act in and of itself is, of course, infinitely more concerning. But like, the optics on the optics front, at least you should have a moment of self-reflection. Like perhaps what I'm doing here spells something out to everyone that is not inside of Germany. You know what I mean? Like, like that's a crazy fucking thing to do. Okay. It's a crazy thing to do across the board, but like Germans are so hopped up uh, on their own, like unconditional support to Israel, uh, Israel's genocide that they just don't recognize that the rest of the world looks at that and goes like, excuse me, what, wh what do you mean? You arrested, you had the blondest, you had the blondest cop go in to the Palestine Congress and arrest the Jewish protester. Like you have to have a, a, a moment of, of self-awareness here. Anytime Germans start arresting Jews, you got to give that a double take. Exactly, bro. What the fuck? You have any idea why Germany is anti-Palestine? Hmm. Are you kidding me? I've talked about this extensively. Okay. I've talked about this extensively. Germany loves the current predicament Israel is in. Why? Because one, obviously there is a, there is a level of guilt, a collective guilt for the Holocaust where they're like, Oh, it was a uh, big oopsie. Okay. But beyond that, there's a second thing that is much better for them, which is this way you can turn around and be like, see the arabs are doing the holocaust now obviously politically this works very well for german domestic politics because they are, there is a shit ton of islamophobia in domestic german politics this way you get to tie this back to uh how all all arabs are are uh you know anti-semitic jew haters right so then they can just basically say oh look at us like we're defending the jewish nation state uh, and also on top of that, uh, any moment that you're talking about, like how Arabs are the real anti-Semites now, you're not thinking about the Holocaust. <laughs> Germans act like they understand the evils of the Holocaust more than the left is used. It's so funny. Yes, I've seen that is a take I thought was fake originally. Um, yeah, here, there's four main points that this chatter is very, uh, good at. Okay. The, this chatter uh, is is describing it perfectly. One, collective guilt for the Holocaust. Two, they move the target to someone else. Three, they're very Islamophobic, and the target that they're moving it uh, towards is also it happens to be like a like a, a Islamic target, so that works doubly well. Uh, four, they don't want Juden in Europe, and no one can change my mind for the latter. I do agree with that as well. Also, uh, weapon sales. Uh, Germany is, uh, of course. You know, militarizing at a rapid clip. Here is uh, here uh, is the Polizei breaking into the control room at the Palestine Congress to shut down the electricity and power supply. Our team at the scene reports that the shutting of off of the organizers' live stream, police went from person to person demanding they stop live streaming from their phones, and then they announced that they were shutting down the entire event, which had only been allowed to run for about 20 minutes. It was due to run for three days. Earlier in the day, police demanded that Congress organizers allow all German media into the Congress to safeguard free speech. Uh, 
Bro, I, I'm sorry. I look at this. I'm like, this is Nazi shit. I, I can't. Maybe I apologize for the Germans in the chat. But when I look at this, I'm like, this is some Gestapo shit. Like, this is straight up Gestapo shit. What the fuck? What the fuck? I can't unsee it. I've, I've seen it too many times throughout history. It's like, what the fuck are they doing? Yeah, they were saying in the background that they have a key and they still broke into the server room. Oh, abi kanake denmeye hazırlanan Almanların Türkler için slurü kanake mi? Öyle mi diyorlar? Ne demek? Kanake ne? What is that? Apparently there's a slur that uh, Germans have for Turks. Kanake? What does that mean? Subhuman? Kanake evet. Berlin mayor says we have made it clear that the hatred of Israel has no place in Berlin. Anyone who does not abide by these rules will feel the consequence. Ich danke der Polizei Berlin für das entschlossene Sinne einschreiten bei dieser Hass Veranstaltung. Wir haben klar gemacht, welche Regeln in Berlin gelten. Wir haben klar gemacht, dass Israel Hass in Berlin kein Platz hat. Wer sich nicht daran hält, wird die Konsequenzen spüren. Ha! Such a beautiful, such a beautiful language, uh, German. It's just like. I would like to thank uh, the Berlin police for his decisive intervention at this hate event. At this hate event. We have made it clear which rules apply in Berlin. We have made it clear that hatred of Israel has no place in Berlin. Anyone who does not abide by these rules will feel the consequences. A lot of you in the chat whose parents celebrated the fucking wall coming down may not be feeling like it was a great move. Okay? Holy shit. Is a slur for all non-German. People use it also self-referential like the N-word by some black people. I cannot stress enough how incredibly frustrating it is that the conservatives are currently in power in Berlin, though I doubt it would have made that much of a difference if the usual lefties were in power there, given our government's position. Yeah. The guy whose tweet you read is the acting mayor of Berlin. Kai Wegner. Kanake is a racist lawyer that Germans use against Sudländer, mainly used against Turks and North Africans. Huh. <sighs> Language of the Kanaks. Dude, that's sick. They have like a new slur. New slur unlocked. Berliners get the best kebabs in the world, and what do they give in return? Yeah. W makes a V sound, so it's Vegna, which makes it funnier because crowds lol. Yeah. Anyway, that wasn't on your slur day calendar, bro. We do international slurs around this, around these parts, okay? We're unlocking the new racist tomes to unlock new slurs. So. Did you just admit Berlin kebabs are better than Turkish? Some of the Berlin kebabs have had, I've had before, are, if not as good, sometimes even better than the ones I've, like, Donar in Germany is very good. Very, very good. Like, a shitty version of uh, uh, Donar in Turkey, it's the only place on the planet outside of Turkey where Donar is just as good, in some instances, maybe even better. Yok abi, no, no, no, no, it's good. Mustafa's Gemüse Döner that I had in Berlin was unironically a life-changing experience for me. It actually shocked me how good it was. I've had Döner. I love Döner, okay? I love Döner. I love it. The best Döner in the world is still in Turkey, okay? 100%. I believe that. However, Mustafa is hype only, to be honest. There's better ones. I remember having it. I remember having Mustafa's Gimme Zudanar many, many, many, many years ago. And honestly, it was pretty fucking good. It was like the only place that I've had Donar outside of Turkey where I thought it it matches. No, of, of course Donar is not German. Anyone who says that is fucking delusional. Anyway, it's like tacos. We all know Mexico has that on lock, but LA is second when it comes to tacos and shit. Yeah, I think so too. The word döner is Turkish. How can these Germans think it's from Germany? I mean, what do you think? People are delusional. Anyway, 
What is this? Here's the Berlin mayor whose statement you read with a known anti-Semite. Please check it out. <laughs> yeah, of course. Anyway, Germany defends itself at the International Court of Justice by saying that its foreign policy after the Holocaust is built around defending Israel rather than preventing mass atrocities. That's the wrong... Anyway, Germany defends itself at the International Court of Justice by saying that its foreign policy after the Holocaust is built around defending Israel rather than preventing mass atrocities. That's the wrong lesson to draw. Oh, there's just... I like that they're admitting it. All right, here is... Here is uh, Ghassan Abusita giving an exclusive interview to Middle East Eye after he was barred entry into Germany, which, to be fair, I will say good riddance. I mean, no one should go there. Holy fuck, dude. My name is Dr. Ghassan Abusita. I've just returned from Germany where I had been prevented from entering the country for attending a conference in Germany to give evidence on the war in Gaza and my witness statement uh, as a doctor working in its hospitals. So this morning at 10 o'clock, I landed in Berlin to attend a conference on Palestine where I had been asked, along with many um, others in the UK, in the United States and in Europe, to give my evidence of the 43 days that I had seen in the hospitals in Gaza working in both Shifa and Al-Ahli Hospital. Upon um, arrival, I was stopped at the passport office. I was then escorted down to the basement of the airport where I was questioned for around three and a half hours. Um, at the end of three and a half hours, I was told that I will not be allowed to enter German soil, that I will, and that this ban will last the whole of April. And not just that, that if I were to try to set to link up by Zoom. What allegations? Uh, um, I don't know, I made Or FaceTime up. with the conference, even if I was outside Germany, or I were to send a video of my lecture to the conference in Berlin, then um, that would constitute a breach of German law, and <sighs> that I would endanger myself uh, to having a fine or even up to a year of prison. I then was asked at the end to book a flight back. Someone seems pretty defensive, huh? Okay, you get five minutes off. The other guy got 30 seconds off, but you get five minutes to, off. To uh, the UK. Uh, my passport was taken away from me, and then I only got my passport back as I was uh, boarding the plane. As Germany is defending itself against the... Nicaraguan charges that it is an accomplice uh, to the genocidal war as described by the International Court of Justice. This is exactly what accomplices to a crime do. They bury the evidence and they silence or harass or intimidate uh, the witnesses. And so as members of a gang that has committed a heinous crime, Germany is doing its bit in that crime, which is to ensure that there is complete impunity and so that the genocide can continue uninterrupted. So uh, the Jewish intellectual Hannah Arendt, in the first uh, lecture that she gave in Germany in 19... How is this legal? He's a British citizen? <laughs> Bro, <laughs> what do you mean, dude? It doesn't matter. Like, he, he's brown. He's Palestinian. Okay? He's defending Palestine. There are German Jews that they're arresting. Why wouldn't they fucking arrest? Why would they uh, uh, refuse entry to a, a, a, a British college dean slash surgeon? I don't know why you won't say Germany's doing this because of Islamophobia. That's the main reason. Wait, what? I did say that. No, it's not just Islamophobia. There, is a broad, there are broader societal reasons as to why Germany... It is Islamophobia for sure. It's like the, the, the major reason. It is playing a major role, but it's not just Islamophobia, even though I have mentioned that it is Islamophobia. <clears throat> Thank you for the 10 gifted subs, March 92. 1958, after the Second World War. She said, we humanize what is going on in the world and in ourselves by speaking of it. And in the course of speaking of it, we learn to be human. There is so much peril before us to speak of it in earnest un we to understand the causes and the alternative is to practice our humanity 
And this crackdown on free speech is a dangerous precedent because what is happening in Gaza is a dangerous precedent. We are watching the... You're putting more emphasis on other things? Yes, because I think that uh, weapon sales to Israel and also seemingly ridding them of the collective guilt of the Holocaust by changing the attention over, by shifting the attention over to uh, Arabs and Muslims, which is Islamophobia for sure, is the major reason. The first genocide unfold in the 21st century and for Germany to become implicated as an accomplice in silencing the witnesses of this genocide bode, does not bode well for the rest of the century. <clears throat> there is no... There is no real guilt for the Holocaust as a fucking excuse they use to justify Israel's support. Guilt for the Holocaust would mean supporting Palestine. I mean, NB Ranger Danger, thank you for the five community give the subs. A lot of our Jewish comrades here in Germany have been saying this for a while. Germany doesn't just want to defend Israel, they want to be Israel. Every day we see it more and more clearly. Yes, Yanis Varoufakis was supposed to talk at this event as well. Um, and he didn't get to. Es ist gut, dass die Berliner Polizei ein hartes Durchgreifen beim sogenannten Palästina Kongress in Berlin angekündigt gehabt. Wir behalten die islamistische Sene sehr eng im Visier. It is good that the Berlin Police have announced a tough crackdown on the so-called Palestine Congress in Berlin. We are keeping a very close eye on the Islamist scene, says Nancy Faser. The Islamistische Propaganda und Hass gegen Judinnen. What? Judinnen and Juden. Wer bereit muss wissen. Okay, dude, dude. We have to do it again. We uh, There's a rule. Germans are not allowed to say Jew or Jewish, okay? When you say it, okay? When you say it, it's like, it just triggers something in my brain, okay? I'm not even kidding. You just you should never be allowed to say those words, okay? You just use another language, use English, be like Jewish people, you know what I mean? When they say it, it just seems different, you know what I mean? Phaser is a big fan of surveillance too, shocking, isn't it? Yeah. Judinnen und Juden, wer bereit muss wissen, dass das schnell und konsequent vergolt Befolgt wird. Wir brauchen ein sofortiges, hartes Einschreiten, wenn solche Straftaten begangen werden. So Ministerin Pfizer. Anyone who spreads Islamist propaganda and hatred against Juden must know that this will be prosecuted quickly and consistently. We need immediate tough action when such crimes are committed said the minister, Phaser. The actors in his own interest were hitting it too hard. That's what I mean. That's what I mean, dude. <clears throat> ay, ay, ay, ay. You're yelling German so loud that people in the office probably think I'm a Nazi now. Thanks, bud. This German accent is frightening. Trust me, it's frightening to me too. Okay. Germany getting called out. Namibia rejects Germany's support for the genocidal intent of the racist Israeli state against innocent civilians in Gaza on Namibian soil. Yeah. Oh, Germany committed the first genocide of the 20th century. Yeah. Anyway, I love how your dog doesn't give a fuck about all those screams. Yes, she's very, she's knocked out, very tired. Anyway, but uh, here are his words uh, that he was slated to say at the Palestine Congress, which he was not allowed to. Now let's get back to, yeah, let's get back to the, what happens if Israel goes to war with Iran? My own university has disinvited a Jewish American philosopher, Nancy Frazier, of taking up a professorship because she spoke out against the killings in Gaza. Absolutely shameful. Dude, I think people don't understand. The Western world doesn't give a fuck about Jews, okay? They care about Israel as a strategic entity. Like, that's why the broadest coalition of pro-Israel sentiment comes from the most rabid anti-Semites in this country, okay? Dudes who unironically think Jews have horns and tails and shit. The fucking white evangelicals in these goddamn mega churches in the South. The broadest coalition of pro-Israel sentiment is not amongst the American Jews. It is evangelical Protestant Christians for theological reasons, okay? Those motherfuckers don't like Jewish people. They're like, yeah, 
like the Balfour Declaration, they're like, yeah, let God sort them out over there in the fucking desert. I don't want to be around Jews. They have horns. Send them down to the desert. That's their fucking take. That's it. That is precisely why. Do Israelis know this? And do they care? No, they don't. I don't think they give a shit. I think many people don't know this, okay? There's a multitude of different reasons, okay? Most conservatives don't like Jews. They just hate Muslims more. There's that, okay? Obviously, they hate Muslims more than they hate Jewish people. So there's that. That's a big role as well. Some see it as a bulwark. Like, uh, some see Israel as, like, the, the, the only power to, like, combat the Islamic hordes. Um, and many also have a Armageddon theological justification for Israel's existence. They believe that once the chosen sons and daughters of God occupy Israel permanently, that the Armageddon will happen. The rapture will happen. Jesus Christ will come back. The second coming will happen. And Jesus will fight the devil in Megiddo. It sounds fucking insane, like it's a goddamn anime when I repeat myself, but that is the real reason. And there are tens of millions of these people that genuinely believe this. It sounds so fucking stupid. And you know what happens to the Jews in that process when the rapture happens? They also burn in hell, unless they convert to evangelical Christianity, of course. So it's not like, it's not like these guys are... Uh, you know, fond of Jewish people at all. So let's watch First Thought. What happens if Israel goes to war with Iran? Israel has become the second country in history to use nuclear weapons in war, and the first to do so as an initial preemptive strike. The target? Iran. Most of Tehran, its greater metro area, and even its suburbs have been vaporized or reduced to smoldering rubble. Obviously they're saying this is what would happen if Israel used nukes uh, as they... Millions are dead. Millions more are being exposed to lethal doses of radiation. And still more are suffering life-threatening burns. Israel's only remaining ally, the United States, continues to stand by Israel's preemptive nuclear strike. The U.S. has warned Iran that any retaliation will be met with, in the president's words, overwhelming response. And that the U.S. will, quote, turn the country into glass. We may be looking at nuclear winter as Israel continues to lash out. Okay, obviously this isn't happening right now, at time of recording. But this scenario isn't as far-fetched as you might think. A 2013 study set out to understand the medical consequences of a nuclear exchange between Iran and Israel in the near future with a focus on the distribution of casualties in urban environments. Academics have been taking this scenario seriously for over a decade. Oh shit, new IDF tweet. Approximately 40 launches were identified crossing the Lebanese territory, some of which were intercepted. The IDF Aerial Defense Array successfully intercepted the two Hezbollah explosive UAVs that crossed from Lebanon into Israeli territory earlier this evening. I mean, this is earlier in the day, um, but uh, I don't know if... Uh, I mean, that's from Hezbollah. That's different. It's not direct from Iran. Decade. And as the that's genocide regular. in Gaza continues, it's now abundantly clear that Israel is the nation most likely to initiate a full-scale nuclear or conventional war in the region. Let's explore the consequences <clears throat> of a war between Israel, Iran, and their respective allies. Before we answer that, we'd like to take a quick moment to thank this episode's sponsor, Aura. As you all know, we make political content here and on our other channels. Unfortunately, that means some people don't like us very much. These days, a quick Google search is all it takes to find someone's personal information. Data brokers sell your information to scammers, spammers, and anyone else who may want to target you. Your full name, email, home address, health records, your relatives, it's all readily available for those who want to find it. That's why I've been using Aura to help keep my private details private. Aura shows me which data brokers are selling my information and automatically submits opt-out requests for me. This not only cuts down on the amount of spam I get, but also helps keep all my accounts safe from bad actors. And Aura does so much more. It's a VPN, a password manager, an antivirus. It even offers identity theft insurance and parental controls. And the best part is, it's all in one place and very reasonably priced. So if you're like me and you value your privacy and staying safe online, visit Aura.com slash first thought and get your first two weeks absolutely free. No strings attached. Try it out and I promise you'll appreciate the peace <coughs> of mind. Support the show and protect your valuable data by signing up today at the link below. Ethical reacts, bro. Ethical reacts imply we watch the fucking ads and you don't have to watch the ads at the top of the hour when there are three minute ad breaks that happen at the top of the hour.
Okay. That's right, because at the top of the hour, there was a three-minute ad break uh, right after this ad break. Freaking got him. And if you no longer want to have uh, the moment to self-reflect, to read, to watch ads for three minutes, and you want an uninterrupted broadcast experience, Flock, thank you for the 10 community gifted subs, you can maybe receive an ad, a gifted ad, uh, break Defender, in the form of a subscription from the likes of Flucky and, and many others. Or if you're not lucky enough, you can make your own luck by subscribing for $5 or for free. Here is the three, the three minute ad break now. It's not just act. You said you'd still stream if nukes were flying. Are you still up for that with us? Yes. Yes. I will spend most likely my very last moments, unless my, my internet is shut down by my fucking stupid ass ISP. If nuclear holocaust was happening, I'd probably spend the last moments here doing this. And many of you would be watching. Can we do unban all? Yeah. Academics evaluating the potential consequences of a war between Iran and Israel. The United States Department of Defense conducts virtual and live war games to plan for any number of scenarios. And a war with Iran was simulated in 2002 in an exercise dubbed the Millennium Challenge. The results were interesting to say the least. The Pentagon asked retired Marine Corps General Paul Van Riper to command the Iranian or Red Forces due to his reputation for unorthodox thinking. Faced with the imminent preemptive U.S. attack, Van Riper decided to go on the offensive as soon as U.S. forces, including two aircraft carriers, six amphibious ships, and... That's true. Just ban, maybe just ban Megaphonics during the nuclear holocaust, no more Elon Pose. Megaphonics would spend his last moments on Earth still sending me what Elon Musk had to say about the nuclear holocaust. He'd be like, look at this idiot. He doesn't think it's going to happen. Elon just tweeted that the nuclear holocaust is definitely not happening and it's fake news. Look at this dumbass. We're all about to die. That's literally what he would do. <laughs> Damn, no recent messages. Your YouTube video bot message is showing an error message? Yeah, I don't know why. And their combined escorts bore down on him. Van Riper actually wanted to win the exercise, which is an accurate portrayal of Iranian leaders, and therefore refused to let the American preemptive strike succeed. Van Riper managed to sink the entire fleet, including the Marine landing force. The exercise was effectively over as soon as it began. Following this hum- Wait, why is one of the most popular Twitch streamers a terrorist supporter? Bro, Techno Tapas, you just got banned, and I'm gonna unban you real quick, because I need you to understand something. I have not defended the terrorist state of Israel. I have not defended the terrorist state of the United States of America. Thank you for also saying that I'm one of the most popular Twitch streamers, because that is still true, despite what my haters say. Techno Tapas is the most Israeli username I've ever heard. Yeah, I know, that's pretty funny. But, <clears throat> spiritually. Thank you for letting me have an opinion. Of course, you are, you are welcome to have the wrong opinion. <sighs> Bro, you can't glaze and roast? What do you mean? You defended the right to a fair trial yesterday, you fucking liar. So, I, I hope you get nothing Israeli about it. <laughs> Brother, you don't understand <laughs> why it sounds so Israeli. You don't understand Israeli culture if you think that this is... Techno Tapas is not a very... <laughs> I feel like there's a restaurant in Israel called Techno Tapas already. <laughs> It is pretty funny, though, that, like, thank you for letting me have an opinion. Bro, you did deserve the ban, for the record. I'm just having fun with it. Because that's an insane fucking statement. Once again, like I said, insane statement because I do not defend the terrorist state of Israel, nor do I defend the terrorist state of the United States of America. But yes, that is a worthy ban, usually. The brain rot is real in here, lol. I'm also having fun. Okay. You are radicalized. Hassan, honestly, you're radicalized, but it's fine. If I am radicalized because I believe in healthcare for all Americans, if I believe in free college education for all Americans, if I believe that America should stop killing people relentlessly globally, then yes, I am a radical. If you consider anti-genocide to be a radical statement, then yes, I am a radical person. It is no measure of <laughs> it is no measure of sanity to be well adjusted to an insane society okay to a deeply unhealthy and unwell society anyway we are in the age of radicalism people do it to themselves log in the paris basement yeah the demise of the america kkk on empire is causing a lot of freaks to call off from under the trash they live in huh no i think that person is just like spitballing in the chat because he thinks he can quote unquote trigger me 
humiliating defeat, the U.S. brass instructed Van Riper that he- Bro, this is the most classic Millennium Challenge memes. Like, what do you mean, uh, go back on it? You, I've talked about it a million times over. If you are even remotely interested in, like, America versus Iran, you probably heard this a million times over. Again, yes, Millennium Challenge, they fucking owned, the, the Iranian forces owned the American Navy so hard that they had to literally put fucking the Iranian forces on handicaps and then run it again, run the simulation again. They could not shoot down the aircraft flying cover missions for their ground forces, that their offensive weapons weren't allowed to be hidden, and that they couldn't use chemical warfare yeah, against see. the blue team's paratroopers. Van Riper was so disgusted with how controllers were running the exercise, tying the hands of his red team to ensure blue won, that he sat the rest of it out. With these remarkable handicaps in place, the U.S. succeeded in destroying Iran's military capabilities. The exercise demonstrated that the U.S. was inflexible and wasn't able to think quickly in response to the offensive response to the preemptive attack, and that this would not serve the U.S. well in an actual conflict. This simulation, as well as the resistance strike on Israel on October 7th, shows that no matter how much sophisticated technology your military utilizes, innovative warfare combined with adaptability can be just as lethal. Since even the arrogant U.S. recognizes that Iran is a formidable force, let's examine their military industry from its early days till today as it continues to thrive despite heavy sanctions. Iran's defense apparatus began with the establishment of Iran Electronics Industries, or IEI, in 1973. In the decades since, IEI, focused on developing the country's military capabilities, has created many high-quality, homegrown weapons. Examples include the Akgar 7.62mm Gatling gun, <laughs> capable of firing four to 6,000 rounds per minute, as well as the Arman anti- I love the second thought boys doing, uh, I mean, I love JT doing like OSINT Andy shit, but for Iran. A ...ballistic missile system, which can simultaneously engage six targets from up to 180 kilometers away. There's also the Fatah, a hypersonic ballistic missile with a range of 1,400 kilometers and a top speed of Mach 15, a staggering 5.1 kilometers per second. Since speeds that high are difficult to comprehend, it would be like flying from the Pentagon to the White House in one second, or crossing the Strait of Dover 32 kilometers or 20 miles wide in just six seconds. As if this isn't impressive enough, remember, all of this is being accomplished under a severe sanctions regime. However, these are the accomplishments of just one company. Iran possesses the largest inventory of missiles in West Asia, with a significant number being ballistic missiles specifically. Clearly, this hasn't been accomplished through the efforts of a single company. As a whole, Iran's defense ministry is focused on developing and stockpiling missile systems, naval platforms, assorted weapons, and air defenses while revitalizing its aging air and ground capabilities. It's geared towards supporting Iran's overall military strategy, which is centered around deterrence and retaliatory capabilities, utilizing unconventional warfare operations and a network of militant partners and proxies. But how is it pulling all this off under the suffocating sanctions regime? The answer can be summed up in two words, reverse engineering. Having been forced to transition away from importing weapons and technology, Iran has become arguably the most successful country at reverse engineering and developing its military equipment based on examples of enemy, mostly US, weapons in the field. Additionally, collaboration between Iran and Russia has seen a transfer of Western weapon systems for research and development, enabling Iran to drastically enhance its military capabilities. For example, reports indicate that Iran's successful Sadid 365 anti-tank guided missile was allegedly reverse engineered from American defense systems. The Ra'ad 2 self-propelled howitzer exemplifies Iran's dedication to maintaining legacy weapon systems through the same reverse engineering while combining various bits of foreign hardware. And of course, we can't forget to mention Iranian drones, which have been in the news quite a bit due to their use by Russia in Ukraine and resistance groups in and around Palestine. Iranian drones have earned their place because of their versatility, low price of manufacture, <clears throat> and effectiveness. They can carry out an assortment of missions, including surveillance, reconnaissance, and attacks. This makes them an extremely valuable asset for Iran, since they don't have a traditional air force with fighters and bombers. Additionally, the country has emphasized its goal to improve the accuracy, lethality- It's kind of fucked up. They have no respect for copyright. No respect whatsoever. For copyright you see you see this fucked up they have no respect for copyright no respect whatsoever for copyright you see you see this reality and over the horizon capabilities of its drones but iran hasn't just been building weapons and drones they've also built state-of-the-art bases from which they can conduct their operations 
Recently, Iran unveiled one such structure to the world, the Parchin Underground Facility. Located approximately 20 kilometers southeast of downtown Tehran, the Parchin facility reflects Iran's efforts to significantly enhance its homegrown military capabilities. While the work that goes on in the facility is not publicly available information, we know it's connected to the... Um, yeah, no, it's, it's funny you say Toyota missiles because Marat calls uh, American drones uh, the Bentleys of drones, and he calls the Bayraktar the Toyota. Very reliable and very affordable. Bayraktars are like the Toyotas of uh, UAVs. A larger Parchin military complex. It's believed that the complex includes a large network of tunnels which might allow for additional military modalities not before moved underground, such as supply chains, which are otherwise vulnerable to attacks. We got nukes that could take out all that shit though. Years and years of work down the drain. Hell yeah, brother. That's right. Let's go nuke them. Let's go duke nuke em mode. Fuck it. YOLO. The Parchin military complex is most notable for being the hub of Iran's nuclear science and defense technologies. While Iran does not possess... To be honest, I think they're a paper tiger and it's all just posturing just like Saddam used to in the past. We were pretty panicked at his chemical weapons here and it turned out they literally had nothing. <clears throat> Do you see the fucking Iranian protest Andes who support Israel being mad at Israelis for posting about... Wait, what? I don't even understand that. Um, I... We'll see. As far as the paper tiger thing goes, we'll see. I don't think that they are that much of a paper tiger considering that like That's nuclear. their defense of Hezbollah, like their support for Hezbollah has led to strategic W's for Lebanon in general. You know what I mean? What are you doing, King Haori? I'm going to ask you, there are 22,000 Clear weapons. Government officials in Israel and the United States have repeatedly expressed grave concern about the Iranian nuclear program, despite the latter pulling out of the long-sought Iran nuclear deal signed during the Obama regime. Iranian weapons have been and continue to be used in modern warfare in various conflicts and by various actors. They've obviously been utilized by Iran's own military forces, but more importantly by Iranian-backed groups in conflicts across West Asia most notably by Lebanon's Hezbollah and Yemen's Ansar Allah. However, the scope yeah. of their use in modern warfare... That's why it's important to understand, like, w when we say Paper Tiger, like, even through proxies, even through proxies, uh, Iran has been able to, to definitely uh, launch a decent amount of counters to, uh, to Israeli action in the region. Affair can be seen in Syria, where Iranian drones, missiles, and small arms have been used extensively in the Syrian civil war to support Assad and other pro-government forces. Iran has provided military aid to the Syrian government and deployed its forces, including the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, in the conflict. It can also be seen in Yemen, where they've supplied Ansar Allah with drones and ballistic missiles. These weapons have been used in attacks against Saudi Arabia, and more recently, in attacks on any ship attempting to do business with the Israeli colonial project. In Iraq, militias have been equipped with Iranian air defense systems and small arms, and have used them in the fight against ISIS and in other internal conflicts. And last but not least, in Lebanon, several varieties of rockets with differing ranges and capabilities have been used by Hezbollah against Israel and other regional adversaries. One variant, the Haseb rocket, has a range of 8 to 10 kilometers and an 8 kg high explosive warhead, and is modeled on the Chinese Type 63 multiple rocket launcher. With such a short range, these are best used against ground forces. The Ra'ad or Thunder rockets are wire-guided anti-tank missiles based on the Soviet 9M-14M Malyutka and have a range of 350 kilometers, roughly the distance between Washington DC and New York City. The Fajr or Dawn rockets actually comprise their own family, with the three major types being a long-range missile with a range of 180 kilometers, a 240 millimeter artillery with a range of 43 kilometers, and a 333mm multiple rocket launcher system primarily used to support ground troops, strategic strikes, and for their psychological impact given the volume and intensity of the bombardment they can unleash. Lastly, the Zelzal, or Earthquake, rockets are the longest range of their non-hypersonic missiles, with a range of 200 kilometers, or roughly the distance between LA and San Diego. It comes in two variants, the 2 and 3. The Zelzal 3 is a guided missile and must be launched using a specialized transporter erector, and are used as general artillery shells. The Zelzal II, on the other hand, is an unguided, truck-launched rocket primarily used against armored vehicles, including the Israeli Merkava main battle tank, and buildings occupied by infantry units. 
the rocket delivers a massive 600 kg payload. Iran's arsenal of homegrown weaponry is formidable. With all this firepower, it's not hard to see why the US lost so badly in their simulation. Since any war waged against Israel is also a war against the United States, and since the US is still the sole world superpower, we should unpack what the cost of such a war would be to the US, and by extension, the world. In order to keep this in line with most projections, we're going to assume conventional, not nuclear warfare, as do all of our sources. It goes without saying that any nuclear exchange would cause immeasurable damage and suffering for decades, possibly centuries. So let's start with the raw dollar amount, if only to show how futile it is to even attempt to nail down actual figures. A full-scale US invasion of Iran pee. has been estimated to cost $1.7 trillion, according to a report by the Federation of American Scientists. This includes expenses related to troop deployments, equipment, logistics, and other military expenditures. Note that this is just for the invasion of the country. It says nothing about any long-term presence, which is nearly impossible to quantify given the number of unknowns. Fully estimating the cost of a US war with Iran not only includes the immediate expenses of military operations, but also the long-term costs associated with post-conflict reconstruction in both nations, extreme damage to the US economy, and the untold loss of life. The monetary cost would easily run into the many trillions of dollars, straining the US economy and hyper-focusing US spending on the military even more than it already does, possibly to the point of completely giving up its responsibility to other vital areas, such as healthcare, education, and infrastructure. Unfortunately for the rest of the world, a lasting conflict with Iran would have wide-ranging implications for the global economy. It would lead to broad economic and financial shocks that would significantly worsen with time and evolving conditions. The resulting collapse of Iran's economy would see a reduction of the global GDP of as much as 0.3 percentage points, which doesn't sound like much, but would be a tremendous shock. A prolonged conflict would create unprecedented uncertainty in global financial markets, leading to increased volatility in stock prices, exchange rates, and commodity markets. This uncertainty would shake investor and consumer confidence to the core. This is why I said time and time again, this is why I keep saying time and time again, and I will continue repeating this throughout this weekend most likely, that there is a limit to the chaos uh, uh, from the perspective of capital owners. All the way until the tipping point, all the way until the tipping point, capital owners will make money, okay? But beyond that tipping point lies too much chaos and too much volatility where the systems collapse and no, there is no more money to be made. Affecting global economic growth and leading to a slowdown in business expansion and hiring. The world economy is highly reliant on key trade routes, particularly in the Strait of Hormuz a strategically important passage that connects the Persian Gulf to the Gulf of Oman, through which approximately one-fifth of the world's oil passes. Such disruptions would lead to supply chain failures, ballooning shipping costs, and if that wasn't enough, a US-Iran conflict could trigger an escalation of proxy warfare in countries like Syria and Yemen. It could also lead to the creation of new proxy conflicts, as well as prompt Iranian missile strikes and other attacks on US allies in the region. The economic impact of a conflict with Iran would extend beyond direct financial costs. It would lead to the deaths of an untold number of innocent people, trade agreements would be destroyed, and global geopolitical dynamics would be unrecognizable. If you're a US citizen, you may well ask, <clears throat> what could we get instead of a costly, unnecessary war with Iran? Well, we're glad you asked. According to a study by the Political Economy Research Institute, Medicare for All would cost approximately $37.8 trillion between 2017 and 2026. That would be approximately $3.78 trillion per year. While that is a lot, you could get three invasions of Iran for that, consider this. In 2021, US citizens spent $4.3 trillion, or $12,914 per capita, on healthcare which doesn't cover everyone and severely underinsures most of the rest. In fact, you could add free college, which would only cost a comparatively tiny $680 billion per year, and still spend less money than Americans spent on healthcare in 2021. That is obscene. The bottom line is, the United States has better things to spend its vast, unprecedented wealth on than more wars. If the US were to allow Israel to drag it into a conflict with Iran, it's probably safe to say, without hyperbole, it would be the end of the world as we understand it. Episodes like this one are made possible thanks to our generous patrons on Patreon. Wait, what? Regime 
A government, especially an authoritarian one, America's so authoritarian, they're going to jail us on any day now. I have no power. I am, as it stands, not a threat. October Trump is taking questions and talking about Iran. Happened, and now it's a disaster, and it's only getting worse. So uh, it's, uh, it's very sad. No, I stand with the speaker. We've had a very good relationship. <laughs> While you were in office, you said that you would sign a federal abortion ban and Congress sent it to your desk. Why should Americans trust your word that you would not do it now if you were reelected? Because we don't need it any longer, because we broke Roe v. Wade, and we did something that nobody thought was possible. We gave it back to the states, and the states are working very brilliantly, in some cases conservative, in some cases not conservative, but they're working and it's uh, working the way it's supposed to. Every legal scholar, real legal scholar, wanted to have it go back to the states democrat republican liberal conservative and we're able to this do is that. just you know? this new line is so stupid by the way this new line is so incredibly stupid wait what eduardo authoritarian governments jail average joes okay then america is an authoritarian government dumbass the fuck kind of argument is this they jail average joes on a daily fucking basis what are you talking about that's all we do it's pack watch if you're fucking broke. Born in the wrong neighborhood, going to jail. Not for criticizing the government, though. Okay, first of all, American the American government does fucking lock you in jail in spite of the First Amendment. If you do actually threaten American State Department power, if you threaten America's State Department interests, if you Amer threaten America's uh, uh, power, you will get fucking arrested. Hello, look at Edward Snowden. Why the fuck does he have to live in Russia? Look at Julian Assange. Chelsea Manning, Hazard Abahead, was literally in prison. That's so dumb. <clears throat> America periodically, in times of war, has also jailed many conscientious objectors. You literally have people criticizing Joe for Palestine stuff on Twitter, getting visited by the feds on your sub. Yeah, there's also that, too. There's, like, we haven't gotten to the, you're going to get arrested like, like it's fucking Nazi Germany era yet, but we're coming at it. It is pretty funny that, that you're like, oh, yeah, America's not authoritarian. Because by your metrics, they are. Oh. Anyway, I'm mute my president. No, I'm skipping it. All right, let's talk about Hakim's video on why does Iran hate the USA? Hello. We're back with another why they hate the USA, going through why various countries dislike American foreign policy and government as a direct result of American actions in and around such countries. This hatred very rarely extends to regular American people, who are likewise victims of the same oppressive structures in other ways, despite at times being beneficiaries of the carnage and interventions the US carries out globally. Today's country is Iran. With an ancient cultural heritage going back thousands of years, and boasting the oldest declaration of human rights by Cyrus the Great, this West Asian nation is currently home to approximately 87 million people. For brevity's sake, we'll start with the 20th century, specifically 1921, during which the British supported a coup by Colonel Reza Shah against the last monarch of the Qajar dynasty. It was not a normal coup, however, and while Reza was really in charge from his post as Minister of War, this odd power structure remained in place for only about four years till 1925, when he was crowned monarch. As will become a theme in this video, the motivating factor for this coup was, of course, oil. World War II had dramatically changed Britain's priorities and in the late 1941, they made a deal with USSR to split Iran in two in order to prevent Iranian oil from getting into Nazi hands. Yeah. <laughs> dog, my doctor is also a bread tuber. Hakim, am I cooked? Yeah, bro, you're fucking cooked. If your doctor is also posting fucking YouTube videos, you might be cooked. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest with you. You probably are cooked because you're in Iraq. So that's already a, a, a bad, that's a bad, bad. There's a bad starting point. The Red Army would invade from the north and the British would invade from the south. Following World War II, the USSR, per their agreement with Britain, withdrew from Iran. The British, however, didn't. Bad After securing point. Iranian oil from Britain moving forward, they quote unquote granted Iran independence. It is at this time that the United States, Britain's BFF and daddy, became interested in Iran's internal affairs because of, well, oil. Again, it's a meme for a reason. During the 1949 parliamentary elections, the issue of nationalizing the Anglo Iranian oil company was the number one issue on people's minds. As a result, many politicians in favor of nationalization, a group called the National Front, were elected by the Mejlis, the Iranian parliament. One politician in particular. We use the same word, Mejlis. Killer, Mohammed Mossadegh. Ah! Terrifying. Very scary. You guys, very scary guy, okay? Helped to pass a bill officially nationalizing the AIOC ah! in 1950. No! No! Don't do it! Mossadegh, don't do it to him! Don't you dare nationalize the oil! Oh, I'm so... I, 
as British Petroleum. Am terrified of such a prospect. <clears throat> After all, we've made capital investments in Iran. 51. Negotiations with Britain deteriorated following the passage of this bill, and they pressured the Shah to appoint a series of British-friendly prime ministers, all of whom failed. Iran's exercise of sovereignty over their own resources was unacceptable to the UK, so they had to get involved. Back to the video in just a second, let's hear from Keeps. Male pattern baldness is a genetic <laughs> condition that affects two out of every three guys Sorry. by the time they are 35. Get professional care for hair loss from the comfort of your home, without ever visiting a doctor's office or pharmacy. I am currently a hospital doctor, but a million years ago I worked within family medicine and met the occasional patient hoping to get treatment for their hair loss. That's where services like Keeps come in. Keeps is a convenient hair loss treatment where you can complete an online consultation to get matched with a provider who will tailor a treatment plan, if medically appropriate, to address your hair loss concerns. How exactly? Well, Keeps products are formulated using certain treatments that are FDA approved, have shown clinical results and are in regular clinical use. All treatment plans are personalized to address your unique needs and recommended by a licensed medical professional specially trained in men's hair loss. Treatment is delivered right to your door on your schedule, with a flexibility of 3, 6, and 12 month delivery options. Plus, you can adjust, pause, or cancel your plan at Why any time. Why do I watch the ad? Ethical Whether reacts, baby. Prevent hair loss, stimulate hair growth, or just take better care of the hair I, you have, I never Keeps has keeps. you covered. Most Keeps men know this results within 6 months of starting no treatment. For them. So what are you waiting for? Go down to the description me. and click my link for a special offer. Individual results may vary, of course. With over 5,000 reviews, over 1 million men treated, and a discreet delivery plan, you can start your hair loss treatment today. Go to keeps.com slash Hakeem or the link in the description and get started. Thanks for Keeps for the sponsorship. It allows me to pay my debt fairly, which is very appreciated. All right, back to the video. Mossadegh, after being nominated for the role of Prime Minister, would only follow through if the Mejdis voted to approve the law he would draw up that would actually implement the nationalization they had recently approved and create the National Iranian Oil Company. The Mejdis ah. approved it unanimously, and Mossadegh was now Prime Minister. Ah, terrifying. Listen, guys, you can't have that, okay? You can't, you can't be doing stuff like that. You can't be doing stuff like that, my man. What is this? I mean, <laughs> seems like you guys need some democracy. Seeing that the British were adamant about their imperialist claims to Iran's oil reserves, Mossadegh cut off diplomatic relations with Britain in 1952. This was the final straw. Since the UK no longer had an embassy in Iran, they asked the US to overthrow Mossadegh for them. The US, of course, agreed. Unbeknownst to the UK, however, the US was doing so for its own gain, not altruism towards the UK, unsurprisingly. The US gave this task to the CIA, who assigned agent, I kid you not, Kermit Roosevelt. <laughs> Anyways, this was the grandson of former US President Theodore Roosevelt. Codenamed Ajax, the aim of the operation was to remove Mossadegh and replace him with a Western-friendly successor who will sign away Iranian national resources to the United States. Luckily for the CIA, decades of British colonialism had provided them with several experienced and resourceful Iranian assets, such as sympathetic politicians, military officers, clergymen, newspaper editors, and street gang leaders, in addition to their own Iranian assets. The CIA paid each of these operatives tens of thousands of dollars per month, which would be worth hundreds of thousands per month in today's money. After Roosevelt's first attempt to remove Mossadegh failed, Roosevelt consulted General Norman Schwarzkopf, who advised him to use the CIA to pay protesters to riot and appear to be pro-Mossadegh so as to give pretext for CIA assets in key places in the Iranian military to remove him. This second attempt, which began immediately after the failure, did eventually succeed, but not until a long and bloody struggle outside his home. The Shah was now in total control of the country. The US-backed coup led to a substantial depreciation in the power of the Mejdis, which allowed the Shah a freer hand to rule autocratically. Damn. First order of business was to declare martial law. He then strengthened the feared Savak, the Shah's brutal secret police force, and charged them with suppressing all opposition and dissent within Iran. With Mossadegh gone, an American, British, and European gang of companies, collectively known as the Iranian Oil Participants Limited, descended on Iranian oil, accepting, quote-unquote, accepting, a 50-50% revenue split in the interest of oil barons. In order for the Shah to have some face saved, the agreement nominally recognized the nationalization, but the IOP controlled production levels and pricing, leaving the NIOC to only have control over distribution within Iran. Basically, the Shah gave up the hard-won sovereignty over Iranian oil. Unsurprisingly, this was highly unpopular with the public. In addition to controlling Iran's oil, the US helped prop up the Shah's new government under General Zahadi. I don't get it. They were just uh, delivering democracy to this uh, scary country that democratically decided to nationalize their own <clears throat> natural resources that uh, European colonists were not very fond of. Mm, mm, that's weird. It's, it's called managed democracy. Okay. Yeah, they were just civilizing them. Very scary stuff they were doing over there. That's, you know, hurting Western business interests. Excuse me. That is not allowed. Oh, my God.
by providing $43 million in economic assistance, equivalent to around $500 million today. In 1955, Iran joined the colonial Baghdad Pact, later known as the Central Treaty Organization, following Iraq's withdrawal from the pact in 1958, because we're based. This was a defense treaty including Iraq, Turkey and Pakistan. The United Kingdom and the United States served as observer members, because they're always right next door, I guess. Income inequality grew, discrimination against the religious, the vast majority of the Iranian population by official organs was widespread, and opportunities for rural communities dwindled as a bloated royal family siphoned off wealth for their western patrons and took what was left for themselves. As discontent grew, a certain clergyman named Khomeini was gaining prominence. He had been arrested several times in the 1960s for staunch outspokenness against the government and the Shah. Following his arrest in June of 1963, riots in favor of Khomeini broke out. This riot would lead to Khomeini's exile the following year to Iraq and eventually France. Amid economic turmoil, the Shah continued to make ever more desperate moves. Violent suppression of the ever-growing protests against the Shah and the human rights violations taking place in Savak prisons didn't help. Khomeini was leading a growing opposition movement that was becoming a serious political force throughout the 1970s. Khomeini returned to Iran to a crowd of millions of supporters on February 1st, 1979. While Khomeini was one of the more popular figures during the time of the revolution, another was the communists of the Tibet party, who were united against the Shah. The United States is watching this unfold and is, of course, extremely nervous about the prospect of a socialist Iran, which would then become another ally of the USSR, naturally. Presented with this choice, the United States decided to support the movement led by Khomeini by supplying his group with arms. On February 11th, Khomeini's forces... Guys, certainly, we made one mistake, right? This Shah guy, he's becoming deeply unpopular. But certainly, certainly... Working with Islamist fundamentalists, especially in this region, will never inevitably have dangerous consequences that pertain to, uh, that, that, that actually have a, a, a ba whiplash, a blowback effect on America, right? Like, that's just, no, it seems like it's a good idea. After all, after all, it's just, we'll figure it out had taken control over key points in the capital. <laughs> Students filled with zeal during all of this fervor headed to the United States Embassy in Tehran, which was filled with a few staff members as well as over 50 CIA agents manically shredding all of the detailed documentation about how the US pulled off the coup against Mossadegh in 1953. Unfortunately for those agents... Certainly, certainly. Bro, this is low-key CIA propaganda. Iran owns 50% owns of its oil until the Shah refused to renew the consortium treaty ending in 1979 after this and his rule in OPEC, which was in favor of Middle Eastern oil, also caused the oil crisis. The West wanted the Shah away. The U.S. was afraid that Mossadegh would join the Soviets because of the sanctions that was crippling the country. Wait, what? This is CIA propaganda. What? What are you saying? Is this one of those pro-Shah diaspora motherfuckers? No, he, I don't think so. I, I don't think that's a pro-Shah chatter. The students would make their way into the embassy and hold them hostage until 1981. Called the Iran hostage crisis, it became a pivotal moment in US-Iran relations. During the 444-day crisis, students and various militant groups negotiated with the US, beginning with Jimmy Carter and his administration who flatly refused- It is pretty funny to say that a doctor, an Iraqi doctor, born and raised and still currently and presently in Iraq, is a Western leftist because he's speaking English, I guess. <clears throat> used to give anything in return for the hostages. These were overwhelmingly CIA assets that the US didn't want to acknowledge the existence of, given the work they had been carrying out for decades. In fact, so impotent was Tehran to the CIA that it became the headquarters for all CIA operations in Asia, and it was provided the minting plates for $20 bills. The latter fact is fairly astounding since minting plates are only provided to Federal Reserve branches and only in the US. The reason for the CIA having this ability to mint $20 bills is due to the obscene amount of money they need to carry out operations and bribes before the era of electronic wire transfers. Anyway, upon catching these CIA agents shredding massive amounts of evidence, middle and high school students came together to piece together the ripped up paper like a puzzle. They were successful and now had a treasure trove of documents spelling out in excruciating detail who, when, where, why, and how the 1953 coup was carried out. They immediately made these documents freely available to the world, still the US wouldn't budge. The decade and Jimmy Carter's term would end with a brand new conflict brewing and, of course, the US needed to be involved in it. Immediately following the revolution, the then leader of Iraq, Saddam Hussein, praised Khomeini's revolution seeking good ties with Iran following the overthrow of the Shah. However, Khomeini wasn't fond of Saddam or his government, for discriminatory <laughs> religious reasons, and instead of thanking him, called for a similar revolution in Iraq which would grant control of Iraq over to Iran, a historic tendency of Persian expansionism no matter the ideological justification. <laughs> Iran started border raids into Iraq, which Iraq publicly complained of to the UN with hundreds of incidents to no avail. 
Iran continued, with the organization of clandestine cells in Iran carrying out a campaign of attacks, bombings and raids inside Iraqi territory, with the most famous example being the bomb attack targeting Iraq's Christian Deputy Prime Minister Tariq Aziz in the University of Mustansariya. Iraq responded to these events with a final protest note, warning the Iranians that their military incursions and attacks would be met with retaliatory military action. Following no response, Iraq launched preemptive military action, a warning against supporting an Iranian-style Islamic quote-unquote Islamic revolution in Iraq, and it was clearly planned on being rather limited in scope to all observers. However, the limited military operation turned into a bloody, full-scale, eight-year-long war. That's a story for another day, though. While Khomeini accepted US help to get into power, his preaching turned anti-American pretty quickly, mostly because the vast mass of Iranians were themselves anti-imperialist. During the Reagan regime in the United States, relations between the two countries deteriorated to the point where the US officially sold weapons to Iraq, but unofficially, clandestine efforts to sell missiles to Iran were underway in a controversy known as the Iran-Contra Affair. The US profiteering by selling weapons to both sides of a conflict is a tale as old as time, given its status as a major arms dealer on the world stage. Meanwhile, a democratically elected leftist government took power in Nicaragua. Reagan's government didn't like this, of course, so they arranged CIA assets and US military materiel to arm right-wing death squads, known as the Contras in Nicaragua, while appearing to follow the recently passed law explicitly forbidding the United States, of course, so they arranged CIA assets and US military materiel to arm right-wing death squads, known as the Contras in Nicaragua, while appearing to follow the recently passed law explicitly forbidding the United States from providing arms to said Contras. For those unaware, the Contras were a brutal reactionary, counter-revolutionary movement opposing the democratically elected FSLN, commonly known as the Sandinistas. The gist of the plan was as such. The US would sell Iran missiles and other arms in exchange for the release of hostages, <clears throat> take the money from those sales to fund the Contras in Nicaragua so that the money used in the latter could not be tied to governmental accounting, thereby technically following the aforementioned law. Additionally, the US government collected donations from wealthy Americans and secretly transferred those funds to the Contras. Iran was to receive 100 anti-tank missiles, but in order to mask the fact that they were US supplied, the actual transfer of arms went between Israel and Iran. Reagan would go on to deny any knowledge of these operations after a leaked memo broke the story, causing the well-known scandal. New York City, a plane has crashed right into the world. The United States military has begun strikes against Al-Qaeda terrorist training camps and military installations of the Taliban regime in Afghanistan. Fast forward to the early 2000s, after 9-11, the United States responded by going to war with Afghanistan later in the year. In 2003, the US would illegally and under fabricated pretenses invade and criminally occupy Iraq. During this time, US President George W. Bush was often making unhinged nationalistic speeches, enjoying record high approval rates, and generally beating his chest on the national stage. Just before invading Iraq, he made his famous 2002 State of the Union address, wherein he first referred to Iraq, Iran, and the DPRK huh. as an axis of evil. That, that is one of my favorites. That is one of my, that is one of my favorite moments. Just like the notion that, that both Iraq and Iran and the DPRK played a role in 9-11 somehow. Uh, shouts out to David Frum for that beautiful thing. Okay, Kaya. Kaya, okay. You can get up. Good girl. Good girl. Place. Kaya, place. Saudi Arabia, W of the century. Saudi Arabia, very good spawn point. Very good oil. Uh, oil, great spawn point. Uh, big help. Kaya, place. If it's a bad thing, then why does it have such a cool name? The claim about Iran specifically was that the country aggressively pursues these WMDs and exports terror, while an unelected few repress the Iranian people's hope for freedom, which is an excellent example of every accusation is a confession. But I digress. While the US had sanctioned Iran in 1979 under the pretense that Iran was supporting terrorism, the modern sanctions regime against Iran began in 2006 with UN Security Council Resolution 1737. In 2015, the UN Security Council facilitated an agreement between Iran, China, France, Germany, Russia, the UK and the US. The aim of this agreement, according to US President Obama, was a comprehensive long-term deal with Iran that will prevent it from obtaining a nuclear weapon. The actual agreement was weak but was touted as a major win for the administration. Only three years later, Trump would pull the United States out of the deal. Since 2016, US-Iran relations have backslid dramatically. After Trump pulled the US out of the nuclear deal in 2018, he almost immediately imposed sanctions he claimed were aimed at forcing Iran to dramatically alter its policies in the region, including its support for militant groups across the Middle East and its development of ballistic missiles. Not a flaccid effort at regime change. In 2019, the US said it would sanction anyone that buys Iranian oil in an effort to further kneecap their economy. 
Not yet content with making the lives of Iranians absolutely miserable, the US attempted to force other nations to comply with armed sanctions in 2020. However, these sanctions were new and many countries had to explain in no uncertain terms that the US doesn't have the legal authority to force them to abide by this particular set of sanctions. The new sanctions were against 27 individuals and entities, including officials at the Iranian Ministry of Defense, nuclear scientists, the Atomic Energy Organization of Iran, and anyone found trading in conventional weapons with Iran. Later in 2020, one more round of sanctions was leveled at Iran, this time at the financial sector targeting 18 Iranian banks in an effort to further shut down Iran out of the global banking system. The sanctions regime against Iran is unconscionable and amounts to collective punishment of the Iranian people, despite the claim from the US to the contrary, and unfortunately there is no end of them in sight. Interesting that another country in the region, actually responsible for terror, has no such sanctions or limitations placed onto it, at least not yet. Since the outbreak of the war in Ukraine, more and more Iranian developed and manufactured Shahid drones are being used by Russia to carry out strikes. Of course, US media hypes up the use of these drones despite them being far from the decisive or even major factor in Russian operations. The connections to the US here are actually really funny. Some Iranian drones appear to. As an Iranian, I deeply respect Trump for putting an end to Qasem Soleimani. Hey, I'm from Iran. What did I miss? Logging in from fucking Langley, Virginia. As an Iranian, I deeply respect Trump for putting an end to Qasem Soleimani. Please, sir, my people yearn for freedom. Can you please glass Tehran? We need it. The Iranian mind can only be, the Iranian resistance can only be squashed through force. Contain parts from more than a dozen US companies, which is damning evidence that the aforementioned sanctions regime isn't stronger than the capitalist desire for profits. The US as always plans to do their best to harm the people of Iran, as they do with any nation that doesn't follow US foreign policy desires and doesn't agree to have American companies endlessly exploit their natural resources. <clears throat> I'm too lazy to formulate this next part into a more coherent thing, so here's basically just a slideshow of all the times basically mainstream American media called for attacking, nuking, or bombing, or basically militarily destroying Iran. Enjoy. <laughs> I see nothing wrong with this, is what this chatter is going to say eventually. You obviously haven't been around a lot of Persian Americans if you think that that's not a common view. I have, and I know, and I think it's a laughable take. I mean, it's abhorrent. It's repugnant, okay? I know. If anything, this just reinforces- Motherfucker said you obviously haven't been around a lot of Persian Americans. Bro, you know I live in Los Angeles, right? Did you not know that? Where do you think the Persian Americans are? Most Iranians are against our regime, so why do you think my take is incorrect? <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Brother, <clears throat> the fact that your current regime exists is literally directly a result of American involvement. Why the fuck do you think that I'm going to sit here and act like um, further American involvement, especially military involvement, especially violent actions taken against the Iranian state is not going to, one, harden the fucking current regime as it historically always has, and two, mm, kill a shit ton of people in Iran. Your take might be genuine, it's just still stupid. Stop speaking for Persian Americans chatter, shut the fuck up, America and Israel needs to stop meddling in Iran and other countries around the world. Wait, no, that chatter is not wrong, a lot of Persian Americans do have that take. Many of them openly ride the Shah and believe that one day, like, the Iranian monarchy will be restored. So they're not wrong. They're very reactionary. The attitude that this time American interference will actually make things better is laughable. It's ahistorical, uh, and also the exact opposite thing will happen. Forces another quote from the great Helmsman. U.S. imperialism is the most ferocious enemy of the people of the entire world. The core of that enemy... Unless America puts Patrick Bet David in charge of Iran, in which case I am offering full, unconditional support to the American State Department. If they put Patrick Bet David in charge of Iran, okay, and make him basically the make him basically the Shah, like restore the Iranian monarchy as Patrick Bet David being the Shah. Yeah, however, is I would vote illegally for Patrick Bet David, even though you know. Capitalism. You don't need to like Iran to realize that they should not be sanctioned or attacked by imperialists day in and day out. A great book recommendation for further reading is All the Shah's Men by Stephen Kinzer. That's all for this time. If you enjoy what I do, then please consider supporting me on Patreon. It really does help. I'd like to thank my patrons, so thank you to Nitro Dubs, Kenny, Thomas Roberts, Nicholas, 
Dude, imagine Iranian economy under a strong, strong business leader like Patrick Bet David. Literally, they would be so fucking value tamed. Iranians would be value tamed. Americans would be value tamed. It would be so sick. I'm just saying, this is a win win for everybody. It's a win win for democracy. It's a win win for Iran. God, it would be so sick. He fucking he puts his face on all the currency. Oh my god. That's like immediately, immediately. He Patrick Bed David puts his face on all of the Iranian currency. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, everyone wants it because he's so goddamn handsome. He would stop all. Yeah, Iranians would be happy because he would stop all the people from turning gay, right? So there's that. The People's Republic of Bed David. He would. He would just be like. He he would just have someone who has been caught doing homosexual activities. He'd be like, "Why are you gay?" And then boom, the guy is no longer gay. He's like, I, I would like to have sex with women, please. He would make 7-Eleven hot dogs free in Iran. God, he's so sick. I love, I love Patrick Bet Davis so much. He is the goat, dude. Hold on. I'm ordering my, my cuzzo. Oh, fuck. I'm trying to order my cuzzo some food. The B in Patrick Bobo John Davis. I'm trying to get him lobster rolls before he leaves the country. Osit Defender. Two U.S. officials have told CNN that forces across the Middle East, including U.S. Navy ships in the eastern Mediterranean and northern Red Sea, will attempt to intercept any weapon that is launched against Israel if it's feasible to do so. What if it's not feasible to do so? What then? What do they do then? Would you ever go on P PBD show? Yes, I would. All right, let's get back to it. Inside Han Yunus, Gaza sift through what's left of their lives. Israelis might be focused on a possible retaliatory attack by Iran, but in Han Yunus, southern Gaza... Palestinians are sifting through what's left of their lives. Israeli soldiers pulled out from here, leaving behind a rubble-strewn wasteland. Local journalists in Gaza filmed with Ahmed Kanan and his family for us. A municipal worker, there's nothing left of his home. More than half of all buildings in Khan Yunus have been destroyed or damaged by the Israeli assault, according to experts using satellite imagery. Under increasing international pressure over the dire humanitarian situation in Gaza, with famine imminent, Israel says it's opened a new corridor for aid trucks into the north, where levels of starvation are highest. But aid agencies and the UN say Israel is still not allowing enough supplies in. There's some um, pretty clear bullet hits here and another one here along the window. Underlining the dangers, this was a UNICEF convoy struck by gunfire when trying to reach the north. They were forced. Yeah, remember they're uh, they're letting uh, they're letting humanitarian aid in, or at least they claim that they're letting humanitarian aid in. Turns out. They're letting him in, but still shooting at it from time to time. You know what I mean? Also, uh, famine is no longer imminent. It is official that famine is now active. Huh? Hey, well, uh, Forced to abandon their mission. Oh, uh, why are they wearing vests, blue vests, and, and blue helmets? Seems like a target to me. You know? They didn't want to be shot at. Why did they wear military-looking gear? Before the war, we had 500 trucks a day, and... That needs to be met, and then it must be exceeded because the needs have obviously surpassed that uh, exponentially with the war and with the destruction of everything that people rely on from their homes and their belongings to markets that provide food and services that provide health care. The violence isn't just contained to Gaza. In the occupied West Bank, tensions are flaring. Israeli settlers rampage through a Palestinian village, killing at least one person after an Israeli teenager went missing nearby. And you can find a dubbed version of Sekunda's report at channel4.com forward slash news.
Republican House Speaker Mike Johnson is facing the biggest challenge to his leadership since he took the job. So the question is, what's he doing? Iranian people are not happy about foreign interference, and it's not that it's not going to make things better. The fact that an RGC top leader murderer got torn into pieces was very satisfying to Iranian people. Sorry for the spam. Wait, what? Dude, I can't begin to explain how silly this approach is. And I'm saying this from personal experience. Not every person that is saying things like this are uh, all Persian living in LA or whatever, but this kind of foreign interference is exactly how uh, the Ayatollah came into power to begin with, okay? And my personal experience in the matter comes from Turkey. U.S. involvement or any kind of coup that can be linked back to the United States, okay? Any kind of any kind of Western interference in the affairs of a country causes the majority to harden their uh, to to harden their support. It also gives legal coverage. Not that the uh, not that the Ayatollah needs it, but it also gives legal coverage in countries that are are already uh, a couple steps away from full tilt authoritarianism the opportunity to declare martial law and the opportunity to harden their stances, okay? Western interference isn't always bad, though. Where has West, when has Western interference been good? Western interference is good when you're interfering in the affairs of other Western nations in the direction of, like, ending the Nazi scourge. I think that's what you mean, right? Sometimes it helps avoid the top of the hour ad break. Oh my god, no it doesn't. No it doesn't. No it does not. It doesn't interfere in the top of the hour ad break at all. The only thing that interferes in the top of the hour ad break is a $5 a month subscription or a free one in the form of a Twitch Prime subscription. And you can only get that by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account where you get one free Prime subscription a month. He got me. He stunned me. He fucked me up. It's true. I hate it. I got cumstered. I got dumpstered. I'm getting owned. Legit2, thank you for the five gifted subs, allowing five people to no longer. That's the, that's the only kind of Western interference. Owen Gila with a 10. Legit with a 10. La La La Keisha with a five. That is the Western interference that will stop you from seeing the ads at the top of the hour. Western interference in the form of gifted subs. So I guess that chatter wasn't technically wrong. Here's the three-minute ad break now. All right, we're moving. We are moving on to American domestic politics. Today, well, he's heading to Mar-a-Lago to meet with former President Donald Trump. Chief election and campaign correspondent Robert Costa joins us now from Washington. Bob, good morning to you. What's the, the significance boots. of this Thank meeting the between Speaker Johnson and Donald Trump? Good morning. The significance first is that Speaker Mike Johnson is appearing alongside former President Donald Trump at Mar-a-Lago to talk about election integrity issues, but he's appearing alongside Trump who continues to falsely claim the 2020 election was stolen. And this comes at a precarious moment for Speaker Johnson. He's facing a lot of criticism from conservatives in the House, and he hopes to solidify his standing with them, his allies tell me, by being there with Trump at Trump's home. Uh, Bob, on Monday, the first criminal trial of a former president begins with Donald Trump here in New York. What will you be watching for as that plays out? It's going to be mostly about jury selection next week as this criminal trial begins in New York. It's also a revival the of a boots. cast of characters we haven't heard With from another 10. in a long time. You'll be hearing more about Michael Cohen, the longtime fixer for former President Trump. And this is about the hush money payments Cohen made to Stormy Daniels, the adult film star, back in 2016. This is going to be about whether Trump violated election law, whether he committed <laughs> a felony. And Trump's going to be forced to sit in court since it's a criminal trial, that will complicate his campaign schedule. Sure will. Robert Costa for us. Bob, thank you very much. Fight over FISA and what it means for our national security. Moments ago, the House voting... Oh, thank God, dude. Thank God. Thank God we're reauthorizing FISA because our nation has never been more secure. The boobs! Thank you for another 10. Carnage Jack with another 10. What is happening right now? to reauthorize that key and controversial surveillance law in the fight against terrorism. Some lawmakers had been hesitant to renew the... What is FISA? FISA is the course that allow um, authorization for, uh, for uh, authorization for surveillance on um, 
American citizens. Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, commonly known as FISA, as former President Donald Trump told them to kill it. FISA allows the government to gather information on foreign nationals who it believes could be compromising American security and be able to do it without a warrant. The holdup is that, and sometimes it collects data on Americans who interact with persons of interest. Joining me now, contributing political correspondent Rachel Bade, also justice reporter Alex Mallon, and national gamer, security the defense gifted. analyst Mick Mulroy. All right, Rachel, let's start with you. 19 Republicans voted to block FISA <laughs> earlier this week. What changed today? Yeah, Kira, there was definitely a cleanup effort behind the scenes, people trying to get to Donald Trump uh, privately to explain to him that, look, his objections to this law weren't exactly valid, that he was sort of conflating two different things. Uh, there was also an, an attempt to win him over by shortening the length that this law will be extended. Currently, before it was amended, uh, would have uh, been extended for five years. They shortened that to two in this House version, and that is what just passed right now. Uh, basically, Trump allies are going to be able to say, look, we're extending it for a little bit. If Donald Trump wins the White House uh, this fall, he's going to have a chance to change the law how he wants to. And that's how they got people on board, Kira. So, Alex, the FBI director says that the terror threat against the U.S. is surging because of the Israel-Hamas war. He was on the Hill yesterday urging lawmakers to renew the act. So what does the DOJ say uh, about FISA and, and how crucial it is to our national security? Yeah, that's right, Kira. We haven't gotten a reaction in from them yet about this vote and the appearance that they are going to reauthorize this FISA program. But we heard from FBI Director Ray on the Hill yesterday just expressing how crucial this is, not to things just like cyber, uh, combating cyber activity by foreign nationals, um, things like uh, intel or other investigations, but specifically he singled out what we saw happen in Russia with that attack by ISIS-K operatives at that opera house. He says that something like that, targeting the U.S., something like a concert venue here, that is what raises the FBI's alarm. If this crucial tool uh, for now... Guys, it's really important for fucking security, man. What if ISIS does it again? It's like, bro, why would... <laughs> why would ISIS target their own... Uh, their, why, would ty why would ISIS target its own territory? You know what I mean? national security were to go away, it would prevent FBI analysts from being able to spot active plots such as that. So, Mick, as we know, former President Trump uh, was wanting FISA to get killed here mm. uh, and claims that FISA was used to spy on his campaign. Was any truth ever found within that? Akira, this particular section is about a warrantless search on a foreign national outside of the United States. So it, I don't know what he's talking about specifically, uh, but this is not something that would uh, have. Famously, mass surveillance has really curbed back uh, the on the amount of mass shootings that we've had in this country. Um, mass shooting numbers by year. Let's see. Mass shootings in the United States from 1982 to 2023. Hmm. It's really interesting because, like, the mass surveillance started around here, and it only seems to have increased. So what's that about? That don't make no sense. It's right here, the designation. <clears throat> I mean, these are uh, a mass shooting since 2013. It, the source defines a mass shooting in any single area in a public space. Uh, in a public place with three or more fatalities in line with the definition of the FBI. Before 2013, it was any single attack in a public place with four or more fatalities. I don't know why it says 12 here, though. I'm pretty sure it's a lot higher than that. I don't know why what this 12 means on here. Um, no, the criteria is correct. The numbers are not correct. I don't know why it says, like, oh, God. I don't know if it's, like, on on average, like, monthly or something. Or per day, <laughs> not per day, on on average, like monthly or something, or per day, <laughs> not per day. It could be per day. I don't know. The definition for mass shooting doesn't make sense to me because it includes stuff like gang shootouts and maybe one maniac having a beef with three others and going at them. Wait, what? Why not? That still absolutely should... No, that's still a mass shooting. The fuck do you mean? That definitely still counts. Bro really said mass shootings only matter if it's like, well, a mass shooting is about fear because you had no choice in it. No, no, those are still mass shootings. You want to know why those are still mass shootings? Because it is still directly, it's directly related to 
the the readily available purchase of guns. The fuck? No choice in it. So like people that get killed, people that get killed and, and shot and killed if they're in like the south side of Chicago had a choice in it. Yeah, I don't know what how many mass shootings has there been in twenty twenty three? Six hundred and yeah, here, this is um this is better. From the gun violence archive. I think the gun violence archive goes back uh to uh, before twenty thirteen as well. That's a right wing talking point. I've heard that shit before when I used to be conservative. He's like, man, I don't really like the mass casualty statistic that you're using if the casualties are, you know, um, not random white people. Look like, look like more of a country is close of U.S. More mass shootings increase. Wait, what? Gun Violence Archive is uh, from 2014 onward. What are the boots I'm wearing in my IG story? Uh, the boots I'm wearing in my IG story are the Rig Owens Doc Martin collab. Anyway, very strange stuff. Very strange that, I mean, even here, like, mass surveillance is not, has not stopped it. 3K boots? No, they're not. Wait, what? Why did you say 3K boots? No, they're Doc Martens, Chatter. They're like $300, actually. He meant 30K. Yeah. Still way too expensive. I mean, they definitely are. Rick Owens boots are uh, very expensive. The Doc Martens collab is not. And they're very cozy. They're very comfy. I like them. Also... Doc Martens cost money. Pay attention to the space for more info. Yeah. Uh, for the record, I stand by uh, my Doc Martens purchases. They have withstood the test of time. They look drippy as fuck. And I beat the shit out of my old Doc Martens. And they're still perfectly fine. So they're great. They last forever. It's good quality. It's expensive for sure. But you could beat their asses and they'll be fine. For a very long time. Anyway. And they make you look it's taller for... I love Influencer Hassan. I'm not influencing you to buy them. I don't give a shit. Don't buy them. Hassan needs these boots. No, I don't. These are, I'm not going to lie, a bit ugly. Sorry, the fit you posted today was heinously bad. Bro, the fit I posted today is the fit I'm wearing. It's a very normal fit. What the fuck do you guys want from me? You want me to be fucking opium? Like, what, what are you talking about? Why is this fit bad? It's just a very normal fit. How is this a bad fit? Just wearing a fucking regular ass shirt. Ugly as shit. Lamau, what are those? I think they're dope. Joggers are cringe. These aren't joggers. Wait, no, actually, what's the... Yeah, this is like the most NPC essential clothing that you could wear. I just don't understand. What the heck is opium? Vamp life. Joggers are cringe, but I'm not wearing joggers. All right. Put a battle tab. over abortion rights. Vice President Kamala Harris is heading to Arizona after court decisions sent shockwaves through the country upholding an 1864 law banning abortions with almost no exceptions. Our chief White House correspondent, Mary Bruce, had that story for us this morning. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, Michael. Well, the Biden campaign this morning is trying to seize the political momentum here as we see outrage and turmoil over Arizona's near total abortion ban. And now the White House today is dispatching their chief messenger on this issue, Vice President Harris. This morning, President Biden's re-election campaign leaning into the political fight over abortion after Arizona upheld a 160-year-old law banning abortion in all cases except to protect the life of the mother, the Biden campaign relying on a simple message, arguing this is all Donald Trump's fault. Democrats already putting up these billboards saying abortion is banned in Arizona thanks to Donald Trump. He won't stop until it's banned nationwide. It does not have to be this way. Let's go, Kamala, my queen. Get after it, girl. Get after it, baby girl. Get in there. Hammer that shit in. I mean, they're right. They're right to do this, and they should continue doing it. During a visit to the critical battleground state today, the vice president will flatly say that Trump is to blame, calling him the architect of this health care crisis for bragging about appointing the justices who overturned Roe v. Wade. Harris saying a second Trump term would mean more bans, more suffering, less freedom. With the vast majority of Americans saying abortion should be legal in all or most cases, the Biden campaign is hoping the issue will drive voters to the polls in November. But in the meantime, women and health care providers across Arizona are left scrambling. Are we talking about asking doctors to send women out to the parking lot and, and wait until they're almost dead before the doctor can provide um, care? 
That is insane. That is the very definition of insanity. Our Rachel Scott speaking to Arizona's Democratic Attorney General, who urged the state's legislature to swiftly repeal the Civil War era law, but Republicans blocked the effort. Her message now? I would urge Arizonans who are pregnant to make a plan. And I can't believe I'm having to say that, but it's time to make a plan for 60 days from now. If something goes wrong, if you need an abortion, if you want an abortion, start thinking about California and Nevada and New Mexico or Colorado. Now, ultimately, voters could decide this issue in November when Arizona and as many as 13 other states could have abortion measures. On can't believe BTTV. I can't believe BTTV aborted aborto. On the ballot. In fact, just this morning, ABC confirming that organizers in Colorado now say they have enough signatures to put the measure on the ballot there. In the meantime, this ban in Arizona is set to take effect in the coming weeks unless Republicans there change course and agree to report. Aborto had a good run, dude. It was great. Baseball. All right, ladies and gentlemen, time to talk about Doyers. Nizzle! Baseball superstar Shohei Otani's longtime interpreter and friend plans to turn himself in today to face criminal charges that now include bank fraud. Federal prosecutors allege that Ipe Mizuhara stole from Otani to pay huge gambling debts, and the L.A. Dodger knew nothing at all about it. As Adam Yamaguchi reports, the numbers are staggering. Mr. Mizuhara stole over $16 million from Mr. Otani's account in order to pay for these illegal sports bets. Prosecutors say Ipe Mizuhara was bleeding cash, placing approximately 19,000 bets with an alleged illegal bookmaking operation from December 2021 through January of this year, and losing more than $40 million in the process. At the same time he started placing the bets with bookmakers, Mr. Mizuhara began using Mr. Otani's account to make payments. Prosecutors claim the interpreter helped Otani create a bank account to house his MLB salary after he came to the U.S. in 2018, then repeatedly accessed it online. Hmm. Falsely identified himself as Otani over the phone several times to authorize wire transfers and told Otani's agent and financial advisors the ball player did not want anyone else to monitor the account. He's IRS special agent thinking. in charge Tyler Hatcher oh, told us Otani is a victim. Finances. What sort of... It's actually sad if he didn't know he literally had it in his contract. They couldn't fire him because they were besties. Still suspicious. Hmm. Hmm. This guy was really good. Hmm. Just saying. Window did Otani have into his own finances? I don't know the answer to, the, to that question, but the investigation and the complaint shows that Mr. Muzahara exploited his relationship as his trusted friend and translator. Otani signed a 10-year, $700 million contract with the Los Angeles Dodgers in December, and Muzahara was along for the ride until the team fired him last month over the theft allegations. Uh, I'm very saddened and shocked that someone who I'm trusted has done this. Through another translator, Otani said he wasn't aware Mizuhara had been siphoning money from his account. And according to the federal affidavit, amid swirling news reports about the gambling... The German police just violently crashed a Palestine protest in Berlin where international politicians like Richard Boy Barrett and Yanis Varoufakis were supposed to speak next to Jewish and Palestinian activists. Academics and doctors have witnessed the genocide. Do you think you could please look into it at some point and cover it or give it a shout out? We need international support and coverage because the repression is crazy dystopian. Well, you're late. Mobile chatter. Not only did I tweet about it, but I also covered it extensively for like an hour, an entire hour. So you are late. Also, the new translator kind of looks too American to me. Like this guy, this guy looks like he would be a side character in Yakuza. Look at that haircut. Very sick. The plot line is also basically a Yakuza plot line. Also very sick. New guy seems like, I don't know, he's got like American vibes to him. Okay? I like this guy. They should bring this guy back. Scandal. Mizuhara messaged the bookie. Technically, I did steal from him. It's all over for me. For huh. CBS Mornings, Adam Yamaguchi, Los Angeles. Well, we reached out to a representative from Mizuhara that had no comment. This Yo, some of us jump in midstream and don't know what you covered. Yeah, I very kindly and gently told the chatter. It's not like I yelled at them. Bro, at this point, chatters will sometimes literally be like, <laughs> at least chatters will sometimes literally be like, you address the chatters' concerns by kindly telling them that I had uh, it covered the story already. Well, that's really fucked up, actually. How dare you do that? You should just recover the story. I've murdered that chatter.
this has got to be a betrayal he never saw coming because he trusted him. His English wasn't that great. Right. Mm -hmm. You rely on somebody who you think is a friend, and they do that yeah. to you. New to this country. Heartbreaking. Yeah. That's right. Be, lesson. Care be careful who you let in your life. Now to the porch pirate crackdown in Florida. Governor Ron DeSantis signed a deal to make the Sunshine State the latest to raise penalties for stealing. Florida porch pirate crackdown. I Florida governor signs new laws to combat porch piracy. They're fucking putting Mark Rober in charge, I heard. Stealing packages from outside homes as well as for retail theft. Melissa Adon is in Miami with more. Good morning, Melissa. A good morning, Michael. So the state of Florida is actually going to make it a felony if you steal $40 or more worth of property. The police chief here in Coral Gables tells me he welcomes this news as he sees hundreds of these cases here in his city, and he hopes that these stiffer criminal charges make a difference. This morning, they are the brazen thieves striking in broad daylight and in the night. This porch pirate in Sacramento, disguised as a <laughs> trash bag, captured stealing a package. Some homeowners. Dude, I'm not going to lie. You got to let that guy have it. Okay. It don't matter what it is. You got to let that guy have it. Also, another Yakuza character, by the way, uh, its weaknesses are fire based attacks for the record. Just, just letting you know, they do have a really fucking OP move where they just like scrounge for a gun and can find a gun in their trash bag and shoot you. Some homeowners, like this one, have had enough using a decoy package to catch this alleged thief. Yo, yo, yo, yo. In Florida, the governor cracking down. A new law going into effect this October. If you steal property worth more than $40, it will be considered a felony. Someone's going to have hell to pay for stealing it. The law replacing an already existing one, this time lowering the stolen property value from $100 to $40. It also includes stricter penalties for retail theft. Everything in our store is a, is a candy store for a criminal. Things they can grab, they can sell fast and, and, and take from us. In Coral Gables, the police chief welcoming okay. the law, sharing these videos of thieves in action. We're able to make stronger cases against these repeat offenders and also kind of giving other diversionary um, sentences from people who are facing felonies. It's a growing trend across the country, with at least nine other states making porch pirating a felony. And that's not all. According to the National Retail Federation, organized retail crime cost consumers $112 billion in 2022. The state topping the list, California, a proposed bill there calling for repeat shoplifters to serve jail time after a third conviction. Meantime, last month in New York, the governor there announced a $45 million plan to fight back against organized retail. I don't know if they don't recognize that, like, you have to solve this problem at the root cause. Obviously, that's too hard because then you would have to have, like, anti-poverty measures that aren't draconian. Like, you have to, instead of criminalizing poverty, you're supposed to fix it. Like, they just keep upping the ante. For some weird fucking reason. And they're like, yeah, surely the next step is going to be, you know, if we kill them, if we make it legal to kill them, hunt them down and kill them, this will put an end to the thefts. And it's just like, all right, well, good luck, I guess. It's just not going to happen. Increasing incarceration is always the right answer. It's worked so many times. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to mention this. The Post contacted 25A groups, UN agencies, and donor countries to ask about aid delivery to Gaza and found that Israeli authorities have denied or restricted access to items ranging from life-saving medical supplies to toys to chocolate croissants. I think it's unprecedented. Shina Lowe, a spokesmo spokeswoman for the Norwegian Refugee Council in the Palestinian Territory, said of the Israeli restrictions, it's just nothing that aid agencies have ever had to deal with. So that's a fun fact as well. Um, here, we'll do this John Oliver thing before we move away from it. I'm not doing this Elon Musk story, and I'm not going to do the... And then we'll do Conan O'Brien. Are you going to get Rose and Camellia collection for Switch next week? It's a way forward game where you slap people and you use Joy-Cons to do the slaps. I thought of you right away because of your video on Will Smith. Sorry if that's weird. Here's a trailer. I probably won't. Mods, tell them Iran is readying 100 plus cruise missiles that just got reported. What is this? Say. So what would you do? Some TikToker in Toronto made a video and was like, we found the perfect house. One problem, the poor is... And Crips live across Would the street. Would you buy the house? Probably depends on what exactly is across the street, right? Matt and I absolutely fell in love with the house that you're seeing right now. 
it's move and ready. It doesn't need any work, but it still has some old historic charm and character to it. Beautiful kitchen, nice high ceilings. It just feels very open and inviting. It has this cute little back patio as well. And because it's under budget, we would not have to have a basement tenant, which means we could enjoy the finished basement. But something has always got to give is what we are learning in this process. And this house is right across the street from a housing complex that is for housing insecure people who are going through transitional phases, which I'd like to clarify is a very, very good thing that the city offers this. That is not the problem. Uh -huh. I feel like a privileged piece of shit for saying this, but I just uh -huh. don't want to live next to that. You just don't know who is living there. And if this would create any issues for your safety or sense of well-being or for your property. I don't want to make generalizations. That is not the point of this video. I just but you unfortunately did. do think this is a deal breaker for us. But I am curious what other people think. Bro, when people said the Crips, I thought the chatter was like, I thought it was a joke. Like, or, or I thought that, that she was like, oh, yeah, I don't want to live across the housing complex where Crips are because we're bloods. You know what I mean? We're fucking bicking back, being bull up in this bitch. I can't be having no cribs in my neighborhood. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Think and what they would do in this situation. The next house. Wait, that's the house that like what? What's the problem? Like what they would do in this situation. That's crazy, dude. Come on, man. You can't look at that chick and tell me she ain't flying the red flag out of the back pocket. Yeah. California joke, doubt most outside of our paradise will understand it. Our paradise. The next house we looked at, we were calling the Black House because the family who lived here clearly had an affinity. Oh my God. I thought she was about to be like, we're calling it the Black House because the family, the family that was previously living here was black. That's why we're calling it the, the Black House. No, this got to be big. Towards black, which who doesn't, but there was a lot of black. Another beautiful space, move and ready. They put in some renovations. I liked the kitchen. I liked how open the downstairs felt. When you come upstairs, you walk into the goth baby's nursery. Again, some strange choices with the black. It makes the room feel a little bit small, but if you painted it white, it would definitely open up the space and be a great den or office. I really liked the bathrooms. There's a lot of natural light. The upstairs was a little bit squishy, but I'm finding that's just kind of how Toronto houses are. This was a little over our budget and the basement while well finished is not set up for a unit right now. So I just don't think it would be. Oh, they're also, they're also capital maxing. Like they want to, they want to bring in a tenant. Like they want to rent it out. Worth the time. To so that the fucking basement tenant can pay their mortgage. They renovate and put one in, but this will definitely make a wonderful home for a single family. This round of house tours showed us that maybe we don't want to take on a mass. Let's the first say. one. So what would you do? Would you buy the house? Probably depends on what exactly is across the street, right? Matt and I absolutely fell in love with the We're house that you're seeing right now. It's move and ready. It doesn't need any work, but it still has some old historic charm and character to it. Beautiful kitchen, nice high ceilings. It just feels very open and inviting. It has this cute little back patio as well. And because it's under budget, we would not have to have a basement tenant, which means we could enjoy the finished basement. But something has always got to give is what we are learning in this process. And this house is right across the street from a housing complex that is for housing insecure people who are going through transitional. Phase. I love the liberal language of being like, you're still saying housing insecure people while you're simultaneously like, I don't want to live with these poor scum, the scum of the earth within my like eyesight. You know what I mean? I do not want them to defile my eyesight with their poverty struck way of existence. This is one of those things where it's like, you should have just kept that in. You know what I mean? Even if you feel that way, you shouldn't, you shouldn't feel confident enough to be able to say these things. You know what I mean? So fucking Canadian. She's next going to do land acknowledgement. She shows the basement to a renter that makes poverty wages. Phases which I'd like to clarify is a very, very good thing that the city offers this. That is not the problem. And I yeah, she's like, I like it. It's just not like it enough. When the house across the street looks good, but it's free housing. So your racism activates and you start generalizing about their whole life. Yeah. These people are overreacting. My childhood home was right across the street from a registered sex offender. Did my parents know about this before they bought the house? Yep. Did they care? Nope. They had me knowing I was going to grow up across the street from a registered sex offender and I turned out great. I wouldn't say you turned out great, man. 
<laughs> but hey, man, the deal probably was great. <laughs> the deal, listen, sometimes you got to do that. All right. That's crazy. <laughs> My man's a fucking Hasanabi chatter, multiple month subscriber, and he's over here in the Twitch chat being like, I turned out fine. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Sometimes you got to roll the dice. <laughs> uh. That's crazy that this person just like <laughs> straight up cast aside a, a house like this. Anyway. Why are you hurting what little self-esteem we have left? I'm just fucking kidding, dude. Jesus Christ, everybody, calm down. <laughs> Were you afraid when you went to college? You went to a state college, meaning anyone inside the state could go, including gang members. Yeah, it was terrifying. Listen, when you feel bad, remember that there are literally like 35-year-old juicers out there, okay? And then you no longer have to feel bad. Speaking of which... um. Speaking of juicers, I saw this video and I was going to watch it yesterday. How the fuck do things like this get 27k likes? I will never understand. Uh, 10k is not the end of the world. Yo, XQC, I don't know if the Adderall is affecting your brain right now. Dog, you're looking at active chatters. Do you actually expect my entire stream to be chatting? Every single one of them? When has that ever happened? When has that... I put this shit together for a child. Chat, who is he talking to? Chat, who is he talking to? Chat, who? Bro's a 35-year-old man beefing with a child by by showing his very expensive watch. What? Yeah, there's 35-year-olds out there. Jinxie started losing mind after he talks about his current view bot drama. What the fuck is all this? Chat. He was old enough to buy cigarettes when this man was born. That's a Richard Millet boy. He won. First of all, you know what I think about... Uh, Richard Milley, whatever the fuck the those uh big face, silly ass, ugly ass, Lego Toy Story ass looking watches are. They're just they are simply expensive because they're expensive. That's it. Those those watches are so lame. Get a fucking Rolex or something if you actually are a legitimate watch guy. I hate those watches so much. I've talked about them extensively. To be fair, they literally accused him of viewbotting when really Kickstreamers viewbot. Like, they're saying Jinxie viewbots when Neon just is there with 100k views. Like, who the fuck is watching Neon? Yeah, why are they saying... Oh, critical support. Critical support to Jinxie. I don't even think XQC shit on Jinxie, though. I thought XQC was defending Jinxie. Jinxie. Jinxie. XQC was defending him. This is out of context. Yeah, apparently XQC wasn't saying Jinxie viewbots, but his editor posted a clip that Jinxie saw that made him seem like he did. Yeah, XQC's editor is uh, his own worst nightmare, honestly. Like, way worse than Austinox. I know everybody fucking thinks that, like, Austinox is bad. Austinox is bad to me, okay? What is this? You own me. You own me, daddy. You literally have my house on your wrist. XQC, I'm sorry. You own me. Fuck it. If you want to say I'm viewbotting, you can say whatever you want. You own me. Not right on these titties. You literally just put my house on your wrist. You own me, daddy. I apologize. Try explaining this screenshot to a small Victorian child? No. Anyway. Um, no, Stable Ronaldo was accusing Neon, not Jinxie. XQ jumped in and didn't understand the situation per usual and did accuse him. People saying he did in his coke. It's cool to watch shit like this happen for the sidelines when, like, drama is occurring. How does a 20-year-old have the body of a 12-year-old? I don't know. I just... How does chat... How does this chat is so... How is this... Blah! How does this chat is so well informed of this drama? You broke my brain, bro. You literally broke me. You wrote that so poorly that it broke my fucking brain. I swear to God. Carefully get dragged in. My position on this is that it is lame to flex how much money you make in general. It's just lame to flex how much money you make in general. Most people fucking hate that sort of thing. And that's a good thing that people hate that sort of thing. I'm happy about it. Even when it's fucking accidentally, uh, when the crosshairs... 
uh, are turned on me when people go like, Hassan, you fucking bought an expensive car. It's like, oh, you fucking bought a house. Fuck you. I don't give a shit. It's good that people are mad about that. It's good that people are mad at rich people in general. Okay? It's just so fucking lame. You do that. You only do that when you got nothing else going on. I know that, like, she's doing it as a bit of a meme, I think. I hope. But overall, it's just fucking so whack. It is such a whack-ass thing to do. Keep it up, rich people. You know? I will not, but as a rich person... As a person of means, as a POM, P-O-M. X used to agree with that take. Now it's his only response to criticism is the flex. Yeah, it's just like, it's just it's so fucking insecure. I don't know. It's just so goddamn insecure to do. <sighs> Carefully, the temporary embarrassed millionaires about the clip doesn't get mad. I just, I don't know. Why must you have a position on shit like this, bro? What do you mean? My position is, is such a normal and obvious position to have. I think it's cringe as fuck. I stand by that. Um... But I guess it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. Because it does develop a shit ton of resentment. Chari uh, Odomnizo. It does develop a shit ton more resentment of people. Um, people get mad and develop resentment against those who are wealthy. Hopefully they can translate to some more productive things. Says the guy in the 5000 suit to the guy in the $10,000 suit. You could have a million dollar fucking suit. As long as you're not fucking flexing your shit. Okay, my point is that... It's not about what you're wearing. It's about how you fucking wear it. <laughs> Million dollar suit. Hold on. Uh, hangi, hangi airline, Nezo? Oh, yok lan. Niye yok? We don't recognize that name, diyor. Why am I going to Bak ya, Uber. Yo, yo, bulurum, bulurum şimdi. Problem yok. En kötü ihtimal adamlara söylersin. Enternasyonel diye. Like, I, I, don't, I wear expensive shit as well. It's not a secret. I just think it's like a little different. When you're flexing it, Job in his expensive suit. Worst suits. thing that happens, I can spill spill some on my three thousand dollar suit. Come on! Oh, hey. yeah, yeah, the guy in the, the four thousand dollar suit is holding the elevator, but the guy doesn't make that in three months. Come on! Oh, why don't I just take a whiz through this five thousand dollar suit? Come on! You need a hand with that? No, well, I want to spill booze all over my thing sixty three hundred dollar suit. Come on! Okay, okay, okay, okay. So should should should should should Anyway, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. It's not what you wear, it's how you wear it. Yeah. Also, like I said, those watches are ugly as hell. I'm sure there's like uh plenty of watches in that fucking in my opinion, I'm sure there are plenty of watches in that same price point that are actually cool. It's just that Richard Milley is awful. I think it's like Gosh, it's nouveau riche. Yeah. Yuck. Yuck. I'm not even saying that like it's just across the board. I'm not a watch guy, but everybody has something they spend a lot of fucking money on, like stupidly, outside of their means, outside of their uh financial reach. I hate that watch. Okay. Yeah. Patek Philippe, Audemar, a fucking Rolex. I don't know. You only buy a RM to flex. It's not a gentleman's watch for losers. Yes. All right. Executions. Last week tonight with John Oliver. What? And they're a superlative watch. Much better than a Rolex. Not all of them look like shit. Executions has terrible taste. No, I've never seen a fucking uh, Richard, Richard Mille watch that actually looks good. They all look the same. They all look like fucking Lego ass watches, bro. What is this 07 Miskiff clip? Is this what the siblings do? Oh, totally. Yeah. Gilio. Hey, Valla. <laughs> so dumb. Chuck, Chuck, hey, Valla. Anyone who wears like that is advertising they care about money more than uh, Will did this too. This was bad. RM is about endurance, not looks. <laughs> Bro, come on. Uh, all right, we got Conan O'Brien. Uh, we got Wisdom K. We got executions. We'll catch up. What happened? <laughs> What's wrong They're with also you very people? rare. You don't know what real danger looks like anymore. <laughs> Hey, what's going on, everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans, and you're watching Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. And today we close out season 23 with Conan O'Brien. He's an Emmy award-winning talk show host who had a nearly three-decade-long run on Late Night. You can keep up with him these days on Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend wherever you get your podcasts, and he also has a brand new travel show. Have you ever heard of the Ricky Ray Rector? Killed a cop and then shot himself in the head in a suicide attempt. The surgery saved his life, but effectively lobotomized him. He spent 45 minutes helping them find a vein and reportedly was saving his last meal's dessert for later. Sorry for the essay. That's not an essay. Very commonplace situation for many 
of those who are on death row. Most of the time, they are literally intellectually and mentally disabled, like to a degree where they absolutely have no fucking idea what they're doing. It's so goddamn frequent that there are literal moves. There are literal political organizations like the one in the Florida that I, I remember uh, working with that try to stop the execution of uh, mentally disabled black people specifically because it's like a very commonplace thing. Is that commonplace? America loves killing disabled black people, like loves it. Show visiting Conan fans all over the world. It's called Conan O'Brien Must Go and it's set to release on Max April 18th. Conan O'Brien, welcome to the show. Sean, thanks for having me, I appreciate it. I ask in good faith, how are you around hot sauce before we get started? I grew up in an Irish house uh, and an Irish Catholic home in Boston. I, uh -huh. I never saw a spice till <laughs> I was about 52 years old. So I'm um, terrible with hot food. I, I grew up on tasteless food. So this is a whole new experience for me. This is gonna be great. If you don't mind, Sean, I'd like to get a quick uh, baseline read. Mm -hmm. uh, I brought my personal physician, Dr. Oh. Arroyo. This is Dr. Arroyo. Hi, how are you? Amazing, yeah. hi, nice so, to meet you. Gonna, you don't have to talk to him, just to me. Um, just get a baseline temperature. What are we looking at? Nice right, 7.8. Nice 7.8, I run a little cool. Yeah, yeah. Be fine. Um, Also, been my doctor for about 25 years. Yeah, yeah. Where did you go to medical school? Uh, in 1998. Where? Where? Oh, um, out of state. You should go. Okay. I apologize. Dr. Arroyo, he's not the best, but he's very affordable. Okay, all right. Get nothing here. <laughs> nothing. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> is this what you got? I guess this is where you start, right? I don't oh, fear God. your wings, man. <laughs> Bring what you got, words, okay? Bro. So the travelogue is taking up- Can I keep up... these? Go ahead, go ahead. A little That's meat a good lap. spot for him, yeah. No. So the travelogue has taken on so many different forms from mm -hmm. the anthropological approach of someone like Anthony Bourdain to the thrill-seeking perspective of a personality like Bear Grylls. Yes. How would you define comedy's role in the genre? Like, is it a hack being funny and connecting with new people and cultures? I love travel. And my mission is that you learn nothing about the country. My job is that you know less about the country after I'm done than when I started. So that's why I love this new show is Max just let us go for it. And uh, we visited a bunch of countries and uh, you're dumber. You're dumber after you see the show, but we had a lot of fun. I Was like there anything that. intentional about releasing the show? I kind of like that. There's so many fucking shows that literally teach you everything about the country. Time for a show that does the opposite. I'm into it. On your birthday? Or is that just a charming coincidence? Thank you for doing your research. Um, it was a total coincidence. On your birthday? Or is that just a charming coincidence? Thank you for doing your research. Um, it was a total coincidence. HBO Max called us. Is it HBO Max or just Max? I think it's just straight Max. I can't get used to it. <laughs> That's not a better name. <laughs> anyway, uh, Max said, um, Max, that really rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? <laughs> it is kind of personal because it's just like someone's name. You know yeah, what I mean? exactly. Like uh, Max, that. this said, hey, you're, you're going to drop. I think that's what the kids say. <laughs> Uh, on April 18th, and I said, hey, that's my birthday, and they went, huh. So I don't think it was anything <laughs> intentional. It just happened to be my birthday. Well, happy birthday to you, Cody. Thank you so much, and thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Are you ready to move on here to sauce number two on that note? Yeah, please, because that first one, I got nothing. What's I this? What that. kind of sauce is this? So this one is called Smoky J here. Smoky J. Smoky J. Anything I need to know about this sauce before I bite in? I think the less you know, the better. Okay. Okay, Smoky J. I like this so far. I am unfazed. Do you mind if I? Yeah, no, go ahead. It's your jacket, have a bunch of... your wings. Thank you. Take ownership from that Thank side you. of the table. Go ahead. How often do you show up on location somewhere, right? You get to a destination and your first and immediate thought is, how the hell am I going to make this funny? Often. That's 70%. 70% of the time. And what I call it, I talk to my head writer, Mike Sweeney, and I say, you've brought me to a comedy vacuum. There's nothing here. You, s There's nothing. Once we were doing a shoot in Finland, and I was in the Arctic Circle, and I was standing on a tundra, and in the distance, about 400 yards away, were some reindeer, and my producers just said, and go. And I'm looking around, and I'm like, what, what am I supposed to do, improv with a sheet of ice? <laughs> but in those situations, sometimes when you think it's gonna go very badly, it goes well. Sometimes you think, oh my God, I have it made. This is a perfect remote, and you can't get anything. So it's always, going to a Vegas craps table. You never know. Hmm. Again, it's called Hot Ones. 
<laughs> what the fuck's going on? This is nothing. I'll remember. You these, got nothing. I'll remember these words. Conan. <laughs> Conan's gonna get you. This isn't even. I've yet to have any spice at all. And you know what? I've got a little eye watering. I think you're gonna I think teach that's me. You're meeting your idol. I think <laughs> that's what's happening. I, I get that from just about everyone in your demographic. Right. Conan, oh, their eyes got up. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, go ahead. Thank there you. you go. You got three in there. Yeah. So on a late night show, mm -hmm. when you see the host toss a commercial, right? Yep. And then yep. they lean in and they talk to the guest with the mics cut. Yeah. Is that usually like a real chat? And if so, what are some of the go-to It depends on the host. In the old days, back in the days when I was doing it and there was just a couple of us, uh, oftentimes there wasn't much chat, really not much at all. You know, if you were talking to a letterman, he wouldn't say too much. The other guy, you know, I don't know where he was, but... I always tried to make something happen. I tried to keep the rhythm going. And sometimes if I couldn't get them interested, I'd try and say something provocative. Like, I bet you live four more years tops. And <laughs> you could see them get a little rattled and the band would be playing. But I just wanted to <laughs> keep them alert. But I remember I said that to B. Arthur. Was he talking about Jay Leno when he said the other guy? <clears throat> that's so funny. Um, why is Chad glazing up this guy? He's just a comedian is a question that someone asked. Conan O'Brien is a legend. Probably, in my opinion, probably the best late night, consistently the late, the best late night host, and OG Simpson's writer. He's great. He's very funny. I've always, I've always been a fan. He's still like a, a big union supporter. Jimmy Kimmel is actually funny though. Eh, I wouldn't put Jimmy Kimmel in the same category as Conan O'Brien. I said OG original gangster Simpson's writer, not OJ Simpson. Uh, brilliant. Even though he is technically the classic Harvard Crimson fucking, uh, or sorry, not Crimson, uh, Harvard National Lampoon guy. I still like him a lot. For those of you who don't know, the National Lampoon is a Harvard comedy uh, newspaper. It's like a, basically a club. If you want to work at SNL or any of these like old school comedy institutions, you have to go to Harvard and you have to join the Lampoon straight up. And I was right. B. Arthur? Yeah. You said that's a B. Arthur. Yeah, I said four years tops. <laughs> and it was uh, three years, 11 months. The sands of time. Yeah. Well, I'll say this. I know you, uh, this is important for me to say. I've watched your show. You are a very good interviewer. Thank you. And um, so without this, I mean, this is fun. I like this. <laughs> and I get why you guys do it. And it's really fun and it's compelling. But uh, you are a very serious interviewer. You take it seriously and you ask really good questions. So oh, thank you. I, I'm very impressed with your dedication to it. Damn. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, well, you'll cut that out. Sure. <laughs> that won't make it in. No laughs there. <laughs> what is this called? This is uh, Los Calientes. Very okay. nice. Los Calientes. Okay, mm -hmm. very nice. Dr. Royal. Yes, sir. Let's get a baseline pulse here. Yeah. It's getting starting to race a oh, little sure, bit. Oh, sure, sure. You're, you're just that typical? You're just choking. So sorry. I'm no, sorry. no, you just feel for the pulse. All right. Yeah. Just, you've been with me for a long time, but... Yeah, it's there. Okay. He's very good. I very can tell. Very inexpensive. I can tell. Yeah. He has an uh, <laughs> office in the desert. <laughs> what do you think is the most annoying trait or thing a guest can do when appearing on a talk show? Oh, my God. The worst thing a guest can do is tell the audience it's not going well. Mm. I've seen it happen many times. It's an amateur move. Uh, because the host can do a lot to let people think it's going great, even if it's not. Th there are many things the host... Are we talking about Israel today? No. Um, I refuse to cover it. I've decided uh, there's no longer any need to cover Israel. The host can do. The host can be enjoying. Yeah. The host... I'll, I'll, I'll bite. What's Israel? What is that? No jokes. I'm trying to learn. What's, what's that about? What is that? Be honest. The host can act a little bit. The host can do things... Audiences want to see a good show. They want to see a good interview. And uh, I was always amazed when someone would come out and they'd be doing okay. And they'd make a couple of jokes and it's fine. And then they would just go and they would look right out to camera and they would say, this just isn't going very well, is it? And you could feel, I would look out at the audience, maybe 200 people sitting there and I'd see 200 souls leave 200 bodies <laughs> and float up through the ceiling. Because they were, they, they were just told they were not getting a good show. Right. No, that's not show business. Show business is you're getting the greatest show in the world. I don't think there's a wing here that I can't eat like it's ice cream. I, I seriously, I don't think there's a wing on this table that I cannot devour like it's cool whipped cream. 
<laughs> on an August afternoon, okay? You're like a Ric Flair cutting a promo right now. Exactly. Right? That's the energy that I'm putting up on. Yeah, you're really Rick challenging Flair. the wings over Dr. Royal, please, could you step in? My pocket's getting full. Oh, yeah, of course. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a most harrowing encounter with wildlife that you can recall from all the times that you had animal experts on the show? Yes. It happened during the uh, Turner phase of, uh, of my career. We uh, had someone who brought a lot of animals on, and one of them was a water buffalo. Massive beast. And I'm standing next to it, and I said, well, I don't even know what we do with it. And someone, a producer, just said, well, just hop up on it. I mean, rehearsal mode. So you just do what you're told. And as I'm getting up on it, Andy said, don't get on that. But of course, I never listened to Andy. You gotta commit to the bit. So I get up on the water buffalo, and as my ass hits the water buffalo, beast this size, it freaks, it tosses me up into the air. We had it on camera. I go up, and I come down on my hip, on a cement floor, and as you know, in a studio, cement, it's poured concrete so the cameras can roll. So I bounce off my hip. It really fucking hurt. Water Buffalo makes this bellowing sound, charges, everyone runs away, all the cameramen run away, takes out a camera. Camera people are scrambling and slips and falls, then gets up and looks at me. I am lying on the floor, I jump and I run in the other direction and leap over the talk show couch. I had a hematoma on my hip that was so big I couldn't get my jeans on or off. So they like had to cut me out of my jeans. It was this giant. And I just kept thinking, why? It's because you do a show every day. You get into the let's go, let's go. Um, let's get this thing going. And I'm there and I'm just thinking about the next thing. And a voice just said, hop on. And I did. False sense of security. Uh, just the rhythm idiot, of the show. Absolute idiocy. But um, I lived to tell the tale. And uh, the water buffalo and I made amends. We're good now. Mmm. Mmm. Great. Fantastic. I, need it. I love it. I yeah. love it. Clip Kona Saga Mount. <clears throat> Last night, we had an animal expert on called David Mizajewski. He's been here. <laughs> the water buffalo is fine if you're worried about the water buffalo. <laughs> We calculated I was about five feet in the air, yeah. and I landed on this very hard cement floor on my hip, okay? Now, it really hurt. It really <laughs> effing hurt. But I did get something out of it, the greatest bruise of my life. I went home, and I was about to get in the shower, and my two kids came in, six and eight, and they saw the bruise, and they high-fived me. They were like, that is awesome. Yeah, yeah. And my wife was like, that's amazing. She said, that is hot. <laughs> we got it off. Uh, <laughs> come to work today, and I showed that uh, bruise to some people, and they're like, everyone came to me, and like, we gotta see this thing. Some, Lines. Some people, you showed it to everybody. I, I showed it. I showed it to you, and what did you think of it? Uh, it it's pretty amazing. Yeah. It's a beautiful shade of aubergine. Yeah. It's an amazing bruise. I've never been prouder of anything than I am. Drop trow and show him right now. I had to scroll to see if it was like TOS, chat. Come on. Do you ever like see a bruise and then it like hurts you a little bit inside internally? Like that's how it feels like while well, looking at this. That's a sign you're an empath? What? Okay, dude. Now I have one question. Were you gasping at the bruise or the actual color of my skin? <laughs> I think half the people here were like, look how white his leg really is. Off topic, will you be gaming today? Love the Walking Dead playthrough. You fucking know it, baby. You crazy? Of course I'm going to be gaming today. No, no, I'll see what the problem is. I know, you might be running out of pockets. <laughs> no, Thankfully, no, you it. do have a lot of them. That's yeah, okay. We got pockets. <laughs> do you take any kind of perverse pride in the sheer number of hours of television that you've created? I was never that excited about... Are you going to play season two or season three? No, season one, episode four. Why, where are you well, getting yeah. this information from? I, it, to me, it's whether it's good or not. Or, you know, and, and... If you had to pick between Bill or Conan being on the broadcast, which redheaded boy are you picking? Dude, what old Billy bitch tits? That's not even a question. Bill Burr is my, probably my number one guest, like dream guest. That's not even a question, dude. I love Conan, but Bill Burr over Conan as far as like a guest goes. Oh, Chad, I was asking if I want to play season three or, uh, or two or three after finishing season one. Wait, why would I jump to season three? I will be playing season two. So to me, it was much more stay focused on let's really try and <clears throat> keep trying to make something that's really memorable and we'll stick around and, and then get back to it.
And what I'm interested in is how it looks in the rear view for you. Like, does it all fit neatly into distinct eras or is it all kind of a blur? I would say there are eras. There's the early era in 93 to 95 where I'm uh, in living in sheer terror all the time because I'm waiting for a phone call any second that I've been canceled. So that is a real era. That whole run, Rockefeller Center, feels like an era. All the craziness I went through in whatever, 2010 is a distinct chapter. Turner is a distinct chapter. Um, getting to do the podcast, which I love. Sitting down and getting to talk to somebody for an hour is such a joy after almost three decades of, that was great, thanks a lot. Okay, we're gonna take a little break. We'll be right back. You know, that, uh, that I loved it, but I love this a lot. Different kind of muscle. It's different now, and I love trying this. And then with this new Max show coming out April 18th, um, I just like that we're really getting the resources to do one of these the way I always wanted to do it. He's so fucking ginger, dude. It's like freakish. It is crazy how ginger he is. So, uh, yeah, I would say they, they look. He, his, his level of ginger is like when his eyebrows and his eyelashes are ginger. Like very distinct, separate times. Oh, my hands are all, hold on a sec. Dr. Arroyo, <laughs> come this please. Multifaceted doctor. Thank you, doctor. Whoa. <laughs> What's gonna happen? <laughs> What's wrong with Wait, what? He's got his genetic ancestry tested and he's 100% Irish, no joke. There are signs of inbreeding. Oh my God. Really? I, he said, you're 100%. And I said, well, I didn't know what to make of this. I said, what, is it, what does it mean? He said, what Guy does it mean? Place. He said, it means you're inbred. Hey, please. And he said it. <laughs> Come on. He said it just like that. He said it like that. Good you're girl. inbred. And I was like, what? I said, that's, I mean, first of all, that's very rude. But then all this stuff started to make sense to me. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Suddenly, everything came together. Well, can I ask, can it, if you don't mind me asking, in, in your generation, do, is, is your wife Irish? Did you marry? Well, here's I like showing, I like showing these uh, bits of Conan while we're listening to him because I feel like you get to see how naturally charismatic and, and funny he is. Like, he's just great. Like, off the cuff. Like he's a he's a very funny dude. This is what gets Great crazy, performer. okay? Because I, uh, you know, I looked into it and I found out that the reason why I'm 100 percent Irish is that my people. We came to Boston around the time of the Civil War. We just all moved into a very small area, corner of Worcester, Massachusetts, and we just don't woo Worcester. No one woos Worcester. <laughs> <laughs> it's unwooable. Anyway, they moved into a small corner of Worcester, Massachusetts. All lived in one house and married each other for 180 years. That's what they did. Huh. Makes sense. Wor Worcester also the hardest, the weirdest way to spell a word. <clears throat> you should react to some of his Conan abroad sometimes. Sure. I adore nothing more than when you say em empathetically positive stuff with the most deadpan flat tone. I know you are genuinely excited and positive. It's just so silly the juxtaposition. Wait, really? Do I do that? I have no, I am not aware of it. That's weird. I'm a weird guy. Is that a clam chatter? Sure, that's a clam chatter. That wasn't even a top of the hour ad break debate, so that was a clam chatter. <clears throat> Not gonna lie, I thought you were high all the time until you said you don't smoke. Wait, what the fuck? People thought I was high all the time? Dude, it's so weird when you find out how you're perceived. Like, way weirder than the top of the hour ad break coming in right now at the top of the hour. I had no idea. Yeah, I've never had a sober stream, brother. You give off major stoner vibes? Wait, really? You're a creep, you're a weirdo, empath and obby. Yeah, what the hell am I doing here? I don't belong here. Guys, stop saying no, he doesn't want the fuck ban. You guys are not old enough to know that he's doing he's doing uh radiohead. Not also emphatic, not empathetic, means excitable or high energy. You come off as a stoner until you pop off on a dumbass shatter. Wait, that's so weird, man. What the fuck? I, am I Am I actually chill? I thought I was like always yelling. What is it? Anyway, I must be high thinking that uh, I ran the top of the hour ad break, but I don't. I think it comes off as if you're tired or jaded. Sometimes I am tired and jaded. What the fuck? <clears throat> Not a stoner vibe, but like stoner honesty. You sound like an atheist stoner. Are you? Are you not doing it on purpose right now? I feel like I'm being gaslit. No, I'm not doing any. Has my attitude changed? Since the 
I don't know. Has my attitude changed at all? See, I'll I'll t per, uh, I'll put it up a little bit. I'll get a little bit more excited. No, it's because you have the bro accent. Do I have a bro accent? I feel like people are just saying shit now. What the fuck is a bro accent? Do I? I hear this all the time, and I've never actually corrected someone or asked, but I genuinely don't know what that means. I don't know when people say like, oh, you give off like, like a bro. Well, I guess I am, but also I just have never really examined it. <clears throat> you sound like you're from, you just post statements as questions as to not agree or disagree. You sound like a dude, bro. Chad is absolutely just saying shit. I don't know. I, uh... All right, let's keep going. All right, let's finish this. Come on, you people. You don't know what real danger looks like anymore. <laughs> Incredible. Yeah. So my question to you is, is there a point when these get warm, just a little bit warm, anything at all? <laughs> Incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Oh, here's a question for you. Yes. Is it true that while writing at SNL that you would sometimes go downstairs to Letterman's 6A studio yeah. and then write material from his desk yes. at the studio? I would sit. They had like a, a covering over his desk to protect it from any asshole. <laughs> and so we were, uh, our studios were at nine and I would go down to, uh, he was in 6A, which is the studio I eventually took over, but I didn't know that was gonna happen. And I would sit at Dave's desk and I had Dave's perspective and I would sit there and I would work on a sketch. And then this crazy situation develops, one in a billion chance where I get a chance to audition for that show and then get it. But if you had told me that when I was sitting behind Dave's desk as a Saturday Night Live writer, I'd have said there's no way. I'd have also said there's no way there's ever gonna- Oh yeah, that's true. <clears throat> is it because uh, is it because he's a redhead and redheads have a higher pain tolerance? Is that what it is? It'd be a Charlie Rose show where you eat hot wings. <laughs> oh wait, I thought redheads have a lower pain tolerance. Do redheads have a higher pain tolerance or a lower pain tolerance? Because Will is a ginger. And that boy, I mean, he can run through a brick wall, but he will fucking complain about like a a minor injury. But I think that's just because he's a, I think that's because he's a, a, a theater kid. Like I always have thought that he's a theater kid. So he's just like, ah, oh, I have been slain. And it's like, he got a paper cut. You know what I mean? We require about 25% more anesthesia. Yeah. Higher tolerance to anesthetic, lower tolerance to pain. No, I know that redheads need more anesthesia. I know that. Research shown that people with red hair perceive pain differently than others. They might be more sensitive to certain types of pain and can require higher doses of some painkilling medications. However, suggests, the study suggests that their general pain tolerance may be higher. People with red hair also respond more effectively to opioid pain medications requiring lower doses. Okay, it's not the higher doses, it's lower doses. Wait, what? Redheads have a higher pain tolerance, but painkillers are less effective on them. It's very mid-racial passive. Will is more of a daywalker. Yeah, Will is a bit of a daywalker. To be fair, I'm the highest version of daywalker where I'm so white, even though my beard grows red, only in the summer, and I have freckles. So I'm not, I don't, I'm not a redhead at all, but I do have some redhead tendencies, like freckles. And my beard does turn red sometimes. I don't know why. I, I actually don't know why only my beard sometimes is red. Like, it's not always red. Yeah, I have white hairs. You have freckles if Will is a ginger, so are you. No, Will is definitely way more ginger than me. It's when chap sucks part of your soul. The white hairs are absolutely chat. Everywhere your beard turns red, it will turn white. Trust me. Oh, I wonder why. I wonder if that's the reason why my beard has turned white. Like, I think here is like the white patch. I have a white patch on my beard. <sighs> blue eyes are a genetic mutation. I thought blue eyes was inbreeding. Hair genetics are fucked. Friend is blonde. Beard is red, but has the body hair of a New Jersey Italian father. Oh, my God. Eating pussy can bleach your hair red. Anyway. <laughs> but I've been, I would have been wrong both times. That's exactly right. Yeah. You can't predict the future. You just don't can know what's going to happen. Can only connect the dots looking back, never yeah. looking forward. When you took over that 6A studio, did you uh -huh. see any remnants of the old guard? Were there, like, pencils stuck in the ceiling or anything uh, no, like No, because they put us in different offices. So we were not in Dave's offices, but we had his studio. There weren't remnants, but there were physical remnants. There were people. There were camera people. There was this guy, Bailey, who was a cameraman who had been with Dave the whole time. Bro, I thought that they were dyed. What do you mean? They're Afghans with bread-ass orange hair and beards, bro. This ain't a dye. That's just natural. That's I'm pretty sure that's dyed, homie. Dude, be like, there are Afghans where 
there are Afghans where they just look like they have eye makeup on. It's like, yeah, because they do have eye makeup on. And so he was our cameraman. I'll never forget that we kept coming up with these ideas that were much more involved a lot of running around. I was kinetic. Robert's kinetic. The writers we hired were very kinetic. I had just turned 30. So all my ideas were, I've got an idea. I start running and the camera's <laughs> running with me and I jump out the window and the cameraman jumps too. And Bailey, who had been there probably since the 50s and was used to watching, you know, shooting, I don't know, some Edward R. Murrow. <laughs> Edward R. Murrow smoke a cigarette down to the filter. No filter. No filter. It's Edward R. Murrow, <laughs> goddammit. That's what he was used to. And then suddenly I'm here saying, I've got an idea, Bailey, we're going to put rockets on your feet <laughs> and you're going to fire you down the hall. How old are you, Bailey? 77. Yeah, it's going to be fun, Bailey. <laughs> fun. Arroyo, por favor. Get that over my hands sure, are very slippery. Of course. Was it a four-year medical school? It was uh, supposed to be. There you go. Did you ever graduate? He's gone. Oh, my God. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Come on, man. Are we doing this or not? Yeah, no, I'm with Are you. we doing it or not? No, I'm on the same What's page. What's the point of even being alive <laughs> if we can't do this? Right now, I really do feel alive. I do feel alive. You're okay? Yeah, yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah. I might hiccup through this yeah. whole thing. Yeah. This one, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I'm feeling it a little bit. I'm feeling it. I'm no, feeling yeah. this one. A little tremor. It's just starting to peek through. You know? I feel I'm it a hiccuping. little bit. I can't stop. There's a little bit of a burning, no. but not much. <laughs> Which US president do you think would be the best podcast guest on Conan O'Brien needs a friend? See, you you tried to talk. Yeah. But your lips have been paralyzed, and what I heard was, I got that out. I think maybe you're having a problem no, here. No, I don't think so. All right. I think everyone in the studio will agree. <laughs> Which U.S. president do you think would make the best podcast guest on Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend? Do they have to be living? No. Of Richard not. Nixon. Nixon? Oh my God, it'd be fantastic. He's such a comedy figure. When you think about it, a boy's. <laughs> and we could get into water, and then he would try to be funny, like, I've got a funny idea. You know, it would be fantastic. <laughs> the voice alone, I would have to. Yeah, he, they, he's amped up, bro. He's definitely feeling it now. I think the heat is kicked in, baby. Say, probably uh, Lincoln. Can I just take a second and say this is starting to hit? He's a pussy for not saying Trump, by the way. That's like typical liberalism. Because honestly, Trump is... I mean, sure, Richard Nixon is actually pretty good because you're, you're talking about, like, dead people as well. But I do think Trump would be the second best after Richard Nixon. Richard Nixon is a good one. Hit. I think, no, yeah. Can I just say, I don't, know, I don't have a lot of regrets in my career. <laughs> Pouring this onto the wing. <laughs> right. And then licking it off. And in retrospect, I bet you it's good footage. No, yeah, it's good. But, it's good TV. Um, I'm starting to feel some sensations. And and you know what, Conan? If you weren't so braggadocious in this front half, I probably would have stopped you from doing that. No, you know, no, I would you have can't. protected you, you from can't, yourself. You can't stop me from being who I am. <laughs> That's exactly right. To so quote my my hero Popeye, "I am what I am." <laughs> okay. I said it, and Gandhi said it, and, and Popeye. That is the, that is who I am. I've got to go for it. Whatever I do, I have to go 100. I know you got to commit to the bit. Got to commit. It's to not the a bit. bit. This is life. This, this show is a bit a, to you. This show's a fucking bit. Because it's not bit. a bit. It's your show. <laughs> Don't say commit to the bit. This is life. Right. You're you got to right. grab it by the balls. You're, no, Dr. I, you know uh, what? Dr. Royal, would you check on my friend yeah. here? Just get a quick test. Yeah. Just... yeah, it's not good. Not good. Do you have anything beyond that? No, he's okay. I'll just take real. you at face value yeah. on that. Not yeah. good, dude. It's funny. He's like. Snots coming out of his fucking noise uh, nose, dude. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's not a good doctor. He's an he's an affordable doctor. Do you have a, a favorite mediocre president? Uh, <clears throat> well. Yes, I said noise. Shut up. That's a good one. Mediocre president? That's so mean. I'm gonna go with Warren Hardy. <laughs> okay. okay. Good looking guy. He was in the Oval Office like three days, and he wrote on a note. I am not fit to be president. This job is too hard. <laughs> and then to solve matters, he takes a train trip and dies mysteriously because he ate some bad lobster. So I'm not going to lie. That's kind of awesome. Uh, he's a real one for that. Uh, I would not discount him for this. It's just like, that's awesome. Well, you got to give it up for Warren G. Harding, in my opinion. <laughs> right? 
Don't you think? <laughs> no argument there. Yeah, he knew he couldn't do the job and said, you know what, has anyone got some lobster that's been out too long? I want to eat it on a train where there's no refrigeration. It's definitely a bit of an L to die to lobster, though. Like, that's crazy. And that's what they did. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do the sauce? What's on the sauce? I can't get this open. There we okay. go. And a little bit of this on it? Yeah, go. <laughs> I'll join you at the party. <laughs> That's the sound these Three Stooges used to make when they were doing anything destructive. Everyone watch the Three Stooges? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Money, money, money. Mistake. I went to announce my mistakes up front. Go ahead. This is not a mistake. Nothing about this is a mistake. Every step of the way. And the worst part about it, isn't it? It, it? The pain going in is also the pain that you will receive going out. Okay? It's hard to go down. If it's hard to go down, it's going to be hard to take it out, too. Tension. In. Oh my god. Uh, oh my god. Uh, Someone uh, say that. Oh my god. Oh uh, yeah! Yeah! Yeah! I've never felt that yeah, alive. I love it. I love it. Me too. I'm, I'm right here. for the first time in 15 years. This is to you. Hey, to you. Call the wife. Mm. Okay, yeah, you gotta. I mean, at this point, what are you gonna do? This is what's the, what, tell us what we're eating here. So he did this for the gingers, dude. This is like this is ginger rights, bro. This is ginger rights. Like he's doing ginger rights and ginger wrongs. Like honestly, he's like, oh yeah, you guys have made fun of us for far too long. Like, guess what, dude? I'll do it. So this is the last ab experience. It is made with almost pure pepper X. Incre oh my gosh. I gotta join you at the party going out with a bang <laughs> you gotta go isn't this the season finale you're exactly right there needs to be a fireworks display to close things out <laughs> oh my god he's dabbing that shit on okay here we go ready i'm ready oh my god you say this is pure pepper mm -hmm. so there's nothing here there's no insulation there's no safety net no straight concentrated pepper to the dome incredible incredible <laughs> i'm not getting it I'm just not getting it. Oh my gosh! What's wrong with me? Why can't I feel? No. <laughs> Is it gonna hit me now? It's gonna hit me soon, right? It's gotta build on it. It's gotta build. It's starting to build right now. Yeah, yeah. Oh no. Oh, it's building. Yeah. And it's kinda not gonna stop. No, it's not gonna but stop. That's okay. I got a little bit of a wind up. Yeah, it's coming fast. I know, I know. It's coming I fast. Know. We're approaching the, the peak of the mountain here. But Conan O'Brien, the good news is that's a wrap on our lunch date with the wings of death. We're here about to drop. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm perfectly fucking fine. I'm not questioning that. You didn't come up that. with one I'm wing that had that. any effect on Conan. Because he's here to stay. Bro, his eyes are bleeding, it looks like. Oh. If you were crafting a curriculum of a comedy survey course, can you give us one book to make sure that your students understand that the building blocks of comedy are not at all new? What are you gonna read? Read widely and read well. There's comedy in the Old Testament. There's comedy in the New Testament. You can read all kinds of stuff. Just don't lock yourself in to it's gotta be some comedy from the last 10 years. No, there's great comedy out there that was written a long time ago. Bro, put it down. What's funnier? Put it down. Put the bottle down, Conan. Conan, put the motherfucking bottle down, big dog. Don't do ben it. Don Quixote, Sancho Panza. You know, this is good stuff. The classics are funny. You know, you can watch, read Chaucer's tales. They're funny. There's funny everywhere. Don't be a snob. Look high and look low. A mad magazine is funny. There's funny stuff online all the time. There's no reason for us to try and exclude one category over another. These aren't the rantings of someone who's had some bad chemicals and overdid it to be funny and relevant to people who are at least 50 years younger than him? This is a guy who's just being on a show and it's legitimate. So I say here's to you, Sean. You're a great motherfucking host. <laughs> right back. And I'm glad you. I'm here. Conan. And I'm glad we had a great time. Oh. And I don't care. I don't care anymore. Wise words from a wise and stable man. Yes, Conan and a man who's doing everything he can to be on the and show that everyone has to tell young the wants him to be on. Just barely, and now there's nothing left to do but roll out the red carpet for you. This camera, this camera, this camera. Let the people know what you have going on in your life. I have a show. It's on Max. They used to call it HBO, but people found that too popular. <laughs> so now it's Max, because that really rolls off the tongue. 
And it's a funny show. Four episodes are going to drop at me going all over the world. You can check it out April 18th. That's right. My intestines have turned into acid. And I can still remember the plug. That's a professional. If there was a mic drop, I'd do one. But I do a wing drop. April 18th. Check it out. Dr. Arroyo. Oh, God. That's not good. Not That's good. dead either. You're not a doctor, are you? I, I should be. Okay. All right, thank you. Was he going to tell you what it's at? No, he doesn't even understand the numbers. It, it's up two degrees from when the start of the show. <laughs> no lie. That's the info yeah. I was after. I love how you ruined me, but saved your suede I, jacket. Well, I was literally, I literally just I know, this. I know, I know. I don't want, I, I, trust I me. Literally I love that jacket bought... and I do not want to get any on it. <laughs> You, you know the jacket. I admire a guy who hosts hot ones and wears beautiful suede. <laughs> he talked about doing this episode is hilarious. People called hot ones were you. Oh, yeah. Uh, and so I... I, I just did it. I yeah. just did hot yeah. ones and it dropped a couple of hours ago and I lost my mind doing it. <laughs> I completely had a complete breakdown physically, emotionally, spiritually. <laughs> Uh, is it really that bad? Is the is the hot? It's one? super hot. <laughs> My problem. Don't don't let this moment of entertainment allow you to forget that me and Sean Evans have long-standing beef. It's on site, okay? It's fucking on site. Problem is, if I think something's funny, I will do it and suffer later, <laughs> and that's exactly what happened. <laughs> And um, I just, I was like, no, this is going to be really funny because people make their way like halfway through the wings. They, they give you 10 wings and they get progressively hotter. And a lot of celebrities go up to like eight or seven and they go, I, I have to back. If he invited me on a show, would I go? Yeah, to fight him with fucking fisticuffs. It's on site, dude. Oh, wow. But they talk seriously. And I just kept mocking this guy <laughs> and grabbing the hot sauce. and. What's the beef? The year is... 2017. Hassan Hassanabe Piker is on a chartered private jet leaving Coachella, allegedly high on mushrooms. The award show has chartered a jet for the Dobrik clan. Okay? For the David Dobrik clan. Some other notable figures on that plane are members of the David Dobrik clan, such as Trisha Paytas, that old guy whose name I keep forgetting who I think was dating Trisha Paytas at the time, Todd, Matt, and many others. Also, David Dobrik. I enter the flight because the award show, Streamies, or not Streamies, Shorties, which is an award show that does not exist any longer, says, hey, would you like to get on a private jet to fly to New York with the Dobrik clan? I say, sure, why not? I don't think I will make it to my original flight anyway, and it beats flying economy. I'm six foot four. I get on the flight. I fly in. The reason why the shorties has actually decided to put me on the flight is not only because I'm up for an award. Breast, best breakout n new show. I think that's what it was called. But also because I am hosting the Best Creator Award of the Night. This is from February 25th, 2024. Hassan Piker's face after being caught in a private jet, Lem FAL. I do not know what is going on here or who Kareem Jovian is, but this is from that flight. This is right. The reason why I was allowed on this flight alongside, as a mere mortal, alongside actually famous people, was because I was, like I said, hosting the best uh, influencer content category as well as being up for an award myself on the shorties. You can also tell I am not high on this photo. Please stop saying that I was high on mushrooms on this photo. I was not high on mushrooms on this photo. I meant uh, presenting, yes. I don't mean hosting. I meant presenting. The fact that they asked me to present one of the highest awards of the night led me to falsely believe, and also the fact that they put me on this flight, led me to falsely believe that I'm winning the award for best breakout new show. This was for my show on the Young Turks Network called The Breakdown. But I was wrong. And not only was I wrong, 
But I was also wronged. Wronged by the award show, who then gave the award instead to my mortal enemy. That is a night where a new enemy was born. A new rivalry was born. Sean Evans, the Hot Ones show under the Complex Network. A man who had all of the amenities, a man who had all of the material support of the Complex Network at the time, defeated me. A person who had built that show in a supply closet. This is why I will hold this grudge for life. I don't even know who you are, Sean Evans. Yes, he probably doesn't know who I am and does not remember this very formative memory for me. Yeah, it is this show. This I gotta tell show. you guys, so coming down the carpet is somebody that Instagram goes crazy over. His name is Wolf Bay. Wolf Bay is actually Hassan Pike, but Woo! he's a political guy and he is one of the most gorgeous guys ever. Come on down here. You, we're looking for you. This yes, come on Hassan. Yes, on, Hassan. it is. The breakdown is relatively obscure. Hassan lore, but hot ones became an institution. Shut the fuck up. If I had won, maybe if I had won, I'd be the one interviewing Conan O'Brien on the breakdown. Maybe I'd still be doing the breakdown. Think about that. But you don't think. You don't think. Are those guys gay? Yes. This is why I have a never-ending, long-standing beef with Sean Evans and the hot ones. And the complex network. Have you changed your hair? You look bald. Shut the fuck up, bitch. This is my also only beef that is one-sided. Where I'm the one who's oblivious to the other side. Every other beef I have, I learn about after that person that I apparently was beefing with. Turns into like some right-wing shithead. And then points to me being their moment of radicalization. <sighs> Very petty, I know. Also, it's a joke. I, it's, come on, guys. I know I have a community that is, like, incapable of understanding uh, jokes and stuff, but obviously I'm joking. Drinking. It. <laughs> oh, you're joking? It makes me so sad I'm incapable of, of committing to a bit ever because I always have to break. I always have to break because there are people I know that won't understand that it's, it's a joke. On my face. And when I got home... I, my hand was burning and I realized that the wedding, the sauce got underneath my wedding ring and was burning my, through my skin. Cause it's an acid, you idiot. And, uh, my wife was like, what happened? And I'm like, Ugh. I gotta go to Norway. Shut up. <laughs> so that happened. Um, nice. All right. Let's watch wisdom. K style. Dune. Every character in the movie Dune. Look, Guys, normally I would do this. And the only reason why I'm not is just because if you ever see God damn. It's pretty crazy to think that he edits all of this shit on his phone on the TikTok app, as far as I understand. Like most of the stuff, obviously some of the visual effects I don't think you can do, but most of the stuff he's like literally editing on the TikTok app on his phone. I'm not even joking. No shot. Yes, shot. Yes, bro. I remember he posted, no, he literally posted one of his, like, editing sequences. No, it's not on desktop. He showed one of his fucking editing sequences on TikTok. There was, a, there was like, a video uh, a screen recording of it, and it looked insane. You'll believe anything? No, I, I think, like, he, cap, he does it on CapCut. That's crazy. Isn't that crazy? Why don't you tell us about your secret TikTok account? Planes used to have vibe. Now they don't. Cars used to have vibe. Now they don't. Houses used to have vibe. Now they don't. But good design is about creating a feeling. Today, things are engineered so that you feel nothing. So what's the feeling that you want to feel in your space? Lean into that. Hope this is helpful. Thanks for watching. Bye. What? Why is this my alt account? I mean, this guy's right. I thought about you when I saw this TikTok. One of my obsessions on the internet for the past month is this panda that makes a face when it snaps its bamboo like it's grimacing. And I'm gonna defend him because he's not so useless. Because first off, it's not a him, it's a her. And yes, this is not the normal way that a panda would eat bamboo. The panda's name is Mang Er and it was raised in the Beijing Zoo by people. So it didn't have a panda mom to kind of show it the ropes. And as the people went to break the bamboo, obviously that's really hard for them to do. So the people would make a really strained face. 
And when they had to snap the bamboo, they'd probably bend it like that or bend it over their knee. And this is her kind of replicating the behavior with her head. It's so cute. There's even a comic that someone drew about it to kind of like illustrate how he would have learned this behavior. And he sees that they're kind of making the face when they do it. So then the panda does it too. This is learned behavior that's super cute. It also makes you realize how easy it is for animals to pick up behaviors from humans. In cases where animals are intended to be released to the wild, they have to mitigate these behaviors. And in some cases they use puppets like in California condors. As I'm still is he not gonna show the video? Of academic research on species reintroductions, it's kind of wild the lengths that we have to go to protect species from learning human behavior. Oh my god. Oh my god. He didn't show us the fucking video. You're recommending it saying a law right now? No, the only thing it's saying is that fucking you if you watch even one TikTok ever, your TikTok for you page recommendations on the desktop is broken. It fucking sucks. Like I, TikTok for you oh my God. on the desktop is oh my basically God. non-existent. Everything that's really good about TikTok for you page on Boy, your you actual you're, you're look at this. Everything that's good about the TikTok for you page on your everything that's good about the TikTok for you page on your phone is the exact opposite on on the desktop. It sucks so bad. Like look at this. Let's let's let's scroll through our vans we have logged off our computers and i've quickly popped into my favorite local pub for a cheeky pint of beer and look a little bit of early dinner because the wife i love her dearly what would you rate this car on a scale of one through ten uh a seven and what would you rate your car uh, okay this one's kind of car on a scale of one through ten. okay this one's also sick i don't know what's going on here but i like it That was sick. What's the difference between a fridge and a butthole? <laughs> what? A fridge doesn't fart when you pull the meat out. <laughs> oh Actually, this Lord. comment is cap. Drip drop was founded by a doctor on a human. Yo, imagine getting stomped out in these. All right, so I just bought a few items last week, and they actually just arrived. This guy's awesome. I have seen this guy's videos before. He buys everything Chrome Hearts. He has the dumbest Chrome Hearts shit. Today, so let's just go ahead and go through these. Won't lie, I did spend a ton. He's like, I'm trying to buy a house. And it's like, not with that fucking attitude. You are not proving your point here, lol. Yeah, I know. Maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he's just showing me what I want to see. We're going to start off strong. I got this Balenciaga ski wear zip up. It looks pretty normal until you actually unzip it. And you see this beautiful interior. And I absolutely love the zipper on this piece. The only branding is really just the stuff on the hood. This thing is super warm and it weighs a few pounds, but I love the zip up. Now, for this next pickup, some of y'all might make fun of me for this, but I bought this $10,000 Chrome Hearts fidget spinner. It spins pretty well. Many of you might think it's an L, but this is definitely an investor's piece. And I kind of wanted to bring a little bit of my childhood back. Next, on the agenda, we have a Chrome Hearts knitted zip up. It's just got three little patches there on the front. There's Bro, he is never buying a house. Today in my dude. life is the private chef at Energy Esports. Here's everything I cooked today for our Wait, Valorant what the League of fuck? Legends. Team. Been on a bit of a sand. NRG Esports has a private chef? That's crazy. It's a, it's a wild fucking situation. It's a wild, wild, wild situation. It's not even 10k. Uh, the fidget spinner, I don't know if it's, ten, it's a joke or not. Team Liquid also has one too. Bro, they're spending so much money. It's back to this girl who dances. Titty fuck the lasagna. Asian is your Costco. I'm a Costco ho, and this is your Asian Costco tier list. Let's go. Level one. Just a basic ready. Excuse me, sir. My phone's dead. Could you for my mum, please? Yeah, no worries. I'm phenomenal. Go on. All right, thank you. Go on, it's mine. Yeah. Wait. What? <laughs> Where's your bike, son? I'm just going home. No bike on your fucking bike, son. But I just live up there. Yeah, yeah, I just live there. Which makes me. I don't understand. <laughs> Hey buddy, it's just you and me tonight. Sounds good, I'll be right down. Alright. Oh, I know him. I knew it! What are you hiding? Porn? Don't lie to me! Fine. I'm trying to send a message to the girl on Facebook. But she's so out of my way. Look at her. What is this deep fried ass modern family meme? What the fuck's going on? That's crazy. No, not Phil Dumphy, the kid. Nice kid. I like him. Think you the shit, bitch? You not even the fuck. I be going hard. I'm breaking their hearts like, like, like bitch, think you 
I saw these girls selling sloppy toppies with a twist, but they had zero customers, then this happened. You guys out here selling sloppy toppies with a twist? Yeah, but it's been really slow. We haven't sold a single one. Not a single one. About how much do you guys sell in a typical day? About 50 bucks. Well, I'm going to buy your entire stock for $100, and we're going to give them out to the local homeless people. Oh, yeah. Do you want to go give sloppy toppies to the homeless with me? Yes! Excuse me, sir, are you homeless? Yes, I am. When's the last time you got a sloppy toppy with a twist? It was summer of 85. Me and her were sitting out on a balcony. So how do you like the balcony? I love it. I've never felt a love like that since that day. I'm actually out here giving out sloppy toppies with a twist to the homeless. From you? Oh, no, no, no, from these girls. <laughs> Why'd you decide to give me a sloppy toppy with a twist today? Well, you know, I'm out here just giving back to the community. Well, I'm actually an influencer, and I'm giving out $3,000 to those who give me a sloppy top with a twist. Well, decide to give me a sloppy top with a twist today. Well, you know, I'm out here just giving back to the community. Well, I'm actually an influencer, and I'm giving out $3,000 to those who give me a sloppy top with a twist. Wow, that's so amazing. Ah. <laughs> Follow for more kindness. Five reasons I like the plunge sauna. What's one fashion trend y'all dislike, period? I ain't gonna lie, bro. Y'all just need to quit it with the trend shit in general, bro. Like, dress for yourself. Stop. What is that bag, bro? He has a holy Bible bag? The what the fuck? On God, Jordans. Jordans is done, bro. We rocking reps if we rocking Jordans, bro. I'm not dropping no thousand dollars on no shoes, bro. If you got the one earring with the cross, not only don't I like, do not like it, it's a red flag. It's a red flag. I don't like no fashion trends that anybody follows. Fashion is like a concept. So it's like you can't market as some shit, bro. Like, I can't. I don't give a fuck about the trends. So, like, do whatever, bro. As long as it's naturally. So what yeah, is I, going I don't on? Really fuck with those, like, sandal johns that people be wearing. They say they look like futuristic. It's like little alien shoes. What's one fashion? What? Is he wearing pants on his arms? That's weird. Yeah, he did the story. All right, bro, this is our eighth time watching this. What are we about to do tonight? Are we oh about to go out? Dude, look at Tasha's dead now. Just kidding. You think he's going to die that easily? Going to go out tonight or what, bro? Why, why do we keep just sitting in and watching anime? Maybe if I had a perm. All right, let's see how they switch up after a perm, bro. Let's see. But it doesn't work like that for me and us Asians. With the perm? This sucks. How is she doing this? Your TikTok is broken? What is this? What is happening? Is that real? She's a witch, duh. Is that rice? What the fuck is that? Oh, you thought you was God's favorite? Nah, that's Timothy. See, Timothy was stupid. And he was broke, but he needed that money by any means necessary. So he married this old white lady. Now that he had the money, he needed the respect. So he went to the mayor's office and he said, hey man, I need a job. Mayor said, nah, you stupid. He went back, he said, I need a job. Mayor said, you stupid. He went back. The mayor said, all right, we're going to make you the Lord of the Deer. Timothy said, yeah. What the Lord of the Deer do? They said, you got to find all the deer in Massachusetts. I'm doing Walking Dead after. Said, I'm not going to let you down. He counted zero deer because there were zero deer in Massachusetts. Now, the other rich white people at the time decided to play jokes on him since he would fall for anything. They said, yo, Tim, he said, y'all, they said, you know, it's cold in uh, Jamaica and the Caribbean, right? He said, yeah, I'm not stupid. I know that. They said, you know what you need to do? You need to take all your money and you need to buy them warming pans. They were kind of like heaters at the time. He like, yeah, I, I already knew that. I was going to do that already. So he basically bought heaters for the Caribbean island. His captain of his ship went over said this dude's stupid so he sold these as ladles so they can stir the molasses jamaica was like yo this is amazing we've been looking for these so they bought everything on his ship when he found that out he said dang they must really be cold so he bought them mittens and he bought them cold clothes he said go sell these over there an asian ship that was bound for siberia was passing the captain the captain said yo y'all going to where it's cold they said yup he said you want to buy these cold clothes they said yeah we buy them so at this point your boy tim was really rich but he wanted to see if people was really down for him so he faked his own during his funeral, he hid in the bushes and watched how many people attended. Like 3,000 people showed up, which is a lot. He said, damn, they really like me. He looked around, he saw his kids crying, but he looked at his wife and saw that she wasn't crying. So he called her to the back. She said, what, boy, you still alive? He said, why wasn't you crying? That's irrelevant. So he starts hitting her with a cane. She starts fighting back and all this commotion going on. So they get surrounded by a giant crowd. They look and they say, yo, Tim, is that you? 
Tim said, yo, welcome to my party, y'all. Hey, man, let's have a good time. So he pretended nothing happened and everybody just had a party. Timothy eventually passed away at the age of 59, extremely wealthy because of his ludicrous investment strategy that would always work out due to divine intervention. But when he passed away, he donated most of his money to charity. So maybe he knew God was looking out for him. Okay, this was the best talk that has been ticked. Yeah, you guys are freaking nerds, man. You're nerds. I would much rather watch people do like weird anime dances and shit than fucking learning about history, okay? It's just like, you guys, you guys literally, I know, I know this community fucking thrives on that shit. I know. Honestly, I know. Because you guys are freaking nerds. That's it. There's no, no two ways about it. You're a bunch of goddamn nerds. Time for the Walking Dead Definitive Series, Season 1, Episode 4. What kind of new drama am I going to find myself in? Okay? What will we do today? I already executed Duck. I lost my girlfriend. She died, which was kind of fucked up. She was, well, she didn't die. She was killed by my other girlfriend, who I was going to sexo. No sexo for me. I was wrong to think I would get the sexo. That was bullshit. Oh, that was devastating. Honestly, is so fucked up. Sounds like my autobiography, really? Walking Dead Season 1, Episode 4. Get in now. Okay, let's freaking blast off for all the freaking nerds out there. Here it is. Here's the blast off. Let the people know. I know there were a lot of people who were asking. What did this guy say? Oh, I think I missed the politics part. Okay, bye. No, you didn't. Because the politics never stops. But also, fuck yourself and leave, actually. We don't want you here. We don't want you here fucking up the vibes because it's vibe time. We're vibing. Immaculate Friday vibes are upon us. I just finished the whole season a few days ago. Fucking lame-ass duck chatter, bro. Yeah, go duck yourself, chatter. Wait, why can't I keep spamming? Yeah. Go the way of duck. Which is to say, you know, fucking one... One frame, one frame execution. You know what I mean? The way you pause and do commentary while playing this game is incredible content. Thank you. Paid chatter. That's a Clem chatter. We smoking on that duck pot pack around these parts. I agree. This is like a shocking experience overall for me. Cause like, I didn't really think that it was going to be this good. I'm actually low key shocked at how good the game is and how much fun it's been to play. All right, here's an previously update as well, previously on The, on walking, the dead. walking Dead. Shut up, Carly. Ugh, I've heard enough out of you. Now, what the fuck's the problem? That was crazy. I can't believe we relived that moment. It was also not at night. It was in, it was literally not at night when she did that. It was broad daylight, I think. I sure as the sun's gonna come up tomorrow. But y'all keep going on like this, and that girl ain't gonna make it. What do we do? Give me the gun, kid. I'll do it. Yeah, I popped him off, dude. I popped I Doug we should look for like parents. it was like I was destined really? to pop Doug. Yeah, you need to know if they're okay. And, well, if they're not, what happened to them? I was the one giving the bandits supplies. What? It's all my fault. I fucking called jump. it too. I what? knew that that was going to happen. No way. Ah, shit. Can't wait for you to get to Savannah, Clementine. I got your parents right here. And you be sure to find me whether Lee wants you to or not. Now, what I need... How does he know who Fuck. Lee is? I don't know, but I doubt we're going to be happy when we find out. Bro's a pedophile, dude. How are you going to be a pedophile in the zombie apocalypse? You know what I mean? That's a dude. That's a dude that honestly, you know, that's you throw that dude to the zombies. I've been talking a whole big game about no capital punishment this day on this day, and I've been literally capping motherfuckers left and right. It's kind of fucked up that Clementine has been hogging in this random weirdo. But at least we're now officially in Savannah, Georgia. That's right, baby. Yo, my fucking Persian short king is not going to make it out, I feel like. I do like him, but honestly, he is a little bit of a dead weight. On it, so we might have to cap him. Can't I just hold it just for a little while? We're getting real close to where my mom and dad are. Maybe I can... Not now, Clementine. Maybe later, okay? Okay. She's such How's a cutie me? pie. I can't. I can't do bad. this. I can't I'm be fine. mad at her. You're not fine. You need to rest. He needs to rest. Kenny, how much farther to the riverfront? There should be just a few more blocks up ahead. And there'll be boats there. 
It sure as hell better be. There'll be boats. Have to be. Have to be. It's going to be okay. Kenny knows what he's doing. Shut what up, Ben. Hell? You fucking bitch. Yeah, God don't stop, baby. Maybe That's the right. The city's not so dead after all. Keep moving. No one's ringing that bell. It's automatic. On a timer. What kind of church bell goes off at 20 past the hour? Someone's up there! Are you sure? I don't see anything. Hey! Hey, you up there! Damn it, Lee. Keep quiet. You're gonna... I thought you said that thing didn't work. Who the hell is this? Hello? Hello! I said answer me! Clementine now knows that I know that the walkie-talkie works. What the hell was that? Is someone trying to fuck with us? Sounded more like a warning. Yeah, he called the zombers. The bell tolls. What are you yammering on about? It, he called the zombers. Come on, bro. Be be fucking be for real, Kenny. It tolls for thee. Obviously, no shit. The fucking bell is gonna bring about a shit ton of zombers our way. Duh. Everybody, run! Why would oh shit? Oh fuck. Wait, how can he run if his legs? He's got a bum knee. Okay, Chuck. Chuck is pulling his weight, bro. Kitty! Dude, that's easy. Too One close. frame. Don't you think? Ben! One frame, baby. No, Ben! Help her! Oh, God, Ben, you suck ass, bro. Oh! God oh, damn it! Kitty, Ben! What is this? Wait, what the fuck? Why is it not helping? No! Wait, I shot those things, bro. What? Oh, that's for the cutscene. Okay. Get her the hell out of here. I'll catch up with you. It's for the lore, because I, I popped those motherfuckers 100%. I don't miss in this game, bro. I don't miss in this game. Move I'm your fucking, asses! I'm River Street's the right up ahead! That's not all. I'm basically the Turkish Tadak. They they had to do that. They had to do that for the game. The game was like, oh, bro, come on, you're too good. Like, we gotta get Chuck the fucking... Clap some of these zombies, you know what I mean? Literally, Turkish Tadak. That's what they all say around these parts. Turkish Tadak. Oh, give me a fucking break! Wait, where the hell is Chuck? <laughs> Shit, he's in trouble. We gotta help him. There's no time. We gotta go, now. I'll be fine. Just go! Fuck no, bro. Come on, what? They didn't even give me a decision? I would've saved Chuck's ass. I would've saved him. We need a musical guest. He was a musician. He's a vibe deliverer, dude. That's crazy. We just locked okay? the door behind us. Uh, yeah. You've opened up your wound. You're bleeding. Charles Shit, Entertainment Cheese, bro. We've got to get him inside. Clean him up. Kenny, how's that door coming? I'm working on it. I'm working on it. We'll work faster, would you? Won't be long before those things outside figure out where we went. You know they can smell blood. Let me see if I can find us a way in. Yeah, I'll take matters into my own hands. You already know what it is, baby. Let me talk to Omid and Krista, though. How's he looking? I'm all right. You're not all right. You've reopened your wound. You're losing blood. He is God our Brooke, yes. Except he's there. better than Brooke. It could be infected. It could be... No offense, but you really need to work on your bedside manner. She's just worried about you, man. Don't worry. We're gonna get you fixed up in no time. Just as soon as we're inside, okay? Why is he looking okay. at me like that? Thanks, man. Please He's just a Persian boy. Him. We need to get him inside now. I'm on it. Just sit He's just a Persian boy hey, who loves the Civil War. Him. He li literally is looking at me. Why is he looking at me with that ri with them Riz eyes, bro? Looks like something was buried here. The dog, bro. What do you mean? Just a dog house. Just a dog house. That's what you're in. That's what Clem's in. Clem's in the dog house. Let's be real. No, no. Fountain. Not thirsty enough to drink that yet. That's just how Persians look. The shovel is never not useful. Dude, <laughs> why would a dog have a cross, man? It's a fucking church dog. Fuck you mean? Open house door. No way we're yeah. gonna force that open. Not without making a lot of noise, at least. What's this? Looks like there's some kind of pet door here. Yeah, bro. I'm telling you, that's a that that is a I dog. Tried it already. That's locked too. Who the hell ever heard of a locked doggy door? I have. My neighbor had one just like that. It's it's radio controlled. The dog wears a collar with a chip in it, so the door only opens when the dog gets close to it. Oh, I'm I'm oh, digging shit. the dog out. Every day's a school day. I'm digging the dog out. 
All right, so Chatters, where's Chatters who said that's not a dog. Why would a dog have a cross? Uh, you're about to look really silly, okay? Because yeah, all dogs go to heaven, even Christian dogs, okay? It's the dog. I will be digging up the dog though for sure. Uh, hold on, let me talk to this fucking dipshit, and then I'll talk to Clem. About what happened back there on the street. I know. I don't know what happened. I just froze up. Hasn't that ever happened to you? Just hear what I'm saying to you. You put that girl in danger again. It won't be walkers you have to worry about. Yeah. I hear you. Fucking kill think you. We can get in through one of these windows. Man, I don't think so. Whoever owned this place had them all barred up. Yeah, looks pretty solid. Yeah, I didn't see you fucking freezing up when you chose to run away, you fucking bitch. How do you think Kenny's holding up? I don't know. It's it's like all he can think about is finding a boat. He definitely doesn't want to talk about Katja and Duck, at least not with me. Maybe we should just let him deal with it in his own way. I'm going to go check things out. Wait, right. I could have made him courageous? Do you think the dead people saw us come back here? Are they going to find us? No, nah, they didn't see us. We were too fast for them. I can still hear them out there. <laughs> it sounds like they're getting closer. It's just your imagination. I'll feel safer when we're inside the house. Yeah. Will you feel safe enough to call up some random pedophile, Clementine? I didn't forget about that, but we're not going to think about hey, that for now. Be careful. Digging up dead things isn't what it used to be, you know what I mean? Yeah, I hear you. Clementine, don't look at this. What's buried down there? Dead dog. With a collar. Nothing. Clem, go over and sit with Krista and Obi, okay? But I want to... Just do what I say, okay? Clementine feels hurt. Come on, man. You don't want to see a dead pupper. as nasty as hell. Oh, That's like... Oh, God, the smell. Literally worse than seeing dead humans. Must have belonged to someone. Dude, I'm doing grave robbing. <sighs> Can't get it off. Ugh. Okay, that is not Ooh. cool. Are you oh okay? shit. I'm fine, honey. It's just the smell. Are you sure you're I said I'm fine, okay? God damn, bro. Oh, what the fuck? There was someone looking at me from that tree? There's somebody up there. Oh my god, there is somebody up there. Can you tell? There's something up there, chat. You see that? Anyway, don't tell obviously don't fucking goes nothing yes god damn you see anything in there no looks like it's been empty a while yeah the top of the hour ad break is in there just kidding you won't be able to see what's in there if you don't subscribe for five dollars or for free that is with a twitch prime Whew. top of the hour ad break what can you, you close the damn do? grave do i fast. think i think so too you but see if i can reach up in there no, bro, you can't reach up in there. You gotta put Clementine through there. It's no good. I can't get it. Here, let me try. I think I can. Clem! God damn it, get back here! Clementine! She just fucking rolled in there so fast. That was really funny. Ta da! Good work, Clem. But don't go shooting off like that without asking first, okay? I was just trying to help. I know, and you did good. You just had me worried there for me. I gently Can warned we her. Maybe have this conversation inside. My leg's starting to hurt like hell. Gently, gently warned her. Warned her. I didn't like that she ran in there though. Looks okay from here. Fucking Everybody crawled in. in there, like a goddamn rat. Why are you so mean to Clem? We're we're kind of beefing right now. If you don't know, she's been talking to a pedophile on the radio and like giving him information. It's a little crazy of her to do that. Stop victim blaming. Uh, sorry, sorry. He's nine, bro. No, That's still okay. fucked up. You should know Good. better. I feel better already just being off my feet. Thanks, babe. If you treat her like she's eight, she'll keep making mistakes. Okay? So, when were you going to tell us about the radio? Tell you what? That it's working. That there's someone else on the other end of that thing. You didn't think that might have been worth sharing with the rest of us? I was going to tell you. Kenny and I only found out yesterday. So both of you were keeping it from the rest of us. Great. Kenny was Who there? gives a shit about the damn radio? I'm more worried about whoever it was out there ringing that bell and bringing the dead down on top of us. It's like they didn't want us to make it to the river. What makes you think it's not the same person? Whoever was on the radio was close enough to see us in the street. 
and we didn't see anyone else other than the guy in the bell tower. Because that doesn't make a lick of damn sense. Why would they bring out the dead like that and then try to warn us about it? How much sense does anything make anymore? In case you haven't noticed, there's a lot of twisted folks out there these days. At least the dead don't play games with you. I do think Whoever they're stalking us. Seems like they're following us. And I don't like being followed. All the more reason to get on a damn boat where we can't be followed. Okay, bro. I'm not Kenny is like such a typical Florida boy, dude. He's just like, we got to get on a boat. Doesn't matter. <laughs> All problems will be solved by being on a boat, okay? Every moment that I'm on land, I hate it. I need to be on a boat right now. Like, no, man. He can probably fucking stalk us with the boat, too. If he stalked us with the train ride, he could probably stalk us with the boat ride, too, you know? Like, come Going on. Back out there I love boats. Soon. Omid needs to rest. We need to make sure Chuck is okay. Once it's quieted down outside, we'll all head towards the river. See if we can find him. Deal? Suit yourselves, but I'm not going to wait around too long for someone else to grab up those boats. <laughs> That's our ticket out of here. Bro, what do you mean? Bro, what do you fucking mean, dude? It's not like today where all the boats are going to be taken for, okay? Like, they're, they're not... All the boats are spoken for today. Should have came yesterday. <laughs> we had like 10 of them. <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna wait for them, but at least I'll feel better when we know that for sure. We need to check the whole house. All right, fine. You and me will take the upstairs. Lee, you've got down here. Make sure you check every door. Understand? Okay. Is there anything I can do? Thanks. I got it. Hang out with Chris and Omi until I get back. Okay. Lee, I'm sorry. What for? Going through the door like that without checking first. I guess that was pretty dumb, huh? Just ask me first the next time you're gonna outsmart all the grown-ups, okay? Okay. Ain't no zomber knows how to fucking operate a boat, I'll tell you what. Oh god, it's grandfather clocks are so ago. creepy. I don't know why. They're just so goddamn creepy. Clear this place out, left behind two bottles of whiskey. Looks like someone didn't have their priorities straight. Probably not the best idea right now. I need to stay frosty. Looks expensive and heavy doubt any looters would be able to haul that thing too far when i when it says look at table i didn't mean literally look at the table itself i thought he was going to look at like what's oh, on the team. table that's so funny that he just directly looked at the table nothing water's off hope we never get desperate enough for food that this starts looking appetizing i'm surprised it hasn't i'm not that hungry signs i need to finish checking the downstairs How's it coming? <laughs> no power. I've tried it. It's not terrible. Aw. It's a child's dog. Four months in, I'll be eating that dog food, bro. I'll be like protein. You know what I mean? Oh, Fuck it. Out. No, dog food is that bad? Bro, it doesn't matter. What do you mean? You never know where your next meal is going to be. See, none of you motherfuckers have survival instincts. Like... I don't know why, I guess like living in a fat family, survival instincts are automatic, it kicks in. Where you immediately, when you sit at the table, it's like, there's like a competition to just like shove as much food down your throat as possible before Marat gets it. Not exactly my style. What painting is that, chat? I think I saw the original hey guys, in... How's the house looking? Saw the original in Italy. the first floor yet, but so far so good. Is it Goya? Caravaggio? How's that couch treat? The Vinky? Oh my god. Feeling better yet? I'm all right. I feel you. Chad is so stupid, bro. Y'all don't know shit Finding about this art. This house was a hell of a stroke of luck. I like it a lot better. Judith beheading. I'm sure it's safe. Hello for nays by oh, Caravaggio. Sure, right now it feels like just the break we needed. Maybe our luck's starting to turn around. I'd like to believe that. Really, I would. What do you guys think about this plan at Kinney's? The guy's losing it. Look, Lee, I know he's your friend and all, but you need to be careful. That man is on the edge, and I don't know if I want to be around when he goes over it. Kenny's solid. He's just been through a lot, that's all. I hope you're right, but you need to be careful. That man is on the edge, and I don't know if I want to be around when he goes over it. Kenny's solid. He's just been through a lot, that's all. I hope you're right, for all our sakes. Sit tight. I'll keep checking the first floor to make sure it's safe. Thanks, Lee. Bro, y'all will never get art ho pussy. Not knowing iconic paintings like that. Holding I'm just up, okay. saying. Hope this house is safe. Have you checked all the rooms to make sure? No, but I'll take care of it. Says the no music here and ass. Whatever, dude. I'm goaded. Nothing huh. hiding in here. 
That's what you think, bro. Wait, you're not gonna fucking loot the toilet? That's crazy. No survival instinct again. All right, let's get ready. Let's get ready to rumble, baby. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, the closet. All clear in here. Just one more to check. Does this test the Bechdel test? Yes. Jesus! Oh! What? What happened? It's nothing. I was not afraid. Nothing. It's just... Oh, okay. Please ain't got much. We should be okay here for a while. At least until it quiets down outside. Good. Thanks. I was just faking it. I was faking okay? being scared. Yeah, for now. But I'm really worried his leg might have gotten infected. Don't suppose you turned up any meds while you were poking around? Nah, just dog food. And there's some whiskey in the back. Wait, whiskey would work? On the wound? I was just asking Clementine if she knows who the man on her radio is. It's okay, honey. You can tell us. Who is he? What does he want? Go ahead, Clem. It's okay. You're not in any trouble. I mean, you should be, but it's all right. It's just a friend. I don't think he wants to hurt us. What has he been saying to you? What have you been saying to him? I told him I was trying to find my parents and that they were in Savannah. He really seems nice. I think he wants to help me find them. Clementine, honey, trust me, that's not what he wants. He... Lee? Lee, you need to get up here now. Uh -oh. What's wrong? It's Kenny. Wait. Kenny said he thought he heard something up there. Went to go look. He's up there? Come on, Kennel. Come on, Kennel. Come on, Kennethy. Oh, no. Jump scare times two. Is he fucking zombered? If he's zombered, I'm going to be so sad. I have to put his zombie body in the boat. You know what I mean? And I'm not talking right now because I'm afraid. And I'm talking to, you know, uh, Kenny? calm my senses. What the fuck? Kenny, you okay, man? Kennethy. Oh, Jesus. What the hell is that? Is that a oh, dead child? God. Is that a dead kid? Wait, is he a fucking... A live kid or is that a dead zomber kid? Oh, it's a dead zomber kid. Damn, a famished dead zomber kid. L. Kinda looks like duck, don't he? It's just a kid. What the hell happened to him? Ain't nothing on him. Guess he must have been hiding out up here. Starved to death. Jesus Christ. You're the wrong audience for this game? I can, Lee. Couldn't do it before. Can't do it now. Give him the gun. You can do this, bro. I can't ask you to do this, man. I'll take care of it. Like I did before. Sure, it's fine. I can kill fucking zombie children. Sure? I guess we'll find out. Poor kid must have tried to hide out up here until he starved to death. He's like, come on, let me get a taste. Like, let me get a taste, dude. What do you mean, bro? Wait, you think I'm gonna waste fucking... You think I'm gonna waste Sorry. bullets on this fucking thing? Get the fuck out of here. I'm literally saving its whatever remnants. We should bury him. Get the fuck out of here, Kenny. I'll take care of it. Bro, he's looking right at you, Kenny. That was crazy. Bro, I don't think you guys understand. First of all, I murdered someone, okay? And that was before the zombie apocalypse happened. I'm I'm a cold-blooded killer, dog. That's how it is. Hell is hot, Hazan. Yo, chatters talk about a bordo. But you have no smoke for the abordo. Oh my god, we're putting him in the dog grave. Chatters will literally talk about aborting children, but then you can't even fucking abort a child after birth. You know what I mean? Press this skull like Panini. At least we're... At least we are burying him with his best friend. You know what I mean? At least there's a little bit of happiness there. <sighs> Bro, stop looking at the boy. Just shovel the fucking loose dirt. Come on. What are you looking at, dude? We don't got a lot of time, Lee. Come on now. Clem, come look. <laughs> come look what I found, Clem. <laughs> we're, we're doing an IDF rush? Oh, come on, dude. It's a zombie. It's a zombie. I just... Oh! Ew! Oh my god. Oh my god. I think I literally... Hey! Oh, oh hey! my god. Oh my god. I squeezed too hard. Who are you? What the hell do you want from us? I squeezed too hard. I squeezed my shit so hard. I swear to God, I got an ab cramp a little bit. Fuck. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. My toes hurt. <laughs> oh, oh, my Lord. That shit is fucked up. I'm squeezing my shit too hard. Wait, what's going on? I saw someone standing there by the fence watching us. A walker? No, too fast. 
Took off like a bat out of hell when I spotted I curled my toes. Was it a man or a woman? Didn't get a good enough look. What does it matter? I'm wondering if it's the same guy who's been following us. The guy on the radio. <laughs> Kenny? I'm fine. I just... I'm fine. What's all the ruckus? Lee saw someone watching us from outside the gate. What? Who? I can't oh, sure. how would I know, bro? I ran off before I could get a good look. I don't like this one bit. Not one bit. Me either. Walkers are one thing. But the thought of someone out there actually stalking us. All right, that's it. We stuck around here long enough. It's time to get back on track. Time to get down to the river and find ourselves a boat. I don't know if we'll meet well enough <laughs> to move yet. Well, he better get ready. It's boat I'm time. I'm going down to River Street right now to find a boat. And as soon as she's ready to go, we're moving out. We only checked the house to make sure it's secure. We didn't really toss the place. We're low on food, water, meds, ammo. We should make sure there's nothing here we can use before we move out. Well, you search it if you wanna. I'm done with this house. We came to this. He's so close. He can smell the sea, bro. This guy's a sea lion, okay? He's like, you know what'll fix this situation? A boat. I've never had a bad time on a boat. <laughs> Let's get on a boat right now. We need to find a boat, and that's just what I'm gonna do. Maybe it's not such a bad idea to check the place. One I more said I'm done with this house. That's crazy how much he loves boats, bro. We can do both. Ben, you take one last look around the place. Grab anything that looks useful. No, don't split. Kenny go down to the river to get us Don't a boat. split. Wait, can't I come? My mom and dad can't be far now. Oh, wait, we're leaving Ben behind? Fuck yeah. Yeah, no, Ben, you can fucking kill yourself when you're in that house. Fucking asshole. Maybe we can look for them on the way to the river. Clem, honey, I, I think it'd be best if you stayed here with Ben. Damn it, I'm I leaving watch her with Ben. Omid and Krista. Help them get ready to move out. You said I'm supposed to always stay close to you. I know, it. it's just this once. Sometimes we all have to put aside what we want for the good of the group. Hey, don't worry. This is a bad idea. I'll be back before you know it, okay? Did okay. I fuck this up? Oh, Daylight's shit. Daylight's burning. Gonna go grab my gear, then we'll head out. Come on, Clem. Let's go see if Omid needs anything. Chad, don't spoil so it. You're just gonna leave me on the bench here. Chad, don't spoil it. That's not how it is, Ben. I need you to stay here and keep an eye on Clementine. I can do that. Well, just so we're clear, while I'm gone, anything or anyone tries to get inside this house, you shoot them. Don't even think twice about it. Understand? I got no problem shooting walkers. Did you hear what I said? Anything or anyone. Good. I trust. I trust the lady in Omid more than I trust Ben to look after Clementine. I'm gonna be honest. She's fierce. Chad, stop saying where's anything unlocked. You guys are such fucking assholes, dude. Because, like, you're also literally fucking spoiling it, potentially. And I'm also worried and scared. Stop. Chat's being a bunch of ducks right now. I'm gonna be honest. Duck chat. I don't know why I'm going with this fucking manic guy over here. He's fucking lost his mind. Hey, yeah. So, you want to talk about it? About what? About what happened back there, in the attic. No. You sure, man? I mean... River's we... right up ahead. <laughs> Boats. <laughs> you know what that mean? Boat. <laughs> Son of a bitch. That bastard's fucking with us again. It's another trap. No, listen. That's not the same bell as before. This one's further off. Whatever it is, it's gonna get the dead moving over there. What in the hell is going on? Chad, this is an analogy. This is an analogy for religion, r slash atheism, okay, on top. I don't know, but the person ringing that bell might be doing us a favor. Whatever, man. I find whoever's doing that, I'll ring their motherfucking bell for them. Good one. La Campana, Resident Evil. Hmm. Let's keep moving. Whoever comes in between me and my boat, gonna get fucked up. Still nothing moving behind us. I think we're... Oh my god. No boats. <laughs> There's got to be a boat. There's got to be. <laughs> Are you sure about that? Doesn't look like it to me. Maybe we need to start thinking about a plan B. This is the plan. It's the only one we've got. And you pissing on it in front of everyone like you did back at the house ain't exactly helping. Well, screw you. I ain't giving up that easy. My man needs his boat, bro. What are you going to do? Make a boat out of a fucking truck? I mean, there's one over there that's like half capsized, half sunk. This one might still be salvageable. You better be right about this. I said it might be. Give me a fucking break. I'm a fishing captain, not a miracle worker. Wait, what happened? Oh, we got effed a little bit? Like the boat? Chat? Chat just 
withstood a little bit of an F, we might it might be salvageable. You know what I mean? It might be salvageable. Just like the boat that we're watching it right now. I don't know why the fuck we're trusting a dude who named his son Duck, but I'll check it out. You look further along the waterfront. Maybe there's something at the other end. I don't think we should split up too far. We don't have to. Refresh if you're having a hard time with the, the bit, if the it's still from right here. See what skipping. you can find. Okay. I'm from here. That river's full of gators. River's full of not just regular old gators. River would be full of zomber gators. Look through the telescope. Great. Needs a quarter to work. That's crazy. Oh, they're alive still. What the fuck, bro? What, did you put these zombers up as a warning to other zombos? Like, what the hell? What the fuck. What is this meant to be? Some kind of warning? Who would do something like this? Using walkers like scarecrows. What sick bastard did this? Unless they weren't walkers at first. This barricade does a good job of making me not want to go any further. Yeah, unless they weren't zombos at first, they were human and then they died on there. What are these markings? They're all over the place. There ain't nothing here on the side street? Okay. Could be military tags, but what do they mean? Watch out, Turkish man. Vlad Dracula made it to Atlanta. Oh, there might be a quarter in here. Hello, beautiful. Empty. Yeah, would have been too easy. Come on now. Why you gotta make fun of me like so that? They already cleaned this place out. What are you gonna do with quarters anyway in the fucking zomber apocalypse? Why'd they clean it out? Someone already lays. Must have taken weeks to board up all these windows. Looks like the whole city has been boarded up for all the good it did. I wonder if they boarded the city up because they were um, infected and they were placed under quarantine. It's too dangerous out here. Or if they, yeah, Larry had all the last change in the city. Um, man, I could go for sixty cents right about now. Maybe in here. Looks like it's still intact. Locked. There we go. There you go. Easy peasy, baby. Gas yeah, siphoned. Tires removed. Engine parts missing. Looks like this thing has been stripped clean. Yeah, but for what purpose? What can you do with the... I guess you can use a lot of the different Must car... Must have been a hell of a wreck. Can't go further down that direction. Okay. Someone must have been trying to back their boat into the water. Only things didn't go as planned. Hey, uh, Kenny. The hell are you waiting for? We need to look through that telescope to see if there are any other boats out there. Oh my god, he's so obsessed with the boat situation. Bro, you got a, you got issues, man. He's got boat autism. Fuck! What's up with the boat? It ain't gonna work. Hull's cracked beneath the waterline, plus someone stripped out the battery. You can't fix it? What the? What the hell is that? A fate worse than death. The zombie's gonna pop in. Abandoned, like every other place in this city. It don't look like no boat. No way that one's salvageable. The Talmadge Memorial Bridge. I can't imagine how many people tried to escape across it when the city started to fall. Nothing but water. Not a boat to be seen. Oh, what the, the fuck? Hell? Bro, what is this dude doing? Get down. Get down. What is he doing? Oops. Why the hell are we hiding? Someone came down from that building at the end of the street. Where'd he go? Saw him run into that newsstand. Could be our bell ringer. How about we go find out? Sounds like a plan. Okay, you head up the middle of the street. I'll go around the side, cover your flank. We'll come up on him quiet, take him by surprise. We just want to talk to this guy. Oh, we're gonna talk. He's like, I'll let the gap do the talking. Out here in these streets, we let the gun do the talking. What the fuck? What the? Oh my God, how is that even possible? Oh wait, I hit it. Bro, I hit it too. That's a lady. Oh my God, Clem. Please don't hurt him. How the fuck did Clem get here? Yo, Ben, Ben needs to be killed. Okay. Ben needs to be assassinated by Bayraktar drone. Okay. Like, dude, how are you so bad at like the most basic shit? I have so many questions. What the fuck is Kenny doing? Okay. I cannot rely on a single person. The only person I can rely on is, is, Honestly, Clementine, that's it. Kenny, you better be fucking dead around that corner, you son of a bitch.
You were supposed to, you were supposed to be my backup. You're not from Crawford. Crawford? What the hell are you talking about? Don't shoot her now, dumb fuck. Kenny, don't! Oh, fuck. Now the zombies hurt us. No, he's with us! Who the hell are you people? Kenny, back off. Unless you want this lady to give you another ass whooping. Who are you calling lady? The name's Molly. Molly? Wait, what? I'm Lee. This is Kenny and Clementine. Are they non-binary? Are they non-binary? Hi. You guys really aren't from Crawford, are you? Don't even know what that is. Everything beyond that barricade. What the hell happened here? You sure you want to know? Yeah, that's why I asked. What the hell happened when here? When everything started going to shit, some people got together and sealed off that whole neighborhood. Folks willing to do anything to stay alive. Stop the dead getting in. I try to avoid them. Why? Let's just say they have a zero tolerance policy for anyone who won't or can't live by their rules. So how'd you know we weren't them? Because they have a because no there child. Are no children in Crawford, not anymore. No child policy. Why they grew up? What do you mean, no children? Why not? No they children, ate them. Children, no elderly, no one with an advanced medical condition. Basically, no one who might be a burden on the community. Oh, they're fascists. It's all about the survival of the fittest. They're fashy. That's how they survived. While the rest of the world went to shit around them. Jesus Christ. Okay, she's basically saying fascism well, works, though. That's weird. When you think about it. What exactly did Crawford do with all these burdens? What happened to them? Well, you met some of them already. Fuck me. Yeah. Anyone who got sick? Anyone too old? Anyone they figured wasn't strong enough to survive. To them, those people were just mouths to feed. A drain on their precious resources. <laughs> Look at their practical results. <laughs> Come on, Chatter. Everyone in Savannah knew. What was going on inside Crawford got passed around like a ghost story. Except this one was true. If you can't bench at least body weight, you die. Bells all over town? Yeah, that would be me. I knew it! Lee, I knew she was the one who'd been following us. Fucking with us. Get that finger out of my face, Grandpa, before I jam it straight up your ass. Bro, she would have made it in Crawford. You. I don't even know who the hell you people are. Calm down, Kenny. The voice on the radio was a guy, remember? Yeah, well, whoever you are, ringing those bells this morning nearly got us all killed. Raise the dead all around us. That's the idea, genius. It's how I get around. I ring a bell in one neighborhood to attract the local geeks towards it. Buys me some time to scavenge the areas they cleared out. Whoa, geeks. geek? The G word? Chill. Grandpa and geek? This is so 2010 coded. I haven't heard somebody say geek in so long. I like, I forgot that word existed entirely. Is that what you call them? Yeah, you know, like at the carnival? They'll eat anything, alive or dead. That's pretty smart with the bells. Doesn't take much to outsmart the dead. Bunch of dumbasses. You just gotta move fast. Get in and out before they start to wander back again. Look, I'm gonna ask you people again. You're not from Crawford, so who the hell are you? What are you doing here? Boats! Came down here looking for a boat. Hoping to get our people out of here and find someplace safe. Yeah, good luck with that. Anyone with a boat took it out of here as soon as people started eating each other. Any that got left behind, Crawford stripped them for parts. Cars, too. There's gotta be something. If there was, do you think I'd still be here? I've been over every inch of this city. This whole place is <laughs> Add the is rogue between. to your party. I would God like to. Damn it! Fuck! Hey, moron. You want to keep your voice down? Bro, we shot a gun. Shit. Since you're not <laughs> getting on any boat, I'd advise you folks to go back to where you came from before... Great. Well. Just great. Great. Well. Just great. Isn't that the... The way we came. Gunshot must have brought him back. Isn't there another way back to the house? Mom, is there a... Well, guess we gotta follow her ass, dude. Oh my god, bro, she's doing parkour. You're just gonna let her go? Hey, you can't just leave us here. Really? Watch. No, please, please don't leave us. Throw the little girl up there. <sighs> Come on, make it fast. She's resourceful. Throw the little girl up there. We'll deal with the rest oh, of it on our me. own. Come on, come on, hurry! Lee, come on! Come on, man. One good jump. 
Oh my god, Kenny, you fucking suck. This is the second time you did this shit to me, Kenny. Dump some bitch. Alright, push it back, push it back, pull it back, pull it back. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, I'm so cooked. Come on, Lee, get your ass out of there. Wait, what? What the hell? Can't get it open. Here, use that to pry it open. God, oh my god, oh my god, they can't come down here, right? Wait, why won't they just fall in here head first? I guess if they fall in here head first, they're gonna fucking break their skulls and die. Oh! Yep, there you go. Clementine, oh my. can you hear me? If you can. Oh my god, bro. Sewer mission? Are you serious? Pre gamed? I mean, I'm a gamer. Can you hear me? Just get back to the house, okay? I'll meet you there. How are you gonna get the fuck out of there? Shit. Just wait him out, bro, and then go back up. That's what you should be doing, but. Built solid. He literally no gave me. Pry that open. She literally gave me her one fucking tool, so. She can't go too far now. Wait, there's a tire down here. What the hell? I'm gonna slip and fall. One hundo P. You have to at this point. Oh wow. No classic slip and fall. Dead rat? Half eaten sewer rats. Walkers must be down here too. I ain't touching that. Last thing I need is some god awful disease. I mean never know. We might might be useful. Might toss them in the way. The free meal, bro. This guy, no no survival instincts. That's what I mean, chat. Like, I would have eaten that rat. I would have eaten the dog food at least. I'd be full right now. I'd have a full belly. A drainage pipe. Oh, I hear zombers. Are there zombers around this fucking corner? Yes, there are. There's no way I can take on all of those things by myself. Looks like some kind of drainage pipe. Wait. If I hit the wrong direction on this bad boy, I'm cooked. Which way, chat? I'm gonna turn it right. Oops. Good thing I'm out here. And there. He's loose. Shit. Should I try the other way around? Maybe I can pry this fucking thing? Oh, there it is. Let's freaking go, son. Come on, daddy. Work with me now. I'm gonna put the gameplay on YouTube, chat. Yes. Uh-oh. Feet don't fail me now. I'm gonna need to take that off. No. I can't take it out. The fuck? Can I close the door behind me? No. That's crazy. I can't. I got a gun, but I don't have enough. I probably don't have enough bullets and shit. Is there one more? There's always one more. Oh, this dumbass didn't move. Oh, it's Chuck. What the fuck? Oh, Chuck. He must have tried to hide out down here. Fuck. Poor bastard. No bullets. He must have saved the last one for himself. You deserve better, old man. We lost the fucking bard, boys. We lost the fucking bard. Dude, my heart is racing right now. No memes. He was a good man. He was the best man. I have to pop it. What the fuck? Oh. Damn it. Fuck you. Easy peasy, baby. No, no, no voices, no nothing. Shit. Bro, that fucking pickaxe is so sick. No way I could pick that up on my own. Wait, really? This is just a fucking broken ladder. What you mean you can't pick it up on your own, bitch ass? Pick up door? Locked. Fucking perfect. I'm not gonna be able to pry these bars with this. How is he gonna be able to fucking pick his body weight up with that thing if he can't even open basic shit? Damn. I can't reach it. Am I gonna be able to... It's just a sign. <laughs> He's like mad at me that I'm... Let's see if it works. Jump up and clamp it. Ah! Oh my god. What the uh, hell? Turns out it's not just a sign, is it? Dumbo. Oh, guess we gotta go in there. Guess we gotta get in the hole. Secret tunnel. That's what we're doing. A Kamas tunnel. Kamas. Must have been one of those old nuclear fallout shelters. Oh my god, is there supplies? Are you for fucking real right now? Bro, it's eat some. To keep people alive for months. Eat some. You gotta eat some, big dog. I mean, come on now. No survival instinct. No survival. Zero survival instinct on this bitch. He's such a bitch. He's, he's not surviving. He's not making it out. Lee, we are not making it out. Oh my god. 
Is this the Crawford family? Who are you? It's all right. It's okay. I, I don't want any trouble. Neither do we. Which is why you'd do well to turn around and leave right now. Nah, they're old. Look, I'm sorry I disturbed you folks. I'll just be going. You can't let him leave. He's from Crawford. If he goes back there and they find out we're down here. Are you from Crawford? They don't lie to me. I'll know. Where else can he be from? Everywhere else around here is dead. I'm not from around here. I'm from Athens. Grew up in Macon. I have a brother in Macon. You were there? How was it? As bad as here? I'm sorry. You can't trust him, Vernon. You can't let him leave. What do you want me to do? Shoot him in the head? Why not? Be more of a mercy than anyone from Crawford ever showed us. Think, Vernon. What do you think they'll do if they find out we're down here, right under their feet? Damn it. You're right. I'm sorry, friend. Can't take the risk. Look, you don't want to do this. Let's talk, okay? What's to talk about? You won't even tell us who you are. My name is Lee. I'm a history professor. And I don't want to die today. And I don't think you want to kill me either. Don't. Don't come any closer. Or I'll shoot. I'll shoot you. I come will. On. Let's just talk about this. He's a whimsical Vernon, old man. What are you man. doing? Shoot him! Nobody needs to get shot. Just take it easy. It's all right. It's okay. Vernon, what the hell are you doing? Vernon! Damn. Crawford boys would have eaten their asses alive, bro. To be honest, bro, the Crawford guys probably should kill them because that's a major L. You gave your gun to a random person that just walked into your secret compound. Like, that's crazy. That's crazy. I took the gun. I got like three guns on me now. Holy shit. I'm like fucking revolver ocelot. I was going to say octagon. You're really not from Crawford? No. Yeah, she can't be that racist. She has a black friend. I'm really not. Well, we are, or were. We got out of there when they started sealing up the place, you know, started weeding out the sick and the old so that perfect survivor society wouldn't be threatened. No room for weakness or vulnerability in their little master race. You don't look that old, so you're sick? We're sick. We're all members of a cancer survivors group that used to meet here at the hospital. We're in remission. But that wasn't good enough for Crawford. They'd already rounded up five of us before the rest of us managed to hole up and hide from them down here. This old basement's been abandoned for years. What is this? The morgue? Yeah. Irony's always high on my list when I'm looking for a place to survive. How did you find your way down here? My group and I were up by the river looking for a boat. Now I just want to get out of here and find them again. Well, that sewer system you came through runs all over the city. It'll take you wherever you want to go. Those sewers are like a damn maze. Any chance you could help me find my way back? Look, I'd like to help you, but we've all got our own problems. Two of our group are sick and need constant care, and I'm the only doctor here. Besides, why should we help you? Damn, lady, you're racist as hell. Look, I'm sorry if I scared you. I just want to get back to my people. Back to Clementine. She's your daughter? Yeah. She's probably already wondering where I am. Well, we can't have that, can I'm we? just lying. Vern, what the hell are I you adopted doing? her. Fuck it. It's all right, no rules. Lee. I had a daughter. Lost her in the first days. I'll be damned if I'll just sit back and let that happen to someone else. We need you here. Don't worry. I'll be back before you know it. Let's go see about your daughter. She is my daughter. Sorry. I'm the father that stepped up, bitch. What do you mean? Why do you make the worst decisions? It's a good decision. It's the truth. This is how I come out as as officially adopting her. Damn, I'm just fucking taking their one doctor away from them. They are so cooked. She's definitely gonna Clementine? die. Clem? Did they never come back? Oh, they did. Molly? Oh, hey, you made it back. Who's this? He didn't tell you about me? Understandable, I guess. I'm the one who put that beating on him when he tried to jump me back at the river. Who's the fossil? Chill, bro. You sound a lot like Clementine, dude. This is Vernon. He's a doctor. He helped me get back here after we got separated. I think you have something that belongs to me. That shit was so useful. Bro, there is no way she's just gonna fucking hookshot her way out of here. She's just gonna leave. Lee, thank God you're back. Krista, what's wrong? It's Omid. He's gotten worse. Much worse. We have a man wounded. Who's this? This is Vernon. He's a doctor. Oh, thank God. Could you take a look at him? You have to help us. Please. 
Where the fuck is Clementine? Or why don't I give a shit? I'll see all what of a I sudden. can do. Take me to him. Doctor, I got a disease. It's called the top of the hour ad break, and the only cure is a three minute ad. The only cure a five dollar a month subscription. I fucked it up. Yeah. You guys are about to get Ligma. Aiden ten ten. Shut the fuck up, Aiden. I fumbled it. I fumbled the bag. Oh me, honey. You're gonna be all right. <sighs> Lee brought a doctor. All right, let's take a look at him. I work better without an audience. Uh, why don't you go find your little girl? Clementine. Clementine? This is a big ass house, bro. It's like my my my mansion. Clementine, you in here? Where is she? I gotta loot a little bit while I'm in here, you know what I mean? Clementine? Come on now. Come on now. He's a cannibal too, calling Clem, it. Bro, you have no those drawings. But where oh my is she? god. <laughs> that drawing is ass, dude. Don't see her anywhere out there. Uh, no walkers either, though. Clem. Everything okay in there? We're fine. Just leave us alone and let the doctor work. That moan was weird, bro. I thought he was... I thought that was Kenny jerking it. You hear? I'm not even kidding. I thought it was Kenny cranking it in there. <laughs> Damn, this bathroom's got a... That. Bathroom's got a room in and of itself? That's crazy. Hello? Those shared bathrooms what are you doing? suck. Oh, you know, just poking around. You won't find anything. We already searched the place. You'd be surprised what people miss. Trust me, I've been doing this for a while. Moaning Where's while jerking it is crazy. Don't what? I got me. oil on my cheaper. shit right now. I'm stroking my shit Do so I look hard. like I'm in the mood to be jerked around? Where did she go? Last I saw, she was downstairs with your redneck friend and that college kid who hangs around with him. Why don't you go bug them? College kid? Isn't Ben like 16? I don't care about that. I just want to find Clementine. Bro, chill. It's good to fucking loot a little bit, you know what I mean? She called Kenny a redneck, which is valid, to be honest. Clementine? You up there? Shit. Where could she be? Am I gonna see the dude outside again? Don't see her out there. Clem? Why is this so Clementine? unnecessarily tense, bro? Clementine! Come out! Please! Kenny? Oh, hey, you made it back. Good job. Good job. What the hell do you think you're doing? What does it look like? Where'd you get the bottle? Found it. First good thing that's happened since... Hey, take it easy. Think you've had enough. To hell with you! Getting wasted's not gonna help anyone. Yeah? Well, what is? We are fucked! Bro, you're being Molly, real lateral right now. there's not a single boat left in Savannah. No way out. Bro, the boat thing... Okay, here's what it is. He was clinging out of the boat thing after his family died because, like, he wanted to focus on one goal and one goal only. And then once that goal was obviously, it, it, it became something that is not accomplishable. He's just, like, falling apart. I know I'd like the joke about how it's like, oh, he just loves, he's just a boatist, a boat autist. And not being in the, the vicinity of boats causes him great distress. I think that's what it is. It's all coming, crashing down right now. He's just, like, being reminded of the fact that, you know, his wife killed herself and his son got domed by me right in front of him where I one framed him, obviously, as he was turning into a zombo. I'm still proud of that. They call me Quick Draw McGraw, baby. We got walkers all around us, that crazy fuck on the radio messing with us. Hell, if now ain't the time for a drink? Bro, where the fuck is Clementine, have though? Have you seen Clementine? Damned if I know. Gotta be around here somewhere. Ben, I gave you one job when I left here. Take care of Clementine. Then she shows up out on River Street looking for me. What the hell happened? Hey, don't put all that on me. Omid took a turn for the worse, and Krista asked me to help. I'm sorry, I'm doing the best I can here. She was frantic, and things got kinda crazy. I told Clementine to stay put. What else could I do? Don't be sorry. Just tell me where the hell she is now. I what? think she went out to play in the backyard. On her own, with no one watching her. Bro, Man, will you get off my back? She's fine out there. Bro, I'm ass. going to fucking kill you, dude. I'm gonna go find her, and then I'm going to kill you. Oh my god, Clementine? I'm so mad. Clementine. The dude took her. One hundo p. The stalker took her. What the hell happened back here? Doors covered in vines. Don't think anyone came in through there. It's like remarkable how incompetent he is. She in the doghouse? She does like crawling into little places. Bro, where the fuck is this girl? God damn it. Is she in the bushes? Oh my god. 
Oh my god, this is giving me anxiety. Wait, can I go through here at all? Like, we opened the vent. I'm so stressed. Wait, she's not back here. I tried everything. Right? Look at the vent again. What the? That's it? I'm just pacing around this fucking backyard. Go in the shed? I can't, bro. There's vines in the... Oh! The door just moved. The door's covered in vines. I don't think anyone came in through there. Zomber? Zomber? Oh my god. Hey. What were you doing in there? Exploring? And look! Look what I found! God damn it, Clementine. You have to stop wandering off. I don't want to yell at you, but sometimes a little bit of stern parenting is necessary, I think, right? Oh my god, she found a boat. That's crazy. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Whoa. I know, right? I almost cursed in front of Clem. How are you gonna boat while drunk? Just kidding. That's a fucking joke. He's Floridian. This is the only way these motherfuckers boat. Clemming goat. True. It's Clemming time. Bro, I swear to God, Clementine has in her pinky, in her pinky nail, more useful skills than 1,000 bends. Okay? I mean, it's just shocking how useless this dumb fucking. Bro, if this game came out in 2024, you know Ben would have the broccoli hair. Okay? You know they would have put that broccoli hair shit up on that. He would be a kick watcher. He would be an Aiden Ross subscriber. Talking on God for real, for real. Just fucking objectively useless. Ben is simply not an asset, but a burden. Crazy. Old Meat's doing okay? As well as can be expected under the circumstances. I did what I could for him. Cleaned out the wound, but he's got a real infection. Running a fever. Without antibiotics, I... Will you quit pacing? You're making everyone nervous. Why are you even still here? Hey, if your friend really can get that boat working, you're taking me with you as payment for saving your asses. I figure that's fair enough, don't you? She's useful. Well, you want the good news or the bad news? Let's get the bad news out of the way first. Bad news is, she's not taking us anywhere the shape she's in right now. Gas tank's empty and the battery's dead. So what's the good news? That's salvageable. That's, it. That's all she needs. Some gas and a battery. Other than that, she's good to go. Well, how are we supposed to get that stuff? Sounds like Crawford is the one place that has everything we need. Maybe we should try there. Now hold on a minute. Surely we have to try? If there are people left in- Crawford is the one place that has everything we need. Maybe we should try there. Now hold on a minute. Surely we have to try? If there are people left in this city who are still alive, who still have supplies, what harm can it do to ask? Trust me, you don't know these people. I do. You showing up with a wounded man? Might as well put a noose around his neck. They don't exactly welcome children with open arms either. What the hell kind of a place are we talking about here? The worst kind? But I don't see what other choice we have. And just how exactly do you figure we do this? Because I know. from what I've heard, that place ain't exactly friendly to outsiders. I know. We negotiate. Are you ready for this? We give them Ben. He's young. He looks like he's able-bodied. They won't know. We sell Ben to them. And guess what? Win-win. Because Ben inevitably will cause societal collapse. Crawford's over. Cancer patients end up taking over Crawford. Win, win, win. We negotiate with them like civilized people. We must have something they'd be interested in taking in trade. Negotiate? With Crawford? Once again, I have to remind you. You have no idea what these people are like. They'll take what they want, and then decide whether or not to let any of you live. So what? No one has any ideas? There might actually be a way. I know the sewer system that runs beneath Crawford like the back of my hand. Y'all wouldn't happen to have a map by any chance. Yeah, actually. I think I could lead us through so we could pass under the perimeter and right into the center where they keep their supplies. We come up right underneath them, take them by surprise, grab what we need, and get out before they even knew what hit them. Okay, that's not bad. That's better. I've thought about it before, just never had the people to do it. But I think if we all work together, we could pull it off. And what do you want in return for all this help you're giving us? Crawford doesn't just have what you need for your boat. They're also well stocked with medical supplies. Medicine that my people could use, just as yours could. We can do this. We have to. So, 
It's decided then. We're going to Crawford. Anyone else have a problem with this plan? Because we're gonna need every one of us to pull this off. Man, I don't know. I don't know about you, kid, but I'd rather take a chance on doing something than just sitting around here waiting to die. That boat out there is an answered prayer. Sucks. Just gotta push a little bit farther. Are you in or out? We should go tonight, under cover of dark. I'll go let my people know, give you all a chance to prepare. I'll be back before midnight. Be careful. That's how I'm still alive. I fucking hate Ben so much. I think my my idea was the best I idea. You to stay in your room. How long have you been there? Is it going to be dangerous? It's what gonna be dangerous? Crawford. I can't lie to you, Clem. Yeah, it's gonna be dangerous. But it's the only way to get the things we need to make Omi better and get the boat working. That's why we have to do this. Do you understand? I don't want anyone else to die. Maybe Ben. No one else is gonna die. I promise. You can't promise that. Damn, she knows. That's cold, bro. She's like eight years old. And she already fucking knows. That's crazy to me. No, I guess I can't. Sorry. Take the I L, Lee. should go get ready. Uh, say what now? You said you'd need all of us to do this. And you said I'm a big help, remember? Molly said Crawford is the only place left in Savannah that still has people. That means it must be where my mom and dad are, right? I don't think I'll find them in Crawford, Sweet Pea. Why not? Because they're good people. And Crawford is a bad place run by bad people. I don't think they would have stayed in a place like that. How do you know they're good if you've never met them? Oh my God. Bro, she's owning me. She's literally fucking destroying me in the marketplace of ideas, bro. That's it. I'm taking her little ass with me, dude. Fuck it. She's too damn smart for her own damn good. Okay? It's like, actually, that's a logical fallacy, dad. They raised you, didn't they? Double logic. Can't I come with you? Should I bring her? Okay, you can come. But you have to promise to stay quiet and do exactly what you're told the whole time we're there. Okay, I'm gonna go get ready. Fuck it, YOLO mode. Bro, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not leaving her behind with Ben again. Okay? Yeah. I would much rather, I would rather take her into the genocidal fascist state of Crawford than fucking leave her behind with dumbass Ben. This is not happening. Straight up. Ben will get her killed. One hundo P. I leave her behind with stupid ass Ben. Ben's going to be like, oh, I thought it would be cool to play with the zombies. I didn't understand that they eat brains. You know what I mean? Check out what I found in the garage. Hatchet, hacksaw, some other tools. Might come in handy on this little break in. Nice. Can I talk to you a minute? You'd be like, bro, bro, lay off me, okay? I didn't realize zombies eat baby brains. Like, lay off me. What's up? I took another look at the boat. She's a 30-footer. So? So, we're gonna have a capacity problem. Assuming everyone makes it back alive, there ain't gonna be room for everyone. Say what no more, fam. Ben's say? dead. Just giving you... Say no more, fam. Ben is so dead. I'm killing him myself. Well, Don't worry. All. Thought you ought to know. Who the hell is this? This is Bree. She can help us. Good. How? We're gonna need all the help we can get. I was a student at the school where Crawford keeps their supplies. I know the layout. Then what are we waiting for? Let's get moving. <laughs> How is kind of ruthless. How is such a ruthless ass response? Hold up just a sec. You ready? Ready. Hey, whoa, hold on a minute. You're not taking her with us. Did you not hear anything I said about the kind of place Crawford is? If you take her in there and they find her... I'm not leaving her alone in the house with only Omi to protect her. It's just not happening. For what it's worth, I don't think it's a great idea either. She's coming. Deal with it. You heard the man. Let's move out. Omega lol mid. Bro, close the fucking boat gate. Oh my god, these people are so dumb. No survival skills, bro. How did you make it this far? Close the fucking gate with the boat in it so you're not... It. We're right underneath the center of Crawford. The old school should be directly above us. Okay, people. This is it. Left the light the on. We stay quiet. We stay hidden. And we stay together. We find what we need, and we get the hell... Chat, quick tip. When you want to do a sneaking mission, it's good to have all the old people, men, women, children. You, you would... That's what you got to do. Why, you might ask. It's to toss as many 
is to toss as many people in the direction of gunfire. Before anyone even knows we're there. Got it. And that part about staying close that goes double for you. It's called bait. Can't get a good look above with the cover on. Bro, we open it and they're right on top of us. That'd be really funny. They're like, we've been waiting for you. Let's go. Where is everybody? There should be guards patrolling. What? Are you disappointed? It's just strange is all. I think I see one over there by the door. Okay. Me and Kenny will sneak up, try to take him out quiet. The rest of you wait for our signal, then follow it's us. It's quiet. Over. Too Everybody quiet. Got it? Okay, Kenny, let's do this quiet. No shooting unless there's no other choice. Kenny is right so gung-ho. Kenny one hundo P. The fuck? Bro, there's zombies in what here. What the fuck is a walker doing inside here? Get inside, I'm fast! Bro, I don't think they have any more people left in Crawford. I'm going to keep it above 50. I think fascism turned into the mindless zomber virus that it already was, even when they were alive, if you know what I mean. Shocked to find out that fascists failed. Fuck. Do you think they saw us? I don't think so. I think we're good. For now, at least. What the hell happened here? I thought this place was supposed to be secure. What always happens, I guess. In the end, the dead always win. Oh man, we are so screwed. No, this is good. Vernon's right. We can deal with walkers easier than armed guards. I agree. So long as we don't let them box us in, we can still do this. The plan hasn't changed. The plan hasn't changed? Every time walkers show up, the plan changes. Do you even have any idea how many of them are out there? No. You want to do a head count? Or do you want to get what we need and get the hell out of here? Come on, I think I know which way to head. Where the fuck's Clem, by the way? Oh, she's behind. Okay, good. I got a God. bad feeling about this. God, I can't wait to fucking sacrifice Ben. Please. These games never let you fucking sacrifice who you want to sacrifice. It always gives you the tough choices, like... Except for when I kill Duck. Hmm, I wonder what's behind this boarded up door. Just keep moving. Here. Looks okay. Everybody Don't zombies in. open inside. Oh, that must mean that there are no zombies in there and we should open it to see what's inside. <laughs> Figures. Well, somebody's got to have the keys on them. Looks like they were using this room as some kind of command center. Hamas. Hamas command center. Okay, so now what? They're Where all babies. As you can see, Hamas was using this Scooby-Doo drawing to show that they are interested in killing the Jewish dogs. Only Jewish dogs will be murdered. They hate the Jews. They hate, they don't like uh, not Muslim dogs. They love Muslim dogs. Here. There is a copy of Mein Kampf annotated. Do not say that I brought it in myself. What about the medicine? Oh, fuck. I fucking, right I was too busy Nurses memeing. Station. They were using it as a medical facility. How do you know that? Just makes sense, doesn't it? Oh, uh, oh. Uh. Where can we find some fuel for the boat? That's interesting. There's a maintenance shed across from the playground here. If they were storing fuel, that's probably where it'll be. So then we just need a battery. This auto shop. It's right next door. Yep, it's called Herman's. You can't miss it. Okay, I'll make the run to the... This is why you can't trust blonde women, okay? The maintenance shed for the fuel. It'll be faster if I go with you. I can take you right to it. I'll come too. No, two people's enough. You stay here, see if you can use any of those tools we brought to get that armory door open. We might need to shoot our way out of here. I'll go for the medicine. I'll come with you. I know what to take. Okay. Guess that leaves me to go find us a battery. I'll go with you. Watch your back. Okay, we've got a plan. Everyone be careful. Stay close to one another. We'll all meet back here. Good luck. You also can't trust people who do parkour. I agree. What about me? What can I do? I need you to stay here with Ben and watch over our command center. Oh, no. Bro, I literally didn't want to leave her behind because I didn't want to leave her with Ben. And now she's staying with Ben. Oh, hell no, Lee. Come on. There's got to be an option for me to fix this fucking thing. There's no shot. I ain't leaving her with Ben, bro. I might as well have left her with Omid. Like, come on, dude. Anybody but Benny boy. Ben sucks. Yeah, look at her face. She's like, Lee. Lee. Okay. <laughs> You're leaving me with Ben? I'm not leaving <laughs> you with Ben. I'm leaving him with you. Understand? 
Oh, Bro, even she face. knows. Back before you know it. Even she knows. Even she knows it's a bad idea. It's a big mistake. The Georgia state flag. A lot of history there. Not that it matters much now, I guess. Nothing but crayons and construction paper. Or you can use that. Fuel is at the maintenance shed. Medicine might be at the nurse's office. And a battery would probably be at the auto shop out through here. If we're gonna find medicine anywhere, that would be the place to look. Bree said the entrance to the auto shop was in the alleyway by this fire escape. Okay, chat. Look at this map while I go pee. Memorize it, okay? I'm gonna ask you guys for... I'm gonna ask you guys... I'm gonna quiz you on it. All right, chat. Are you guys? Do you have your notes ready? The fuel's in a shed across from the playground. It's just outside the stairwell. Hopscotch. Creepy. Might come back for these later. Any reading material would be nice once we get on that boat. No power. No TV. Looks like they had quite a system here. Crawford's final solution. Damn. Nazi shit. Number of citizens brought to Crawford, number of walkers found, days since outbreak, initials of a person conducting search, number of ineligible citizens found. Oh my god. They were methodical. Have to wonder what's going on in the rest of the world. Just a bunch of paste. China would be fine. China would have this shit locked down. Looking at what happened with COVID, honestly, China would have had this shit locked down in a minute. They would have executed like half the fucking population. And they would have been locked the fuck down. Must be the guy who ran this place. Looks like he figured himself as some kind of supreme leader. Nothing in there. The alleyway to the auto shops down here. You coming or not? Are you fucking yelling so much? Chill, dude. Shell casings all over. Whatever happened here, it wasn't good. Jesus Christ, that scared the shit out of me. They've already been fired. They're worthless. I'm such a looter. I was gonna. Too bad I don't know the combination to any of these. This must be the door to the alleyway where the auto shop is. But where the hell is Molly? I'm gonna open up the logger and see Ben in there. Someone shoved Molly, him. You out here? Bro, Molly is sus as hell, dude. Guess I'm not going that way. Auto shop must be down this way. I think. Oh! Was that Molly? Herman's. This is the place I'm looking for. I think that was Molly or a Zomber chat. Bro, I hate these fucking angles, I swear to God. Fuck. Wait, is this the right Where am I going? How do I Well climbing the fence isn't an option? What the fuck do I do now? Damn. Get on the shed roof, maybe? No. Nope. Useless? Bro, what do you mean? I went into the shed, there's nothing in there. Oh. Okay, well. Maybe there is something in there. It's gonna break. Oh wow, it didn't break. How the fuck do we get back though? That's the real question. Also, where the fuck is Molly? Must be the entrance to that auto shop where Bree said we'd find that battery. Where the fuck is Molly, bro? Better not get too close. Game's running 144 piece. Damn, it's jammed tight. Sure would love some help from Molly right about now. Molly, dearest. Come on. Leave him! He's mine. Where the hell have you been, Molly? What? I think you got it. One more! Ugh, for luck! He's wearing medical scrubs. Some kind of scientist or doctor, maybe? Yeah, well, he ain't shit now! Did you find us a way in? Yeah, but the garage door's jammed. Can't raise it. Not a problem. Look what I found. Oh, yeah. That'll work. Oh, Zombers. Zomberinos. Oh, come on, bro. Why are they so resourceful? In the worst moments, too. Bro, go push the fucking thing back. What are you doing? Just go push the fence back up. That's so dumb. Oh, you have to have a QTE moment. You know what I mean? Have to do it to him. Have to have a QTE moment, chat. Wait, he didn't actually kill the fucking Zomberino? Bro, ain't no way. Take a look around. I'll make sure no stragglers get under this door. The blinking must be an anti-theft system. Good chance of a working battery being in that car. If I can find a way to get up there. And a good chance it's going to be loud as shit. Looks like Crawford had their own semi-trucks. No battery. Or the battery's dead. That's a battery. Well, I can see where the battery should be. But it's not. <sighs> Is that not a battery up there, chat? Look at this. That's a battery. Battery should be. But it's not. <sighs> 
Is that not a battery up there, chat? Look at this. That's a battery. Let's talk to Molly about what she just did. Something you need? What do you think happened to Crawford? Don't know, don't care. As far as I'm concerned, these fuckers got what was coming to them. Not a lot of sympathy for all the people who died here, huh? I have about as much for them as they did for the sick and the old and anyone else they didn't think was fit to belong in their little paradise. So yeah, fuck them. What was all that about back there? He came at me up on that rooftop, tried to take a bite out of me, so I took care of business. What, you got a problem with me killing geeks? No, it just seemed like you went to town on him a little more than you needed to. Hey, you never really know when those things are all the way dead. I was just making sure. Look, you want to get this battery or not, time's wasting. So why did you decide to help us? I told you. I'm expecting a ride on that boat once that hillbilly friend of yours has got it running. You sure that's all of it? You want to keep interrogating me, or do you want to get the damn battery and get out of here? I'm going to have a look around. You do. I, I do want to keep interrogating you, actually. I'm genuinely interested in hearing your story. Apologies for caring about what women have to say, I guess. For the lift hydraulics. Fuck. More of Crawford's rules. How did anybody live like this? I'd rather take my chances on the outside. Yeah, well, they're also fascists, bro. It's locked. No way in. Oh, I'm so worried about this fucking car. I can't reach it up there. I'm gonna put it down and it's gonna start blinking, dude. No power. Wait. Don't think I can pry that hose apart with just my hands. Maybe if I had something to cut it with. Bro, there's not anything else going on here. What the fuck am I supposed to do? You got a fucking knife in that backpack? Something you need? Think I can borrow that uh, hook thing of yours? I don't know. Hilda and I have been through a lot together. Hilda? That's what I call her. Don't judge. Please, can I borrow Hilda? I'll take good care of her. She won't get a scratch. I got your promise now. Not a scratch. I did it. Whoa, whoa! I fucking called That's it. probably not good. No shit! I'll try to hold him off. Hurry! There's the battery. Finally something goes right. Is negative first or positive first? That doesn't matter, right? Still attached to the terminals. Got that one off. It's off. Got it. Yeah, but we still got a problem here. Put it in here. I'll carry it. Okay, follow me. Bro, ain't no fucking way. Move your ass! Look at the Confederate flag! Great, now what? Skylight. It's shut. Shoot it out! You gonna leave me down here by myself? This ice pick shit is okay, insane. So now Bro. Roof. Do you it took down Trotsky. You know what I mean? Think about that. The, it can take out political dissidents and shit. You know what I mean? Ever stop complaining? Come on. Well, how am I gonna do that? Come on, what are you, chicken? Jump! I don't know, man. That's crazy. Come on! She's, later. She is... Something I gotta do first. What? She's ten times Catch the man later. Kenny what? never was, the by the way. Yeah, I think I'll hold on to it. Make sure you don't leave without me. See you back in class. Molly! God damn it, what the hell is she doing? Every single time Kenny has tried to hold me up like that, he's failed. Every single time Molly's done it, she... Oh my god, I thought that was Zombers. Do you guys need any help? Thanks, but I think we're almost in. We're taking care of it, Lee. Don't worry. Can't open it without the combination. I bet I can find the combo here somewhere. No! Little help here! Hey, do something! Pop that skull, baby. We got it! Break the door with something! Again. Again. Did that hold? Damn well better. There's so many of them. You got the fuel. Let's not start high-fiving each other just yet. Let's get the hell back to the classroom. Give us a hand with these fuel cans. They weigh a goddamn ton. And they're the strongest zombies, too, because, like, they were genetically... They did some eugenics, you know what I mean? You're back. Yeah, and we made out pretty good, too. Great work, Kenny. How you doing with that door? Not so good. Here, let me give you a hand. Did you get that battery yet? Yeah, Molly has it. She should be back here soon. She'd better be. Bree? Hey, Lee. Thanks for all your help back there. I don't think we would have made it without you. No problem. We're all on the same team. So you're a cancer survivor, like Vernon and the others. 
Yeah. We've been hatching behind us so silly at hers. I know. They need to put like treatment ever since. Just when I was starting. The fact that they don't there's like wood panels everywhere. Take out the fucking hatchet and put a goddamn wood panel or a steel pipe in its place. What the fuck are we doing here? When they get better, when I thought there might be some hope. All this happened. Lost my whole family. I'm the only one who survived. Funny how things work out, huh? We could literally she gotta save the hostages, uh, Ribbon. Um, she, we, we literally used a hatchet to break that fucking door down that Ben is unable to open. How long have you known Vernon? Couple of years. He ran our support group. He was really great helping me come to terms with my disease. But how do you come to terms with something like this? With a place like Crawford? I don't know what I or, or the other survivors would have done without Vernon. He's the one who held us together, kept us alive. What do you think about this whole Crawford situation? Sexo? No, dude. Come on. Too many awful memories. Even being back here gives me a bad feeling. Even now, with everyone dead? I got no sympathy for what happened to these people. They weeded out the sick and the old. Even children. Those least able to defend themselves so that they could save their own skins. Whatever happened here, however Crawford fell, I consider it poetic justice. Damn, girl, that's cold. It's how I feel. If you'd seen what I seen, you'd feel the same. I'm a little busy here, Lee. Maybe you should go get that battery or help with the medicine. Okay. You just used me like a cum rag. She just trauma dumped on me and then fucking was like, all right, get the fuck out of here. Leave me alone. Okay, Clem. Yeah, this desk is just like the ones we have in my school. I know it's weird, but I kind of miss it being in school. Me too. I used to be a teacher, remember? Tell you what. When we find ourselves a safe place, set up a little classroom. Just you and me. Will there be homework? No homework. Where's There's an home? allegory that schools fascism. She'll be back soon. Allegory that schools are prisons. Okay. She'll be fine. She's pretty tough. Do you Panopticon. think things will ever be normal again? Just like the way they were before? The word? I don't know if that's the right word. I forgot what she said. Yeah. It may take a while, but yeah, I do. Don't you? I hope so. That's good. You hold on to that hope. It's the one thing none of this can take away. Dude, what do we still need? We already got the fuel and the battery. Once we find some medicine, we'll be good to go. So where's this battery you found? Molly has it. She ran off to do something. Well, she'd better bring it back here. I don't know why you trusted that girl with it. We hardly know her. Kenny, she, she saved, saved my life. life, didn't she? She saved my <laughs> life more times yeah. than you did, bitch ass. She saved my life in, like, the identical scenarios where you have failed, okay, multiple times. Molly, in my opinion, Molly, in my opinion, is on is is good in my book. She's A-okay. Is it effing a little bit? What's happening? It's not effing on my end. What the hell's going on? Only good thing Kenny did was fuck up in defending me and not shoot Molly. Yeah, but what has she done for me lately? No, wait. There is something you can help me with. Something that's been on my mind. I could use your opinion. What is it? It's Kenny. Since I've been helping him work on the boat, I've gotten to know him a little better. He's a good guy, you know? And it's eating me up knowing what I know. I've been oh my god. Him the truth. Ben, come on. This again? It's my fault Duck and Katja got killed. If I hadn't screwed up back at the motor inn, they'd still be alive. How am I supposed to just carry something? Bro, he's just yelling right behind him. And it's crazy because it's like... Dude, dude, you haven't brought anything to the table since you got here. You have just fucked up over and over and over again. It's so fucking stupid that you think Kenny's going to have any, like you, you haven't built any social capital. Like that around. I have to tell him. Ben, no offense, but have you lost your motherfucking mind? <laughs> Kenny's barely hanging on. You tell him you're to blame? But think about it. I know. I've thought about that, but I don't know how much longer I can keep looking him in the eye. I feel like I'm lying to him by not telling him. I'm telling you, man, it's a bad idea. Real, real bad. Hey, maybe you're okay walking around with somebody's blood on your hands, but that's not who I am. Okay, you Ben. Just pretend it never Go happened. tell him. Look, we need Kenny. We need him to hold his shit together if we're ever gonna get out of here. Fuck so it, dude. Go tell him. Yourself, for the good of everyone. You hear me? I can't wait to leave him off the boat, dude. It's going to be so sick. You. I'm going to tell Kenny. I'm going to get back to this. I'm going to literally tell Kenny. I'm going to tell I'm going to tell Kenny right as we're about to get on the boat. 
All right, what the fuck do we do now? Damn, don't you feel kind of bad for Ben? Fuck no. There's a hole. This place definitely has some major damage. Sounds like there's a shit ton of walkers out there. Yeah, it doesn't sound like it. It looks like it too, bro. There's got to be a way to take this fucking pole and put it in its place, dude. Come on. Molly, you there? Where am I going? Like, I, I, I just, I guess I'm waiting for Molly, right? Shit. Oh, fuck. Kristen Vernon must be trapped in there. Bro, I shouldn't be shooting these motherfuckers, dude. How am I going to fucking pop them? Thank God I got fucking Deadeye up in this bitch, dude. I am so good. Who are you pointing your gun to? What the hell happened? They wandered into the hallway after we got inside. I think they must have heard us rooting around in here. The whole place is infested. They're everywhere. Calm down. I took care of them. What about the mids? Did we find what we need? Yeah, that's our other problem. Take a look. That's, what, that's why they call me the Turkish Tata. Looks like they were keeping all the prescription meds in that safe. Locked up tight. There's no way we can bust it open? Maybe with enough time, but I don't know how much of that we have. Be a hell of a lot quicker if we just knew the four-digit combination. Ain't nobody saying that? Dude, everyone is calling me that. That's crazy that you said that. We should just try busting it open. We don't have any other choice. Okay, you get started. I'll take a look around, see if I can find anything useful. But to take time to rest later, I think. Come on, bro. There's got to be some notes. Copy machine, but it matters with no power around it. Just a bunch of papers. Oh, we'll fuck. Combination, though. Well, that was my... That was it for me. Not working. That's it, bro. I tried my best, okay? Phones probably haven't worked in months. Looks like some kind of medical file. It's probably Molly's. Anna Correa. Guess she must have been a patient here. And what's this? How's it coming? Slow. Too slow. I'm worried <coughs> that by the time we manage to get this thing open, it may be too late. Molly helped me get the battery we needed. That's great. One down. Where is she? She took off. Had some kind of errand she needed to run. Took off? With the battery? Yeah. Don't worry. She'll be back. I hope so. That girl doesn't really strike me as a team player. More the mercenary kind. How much time do you think Omid has, Doc? You want my medical opinion? The sooner we get him some strong antibiotics to start fighting that infection, the better. Let's just leave it at that, huh? Hey, Doc, uh, I just wanted to thank you for coming with us and for all your help. I really appreciate it. Bro, imagine she takes the battery to the boat like these. We've and just fucking leaves with the boat. Most, right? And we're no better than those Crawford sons of bitches. I heard that. I'll go see if I can find something that'll help us get that safe open. I know she doesn't have Good the idea. gas, but she's resourceful, you know what I mean? Uh, how much you want to bet the clock stopped ticking? And it's the, whatever the clock number is, that is actually the, that is actually the code. But, uh, but it's in between fucking one and two, so I don't even know. Nah, that'd be too easy. I don't think that's it, but. Wait, what the hell? No tape inside. Vernon, Krista, come look at this. This is day 82 since the outbreak. 1547. Dr. Logan in consultation with patient Anna Correa. Why are you recording this? Oh, he's the rapist. Oberson has ordered me to keep records of all medical examinations. He's a rapist doctor. I need you to brace yourself, Anna. The sonogram confirms that you're pregnant. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. As you know, the rules are very clear. The termination is mandatory. You don't have to tell them. Tell them it was just nausea. But you gave me something for it and it went away. This is my problem, not yours. If Oberson finds out that I could seal evidence of a pregnancy, I'm sorry, but the He's an abortion doctor. Oh my god. The doctor's a Democrat. Oh my god, this is the future liberals want, bro. This is literally this is it. This is full tilt fascism. This is Joe Brandon's America. Oh my god. That's why Molly killed him. These are the rules. I'm gonna give you a sedative. It'll make the procedure easier on you. Wait, what is it? I don't want the procedure. I want Fuck. my face. I can't do this. Shut up, dumbass. Yeah, you don't have a choice. Let him hit the numbers. Now, if you like, you can take some time with this. But I need you to come back no later than tomorrow. Or I'll have no choice but to inform Oberson myself. I'm sorry. Oh my god, you're so stupid. You're so stupid. Bro. Bro, we were so close, dude. Damn it. We almost had it. What the hell kind of place was this? Like Molly said, the worst kind. Lee, maybe there's another tape. We gotta keep looking. I think I recognize that doctor. He was Am one I of the crazy? walkers out in the alley by the <laughs> auto. Okay, 
am I actually crazy? Or is that the only valid protocol that they were, that they had, which was like forcing an abortion? Cause like, yeah, the killing of the children stuff is crazy, but it's like, yeah, bro, you probably should fucking not have a child in the middle of a zomber apocalypse. You know what I mean? The fuck, especially in that circumstance. I don't know. Why the fuck do you want to bring a child to a zombie apocalypse? That is low key. Oh my God. I'm agreeing with the Joe Brandon fascist, dude. Oh my God. That's it. That's, that's why I'm a Democrat. That's why I'm a God dang Democrat folks. You already know. You already know, baby. That's why I enforce the abortion of the top of the hour ad break to you an actual abortion. But if you want to abort the top of the hour ad break, all you need to do is subscribe baby for $5 or for free. You can use the baby as a distraction while you run away. Very confused MB. Thank you for the 10 tier one gifted subs. Allowing 10 people to no longer see the ads at the top of the hour. Allowing them to abort their own fucking babies. Cutie Hassan Rella. Thank you for the five. What a username. Thank you for the five. Get the subs. Here's the three right now. Maybe you should search it. See what he's got on him. Oh, fuck. I can't go back out there. There's a hell of zombies out there. Watch tape. Yeah, no. I'm good, son. What's this on the floor? It's a sonogram. There's dried blood on this printout on the floor. Looks like a trail of it from the safe to the camera over there. Then out the door. What the hell happened here? Y'all already checked these drawers? Yes, Lee. Nothing in there worth taking. Looks pretty sturdy. <laughs> Shoot it. Maybe we're gonna force that open. We might be able to find something to pry it open, but it'll take time. We don't have time. Omid needs that medicine. We have to get it open now. Hey, Krista. Yeah? I hope I did the right thing bringing Clementine with us. This place isn't exactly safe. Then why did you? Because leaving her alone with Omi didn't seem any safer. What's that supposed to mean? No it means your man's about to die. Omi's pretty sick. If he dies with Clementine alone in the house with that her... That is not going to happen. Do you hear me? That is not going to happen. We're going to get these meds to Omid, and he's going to be fine. He's going to be fine. You're right. I'm sorry. Dude, everyone is on the uh, on the Lulu levels. With the safe? No, without the combination, I don't know how we're gonna get this damn thing open. If we don't get back to Omid with some medicine soon, it's okay. We'll figure it out. Are you feeling okay? I'm fine. Why are you asking me that? It's just that you've been looking a little pale the past couple of days. You've been throwing up. Oh you... come on! You just dug up a rotting dog carcass. I'm surprised we weren't all throwing. Bro, up. he's about to pull the fucking. I'm fine. Quit. He's about to pull the Brandon's America Democrat move and get her to abort the baby that she's definitely about, carrying. Okay? Worry about Omid. We've got to get him these meds. Look, He's preggers too. I just want to get back to Omid. Let me do my thing, all right? Okay. She pregante, dude. She's freaking pregante, brother. Wait, can I take the camera? Oh, no, you can't. Look at this fucking zombie bloodbath that I just engaged in. What is that noise? How the fuck am I going to get back? There's hella zombies in there too, no? Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god, bro! Kick him in the fucking head! Oh shit! The shelf is definitely breaking. Like 100 P this time. Okay, still not breaking. Where the hell did he go? Oh, I'm so scared. This is definitely the guy. Bro has tune force? What does that mean? Yeah, how about you get a Bordeaux? Dumbass. How do you like it? This might be just what we need. No. What's this? Looks like some kind of code. But Vernon said the safe combination. Oh, that's for the fucking hours. bloody hand thing. Shit. Time to go. How am I gonna get back? I just skedaddled on back. Wait, are there more zombers? This must have been his locker. Wait. Thirteen. Safe combination has gotta be on one of these. Tune for is when you can cause surroundings to exhibit cartoon like found physics. Two more oh. tapes. One of them is dated October 10th. That's the day after the first one we watched. Put it in. Found physics? Two more oh. tapes. One of them is dated October 10th. That's the day after the first one we watched. Put it in. Have you made a decision? I thought you said I didn't have a choice. Well, technically you do. You can terminate the pregnancy or leave Crawford. Of course, that would be a death sentence for both you and your unborn child. Maybe that's best. I stayed up all last night thinking about this. Bro, that's crazy. Why are we crazy. even trying to survive? To keep on living, if this is what it takes. If this is what it's turned us into. That's crazy. Rules, Hannah. 
Doctor, I'm begging you, please help me. Maybe one day when things are different. Bro, I really thought this doctor was a rapist. Turns out he's just doing abortions. Like, <laughs> that's the evil villain in Molly's world. What the hell's going on? Okay, don't I'm spoil it, obviously. Again, but for now, today, we have to do this. Okay, what's the code? Bitch ass. Seven, two, fuck! <laughs> Bro. No. Are you for fucking no. real? Be for fucking real. What the hell's the code? I didn't even get to see it. I think we know what happened to Crawford. More importantly, we got the combination. Why is she crying? Because she pregante herself, bro. That's why. Krista, are you all right? What's wrong? It's nothing. That was just hard to watch. No worries. She fucking... It. I'm fine. Bro, she tiller tiller baby killered her, by the way. That's literally... That was almost a woman moment. <laughs> she straight up... She straight up was like, oh, yeah? You're an abortion doctor? Guess what, dude? Here, abort yourself, okay? Fucking Bill O'Reilly stand out here. Fucking Moms for America looking ass. That's crazy. Also, if you're going to leave, why, why, why would you just voluntarily leave? What the fuck? Why would you have to stab the dude and fucking grab his gun and shit? All right. Let's get those meds and get the hell out of here. That was not the code at all. That We're he was in business. Antibiotics, morphine... We'll take as much of this as we can carry. That literally was not the code that okay, the doctor was putting in. Good. This is more than enough for your people and mine. Let's go. What do you mean your you know, people, bro? Tape in the locker outside. Maybe there's something else on there. We got the meds for Omid. That's all I care about. Yeah, it's we'll gonna be Molly, and I want to see it. Room. Don't take too long, Lee. I'm pro life, my ass, bro. Oh, he is a rapist. Listen, as fun as this was, I have to put a stop to this little arrangement. This is the last I can give you. Why? Oberson had someone down here yesterday taking inventory. He's really cracking down. I just can't risk it. We had a deal. Yes, we had a deal. We don't anymore. Bro, she My looks young as hell. Needs this medicine. Without it, she'll die or she'll start showing symptoms and they'll take her away. I can't let that happen. I'm sorry, Molly. I've done all I can, but I have to look out for myself here. Yeah, that's the Crawford way, isn't it? Why does she actually... Why did he film him zipping his zipper up? Oh my God, Chad is right. He's engaging in a problematic age gap sexual relationship with a power dynamic. Dude, dude, that is the worst crime of all. That was like the OJ's worst crime. Problematic, problematic age gap. Oh my God. Oh, he's so, he deserved it. He deserved me kicking his head in for sure. Well, shit. Anything else that we might've missed over here or what? Vernon and Krista already took everything we need. You never know, bro. Oh, God, it's going to be full of zombies in the fucking hallway, I bet. Oh, God, it's not showing. It's them close angles. Jesus Christ. Oh, shit. Oh, you scared the shit out of me. Fuck you, I'm Molly, fucking you bit. fucking I asshole, see. bro. I'll take that battery now. Oh, yeah, uh, about that. What? I'm just kidding. Here you go. Such a fun little prank, Molly. What's that? Nothing. You can quit with the act, Molly. I know you're from Crawford. What? Who told you that? I saw you on a security tape. Why'd you lie to me? Security tape. I said there tape. were stories about Crawford. I never said that's how I knew about it. I never lied to you, and even if I did, so what? I don't owe you anything. You saved my life twice, but you can't tell me the truth? Are we really good? Bro, he, he put he put the he put the battery in his prison pocket, chat. Chill. Then do this now. I guess that's up to you. I used to live here with my sister. She was 14 years old. When the dead started walking and Crawford shut itself in, it seemed like a pretty good deal at first. We were safe. We had everything we needed to survive. Then the rules started coming down. No one who couldn't justify their place or in their keep. No one who required special care. My sister was diabetic, and by Crawford's rules, that made her a liability. That's crazy that they, they're clapping diabetics out here. Safe for as long as I could, but in the end, I couldn't protect her. That's when I got out. Crawford, they always talked about how their system worked. How anything was better than becoming one of them. But I saw what they'd already become. I just wish I could have seen it before it was too late. Before they came and took my sister away. I mean, it's not that this different than... All I have left of her. It's not that different than America, honestly. 
situation is dire. I didn't have time to take it before I got out of Crawford. I just wanted it, okay? It's okay, Bonnie. I understand. She's pretty. What the hell? I think that's our cue to get the hell out of here. Who's ringing them bells? What? Bro, I had like three revolvers, by the way. Why didn't I get one? Oh, oh, oh my God, Ben, you sorry, fucking sorry. suck ass. I just ass. got spooked by those bells, and then I heard someone coming. Did you leave Clementine alone? No, Kenny's with her. We still can't open that armory door. You sent me out to look for something we can use to bust it open. I found this. Uh, he did ben, not. Where bro. Did you that? Bro. I found it. It was stuck in the door handle at the end of bro. the- Bro. Bro. I should have fucking- I should have told him to tell Kenny. I should have told him to tell Kenny. I should have told him to tell Kenny. I should have told him to tell Kenny so Kenny could kill him. I should have told him to tell Kenny so Kenny would have fucking killed him. God damn it, he's such a stupid fucking asshole. Oh my god, Ben, you have to die. You have to die. I hope you die right here. Oh my god, you are such a fucking asshole, dude. Fuck you, dude. Oh my god, I want to fucking string him from a goddamn rope and dangle his ass. What is, is it effing? It's not effing on my end. It's like a server side issue, I think. It was small. Okay. Man, I'm so fucking mad. I'm I'm actually pissed. Hallway back there. Shoot this fucker! Thanks. Who, who shot him? I didn't shoot him. It wasn't me. Good going, kid. Nice shot. Thanks. Oh my god, that was awesome. What the fuck is going on? They're coming. Oh shit. That ought to hold them. Sir, but now how do we get out? Through the armory. We can just get this damn door open. Come on, damn you! I'm just gonna use the hatchet. This is my fault, all my fault. <laughs> the hell's he babbling about? Ben, we talked about this. No, wait. I wanna know what he meant. What do you mean this is all your fault? Kenny, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, man. Kid, this ain't the best time. Whatever you did, save it for later. I, I, I buckled. Go ahead, tell him. It's been me all along, putting all of us- I'm sorry, I hope he dies. I hope, I hope Kenneth kills him right now. I, it probably is a fucked up. It's probably fuck. It's probably gonna fuck it up. I'm weak. I'm a weak man. I'm a weak man. I told him to In tell danger. him. Danger, Katja and Duck. It was all me. It was all me. Wait a minute. What are you saying? It was me who made the deal with the bandits at the Motor Inn, slipping them supplies. I thought maybe I could keep them off our backs. When it got discovered, that's when they attacked, and that's when Duck. <laughs> Kenny, man, I agree with you. You should kick his ass. But now's not the time. I gotta focus on getting out of here. <laughs> you little piss ant! You're fucking dead, you hear me? Dad, my wife and child, you gotta both fucking kill! Kenny, listen to me. You can whip his skinny little ass. Dude, Ben's survival instincts are so bad. He's just a liability. Yeah, he's just a liability. He literally is a walking, talking liability. We need to use him to lure the fucking zombies away. That's it. That's the only thing he's good for. Fucking leech ass, worm ass, piece of shit, skinny ass, fucking bandito loving, dumb fuck, taking the hatchet. I found a hatchet. I wonder what the fucking hatchet was there for. You didn't find the hatchet, Ben. You fucking took it from a goddamn door with zombies behind it. Later, but right now we gotta go. Nice group you got here. Not the time, Molly. If this asshole thinks he's getting on my boat after what he did, he's out of his motherfucking mind! Kenny, we'll sort this out later. After we get out of here, okay? Ain't nothing to sort out. I just told you the way it's gonna be. The boat's not big enough for all of us. Somebody's gotta get left behind. Might as well be this piece of shit right here! Well, I vote we leave him. I'm sorry, Ben. <laughs> I know you mean well. Bro, she's but new! Bro, bro, she ain't even, she's new here. Yo, even the new girl's like, yeah, no, nah, you fucking suck, dude, honestly. <laughs> you haven't even harmed me beyond the whole zombies attacking us thing, but she's like, nah, we leave his ass, you fuck him. get back to Omid, and you put that at risk. Wait, don't I get a vote? Of course you do. Clem's like, yeah. It's nice. He's my friend. We don't leave friends behind. That's my vote. On second thought. I think I'm gonna abstain. Lee? I can't do this right now. I abstain. We'll figure this out later. I'm a coward. 
I'm what not. about the rest of us? Don't we get a say? <laughs> nope, you don't get a say, lady. You're dead. More dead than the cancer, too. Now can we go? Damn right. Vernon, come on! <laughs> Bro, we didn't even give a fuck about Bree. Lee literally turned around and was like, damn right, let's get out of here. It's time. That's awesome. Okay. We couldn't even open a fucking armory door, and now it's not closing. How is that possible? So much for the armory. What's left of it? A few rounds. That's it. You didn't close that door behind us? I couldn't. The lock was busted. Great. Just fucking great. Come on. There's got to be a way out down here. Oh, close back. Fuck! That's not going to hold. Back upstairs. Is that a zombie? Lee, look. What the fuck? How many fucking bullets do I have? Thank God I have fucking perma bullets up in this bitch, huh? Is that a child? What the fuck? Where is it? Oh, oh, he's eating my dick, bro. Oh, he's eating my dick. Oh my God. Did it F again? Where the fuck? What the fuck? Where'd they come from? Dude, easy peasy, bro. It ain't nothing to me. It ain't a big deal. It ain't a fucking big deal at all. I'm lobbing him. Wait, what the fuck? Yo, this is light work, baby. Light work. Oh, no, I lost the hatchet. I should have grabbed the hatchet. Fuck. Come on. It's all right. I'm fine. Any way out of here? This leads to the roof. We might be able to find a way down from there. You didn't come into town from the railroad, did you? Yeah. Why? Never mind. I can see the sewer where we came in from here. I think we can do this. Well, what are we waiting for? Go, you mean go! You didn't come from the railroad. What the fuck? Why'd he say that? Why the hell did he say that? Man, come on, let's go! <coughs> what is happening? <laughs> I want him. Uh, Hold on, Ben. I kind of want to let him die, but I want to also dangle him. Ben, uh, climb up. Come on, you can do it. He's gonna die. There's no time. You have to go now. Quit fucking around, Ben. Come on. Let go, damn it. Get Clem and the others out of here. Lee. He's like, you know what to do. You know what to do. Let him go, bro. We both know. Let him go. Oh, sweet release, baby. Let me go. Sweet release. Let him go. Let his ass go, bro. You're gonna die. Come on, bro. Get the fuck out of here. R.I.P. Bozo. Ain't no fucking way. Yeah, eat his ass. Fucking piece of shit. I'm willing to bet, even if I didn't let him go, he still would have fucking fell, okay? It doesn't matter. <laughs> that was your fastest QTE? I didn't even think. Krista? Everything okay? Oh, me! Oh, he's not there? Bro, he's gonna turn zomber? Krista, don't! Stay back! I never should have left you. I'm so sorry. Krista, get away from him. <clears throat> oh, wait, he's alive. Oh, my God. Hey, back already? <laughs> Omid is kind of dope, dude. He's so weird. He's like, he's just, <laughs> I like Omid. Omid is like Ben, but actually funny and useful. And he also has a funny ass Riz face every time. He's always like, hmm. We got you medicine. Good. Feel like I could use some. Where's Ben? He didn't make it. What happened? Dumb son of a bitch nearly got us all killed. Lee stepped up and did what he had to. That's what do you mean, Lee stepped happened. up and did what he had to? What the fuck does that mean, asshole? Don't say that. Nice going, asshole. What's eating you? Yeah, I did what I had to. But I don't expect Clementine to understand Kenny, that. you fucking suck, dude. You're such a fucking asshole, Kenny. Dumb, boat-loving son of a bitch. Do you ever think about anything in front of Clem? Fuck. Hell, I don't want her to understand it. You did the right thing. Trust me. She'll understand. I'm gonna go start work on the boat. I didn't drop him. Kenny couldn't okay. see from that angle if I dropped him or not. What the fuck do you mean? A little luck, you should start feeling better pretty soon. I'll stay here for a few more hours to check on him. Let me know if you need anything. Thanks, Doc. Yes, thank you so much. Maybe now's a good time for you and me to have a little talk in private. Listen, man. 
about what happened to Bree. Please, save your sympathy for someone who's buying it. What? Yeah, he's right. We fucking turned around like you it was no... think by now I got you figured? You don't strike me as someone who has a lot of consideration for others. He's right. Look at what you did to get me to come here with you in the first place. You expect me to believe you give a shit that it wound up costing Bree her life? Now just hold on a damn minute. Listen. No, you listen. You got some good people here, and they look to you as their leader. Well, I'm here to tell you, the kind of leader you are, they're not gonna make it much longer. Oh my god. yourself if you think putting them all on a boat is gonna solve anything. Wait, why is he reading me to filth? I haven't actually been that bad around Vernon, have I? Is it because of Ben? Is, he be is that why he's mad? Like, I don't get it. Or is he being racist? Is this racially motivated? Now, you may not care about all of those people, but I know you care about that little girl. Which is why I'm gonna make you an offer. What kind of an offer? I'll well, take her off your hands. Take her back with me to my people. We're well supplied, well hidden, and a lot of us have had kids of our own. And now Crawford's fallen, we got nothing left to fear from them. She'll be safe with us. Safer than she will be if she stays with you, I promise you. I'm not That's gonna what give you her. Want for her, isn't it? To be safe? You're coming at me with a lot here, Vernon. I need to think it over. Of course, take your time, but I want you to think about some things. Why would you say you you'd think to about let it? that boy die back in Crawford. I gotta wonder about them. Oh my god, bro! What is everyone is making a big deal about Ben falling? Like I barely, I couldn't have saved him anyway. That's crazy, bro. You don't understand. We got history. First of all, Ben's the reason why Bree died. You dumbass! Oh my god, dude! I had a weak ass grip. Dude, this guy is crazy. Why is everybody being annoying about this whole Ben situation? Am I am I in the wrong? You could have saved Ben Lamau. Wait, really? Something like I got to wonder what kind of parent you'd be. Ben's kind of fucking us up, even even in death. He's still God. He's such a liability. He really is. He's just like there is no way. Ben's a Go curse, bro. He would have fucking been so much worse. Yeah, I'm about to head out. I I just wanted to say thanks for everything. It's been fun. What are you talking about? Kenny's working on the boat right now. Oh, she's like, you killed Ben. I don't want to be with you no more. Everybody's like, everybody's acting brand new since I couldn't pick Ben up. Like, my bad. You were coming with us. God knows you earned it. Yeah, I've been thinking it over. It's not for me. Sounds like it'd be pretty crowded. Oh my God. I never did like the water. Bro, that's cr Okay. Uh, uh, uh, what is this? Uh, uh, place better not bros ops like 16 dude he dude what happened here bro bro this kid's ruining my life he's killed so many people like his death is now causing me to lose gang members what the fuck dude why is everybody acting like bannon was the glue that held everything together fuck <laughs> making me lose my mind you sure about this I'm sure. I've always done better on my own, anyhow. Listen, I'm not much for goodbyes. Tell the others for me? Sure. You take care of yourself, Molly. You too, Lee. Bro, we just lost Molly, who's goaded, athletic, resourceful. Sure we lost the doctor. You know she thinks the world of you. Good luck. <laughs> it nothing to do with luck. I'm genuinely bummed. I, it's like actually fucking my vibes up. You helped the races and then killed a teenager? Hey, sweet pea. Kenny's working on the boat. Fucking Clementine hates me. What are we going to do after he fixes it? Where will we go? Someplace else. Someplace better. Clem, honey, what's wrong? What happened, <sighs> Ben? What did Kenny mean when he said you did what you had to? It won't do any good to dwell on it, Clementine. I want to know what happened. Ben was my friend. I liked him. Why? I, him. I did too. Maybe I could have done more to save him, but I had to think about the whole group, not just one person. But I'm just one person. Not to me, you're not. Before we leave tomorrow, will we have time to look for my parents? I'd like to, Clem, but I don't think we'll have time. We really shouldn't stay here any longer. It's not safe. I'm sorry, Clementine. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Bro, your parents are dead. Give it up. I'm your dad now. What the fuck? Am I bad? Am I a bad dad? I've been a good dad. 
I've been such a good dad so far. Please. No, don't leave the walkie-talkie there. Oh, dude, the fucking pedo is going to be on the call being like, oh, Clementine. <sighs> Clementine? No, the walkie's gone. Oh, my lord. Oh, Clementine. my life, dude. This is the worst. Oh, my God. I'm going to lose it. I'm going to lose it. I'm going to lose it. I'm going to fucking lose it, dude. Here we go. Did everybody leave me? Wait, what? Bad ending? Everybody left me? Clementine? Clementine! Oh, fuck. Oh, no, dude. No fucking way. Ain't no way. No, no, no, no, no, no. This is all fucked up. The Ben curse. Oh, no, the Benimal. Oh, shit. Did he eat me? Oh, no, I got it. I, I started hitting Q immediately. Like, I, I didn't even... <laughs> I didn't even realize it was a click. Uh-oh, someone's taking advantage of my moment of weakness here. Kaya, place. Kai, no. no. Place. No. no. Wait, did I get bit? No. no. Lee? Lee? You out here? Lee? Are you crazy? What are you doing out here? It ain't safe. Lee? I'm gonna show him the bite. Where's Clementine? She's not in her room. Vernon ain't it's in the over. house It's over, I'm either. killing myself. What the hell is going on? Whose blood is that? It's mine. Oh my god. No way. No. No fucking way. There's no time to worry about me. Clementine's gone. There's no chance she just wandered off on her own? No. No way. Then who the hell took her? I don't know. Last night Vernon came to me and offered to take her with him. Said she'd be better. I'm so mad. Better off. Son of a bitch. I knew we couldn't trust that fucker. Wherever she is. I have to find her. Okay. What do you need from us? Clem may not have much time. We have a better chance of finding her if we all go together. Who's with me? We're all responsible for Clementine. And in your condition, you may not make it to her in time. She needs our help. All of our help. Damn right. We can't let you do this alone. So that's settled then. We'll look for Clementine together. Hell yeah. What are we waiting for? Are you sure about this? Could be dangerous. As opposed to what? Day-to-day -day life these days? We're sure, Lee. Just lead the way. Bro, there is no fucking way. Ben's divine retribution is killing me, dude. Me, Lee. Always had my back when it mattered. What kind of friend would I be if I wasn't there for you now? Bitten or not, I'm with you to the end. Bro. You can count on me. This game is fucked up. I feel like I actually got bit in real life. Like, my whole body is warm right now. I'm not even... Maybe I'm being a little too dramatic. But, like, I'm actually in a bad mood now. This game fucked me up, dude. This is not allowed. This is genuinely fucked up. We have to save Clementine and fucking... Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. This sucks so bad. This is a fucked up ass game, dude. Okay, guys, we should go find Vernon. See if he took her. Let's head out. What about the boat? We just gonna leave it unguarded? If someone was gonna take Kenny, it, Kenny, I will fucking end your life, you boat loving piece of shit. Shut the fuck up about the boat. I swear to God, I will blow up the boat. I swear to God, I will take the battery and shove it in a zombie. Okay? Oh my God. I'm at the boat. Shut the fuck up. My daughter is missing. I'm bit. Besides, I'm gonna die. Fuck, man. Fuck you and your boat. Are they gone? Could have had Ben and Molly on my team. No bite. Clementine not gone. Worst ending of Looks all like time. Got here. I don't understand how there's a fifth episode after this, by the way. I'm dead. Hurry. Vernon, get out here. There doesn't have to be any trouble here. All I want is the girl. Give her back and nobody needs to get hurt. He's not there, bro. And dude, what the hell's going on? Where are they going? Are you all right? Where are you? Vernon, you son of a bitch. Hello, Lee. Who is this? It's not. Bro, who's doing saw style traps in like the middle of a zombie apocalypse? Like, you're really trying to be mischievous right now, bro? Really? Like, this is the time for mischief? Like, you couldn't be like a whimsical pedophile on any other time? That you're just like, nope, this is it. This is the moment. I found my opportunity and I locked it down, dude. W get a better hobby, bro. What the fuck? Come on, kill yourself. 
That's crazy. That's cr Oh my god. Did you kill the boy in the attic? 25% of players killed him. Oh my god. Wait. Only 25% of players killed the boy? Did you lie or threaten Vernon? You and 42% of players threatened or lied to him. Home Alone, did you bring Clementine with you to Crawford? 55% brought her. For whom the bell tolls, did you let Ben fall to his death? 47% of players let him go. Only 47? Most save Ben? How? Did you reveal the bite to the group? Yeah, I did. And so did 82% of players. Because at that point, they're like, GG's. It's fucking GG no re. Who came with you? 13% of players. No Ben. 16% had Ben. 18% only Kenny? What the fuck? Came with me where? Who the fuck is the 10% that's with just Ben, bro? Who the fuck? Who the fuck did the only Ben run? That makes no damn sense, bro. Who? How? You have to be a real sick fuck to be like, I'm going after, I'm going after Clementine with just Ben. It's just me and Ben. The best ending because you killed Ben and no one knows how it happened. Okay, honestly, these are the poll results in 2012, by the, the way. The boy in the attic. Did you kill the boy in the attic? Uh, yeah. Why wouldn't you kill him? Did you lie? Or 79% killed the boy in the attic. Or threatened Burnham. You, I threatened to lie. What? I didn't mean to do it. Did you bring- Yeah, he probably did the same thing I did, which is after you save him, he gets positive and tries to help you. Oh, really? That's when, that's when the fucking turn happens? Like, oh, I'm sorry, I couldn't wait. I'm sorry, I couldn't wait for the turn, chat. Did you bring Clementine with you to Crawford? 78% brought her. Did you let Ben fall to his death? You and 62% pulled him up? Bring Clementine with you. 62% pulled yeah, him up? Wait. At that point, it was what? There was still a solid 10% Ben only run, which is fucking stupid. Wait, those numbers haven't changed. Really? All right, so what? Fucking Kevin gave up on me. All right, bro. Wait, how did he leave? How did he lose Kenny? What is this? Grandma doesn't come out of the cage if Hassan doesn't play episode five tonight. Yeah, well, Grandma's fucking locked up then. Pack watch for Grandma. Because let's be real, I'm done for the night, okay? There ain't no fucking way I'm playing another one. I'm, I'm like emotionally distraught. I'm actually fucked up over this goddamn game, bro. This game is fucked up. I can't play more than one episode per night. I'm not gonna lie to you. This shit fucks me up, dude. Sorry, Grandma. Pack watch for you. You're still locked up. No, but like, for real, this shit is fucked up. So I guess Lee always gets bit. I just, I don't understand though, like. Wow, what a fucking game. I'm not gonna play Wolf Among Us, I already played it. I feel like I'm not kidding. I I feel like I want to throw up a little bit. Like it, it fucked me up. Anyway, love you guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Telltale Batman, especially season two, has a especially unique mental health. No, we're gonna burn through all the Telltale games at this rate. I'll do it. All right, love you all, and good night to everybody. Okay, bye bye. LGBTQR force the whole left at your fingertips on a at your door H the crowded up faith the young Turks online show three full fucking years of this plenty more to go 90 day fiance talk
bottles of champagne, bourgeoisie. A Trump rally live reaction on mass riot at DC. There he is again, a sun is streaming, a sun is streaming. There he is again, a sun is streaming, a sun is streaming. Reading a live stream fail comments, Austin show jazz bites. And all the ways the right queen pipeline can suck you in the line. JCS React Lord frame gets broken, cover blown. A full blown mess pandemic months are streaming at your own. Total radicalization coming out to find. System you were taught to trust in was broken the whole time. And all these daily streams, whether big or whether small, have helped me and so many find the meaning through it all. There he is again, the sun is streaming. The sun is streaming. There he is. <coughs>